meaning. First of all, let's see the impact from the patient perspective. If we speak about the patient perspective, we have what we call the non-modifiable risk factors, typically the gender, the age, and the comorbidities of the patient. But there's also some factors which impact the outcome of the surgery, typically the obesity and smoking, the use of alcohol, which can be changed by the patient itself. Looking now on the treatment algorithm, some decisions which is independently done by yourself, like the type of use of antibiotic prophylaxis, the surgical approach, or even, of course, the choice of the material for the bearing, all of that choice has an impact of the outcome of the surgery. Looking now more specifically on the choice of the bearing materials, as you can imagine, by choosing a material, you need to have a lot of different qualitative uh, options and uh, and uh, let's say properties, they're all shown here. Typically, the material has to be biocompatible, but that's expected, of course, for all a lot of material. But more importantly, if we speak about bearing material, we need to have scratch resistance, wear resistance, but also something which is less discussed now about the immunological response from the particles produced by this material. And that's a bit the topic of my presentation of today. If you look now on the cellular level, what are the reactions expected for different implant material? We have two levels of reactions. First, the so-called implant surface induced reaction, which comes typically from the bulk of the material, uh, creating some tissue integration in the best scenario, but also some wear debris induced reactions coming from the particle, which is normally produced during the usage of the implant. Also in this situation, what you like to achieve is encapsulation of the particle or particle removal, which gives to the good reaction from the body of the patient. Let me start with the particles. Again, a summary, what you would like to achieve on the top in green and what you would like to avoid, typically inflammation, osteolosis, metallosis, and all these factors and all these terms that you already know in the past with the problematic of the metal on metal articulation. Here, a very recent study, in vitro study performed by uh, some laboratory about modern material used in arthroplasty, typically, typically the Bilox Delta against highly crosslink polyethylene with vitamin E, and the same with cobalt chrome in two situations, on the left-hand side, in the normal standard situation, and the right-hand side, when you use a third body wear. As you can see on the left-hand side, exactly no difference in the wear by using Bilox Delta material or Cobalt Chrome against the pristine situation of the polyethylene. But as soon as you have a suboptimal situation, typically if you have polyethylene uh, uh, bone particle or a different third wear debris coming in the articulation, then as you can see here, you have not only an increase of the wear of the polyethylene, but also the increase of the wear of the Cobalt Chrome, which means you are creating Cobalt Chrome particles in the body. The reason why the ceramic, especially Balioc Delta, is reacting so positively it comes for the intrinsic material properties, typically the hardness and the toughness of the material. We can demonstrate that the hardness of the surface of the Balioc Delta material is 10 times more harder than the cobalt chrome, which explains why it is much less particle produced during the wear, during the normal usage of the implant. But let's assume we still have some particle produced which is a normal phenomena in every system which is in motion. The question is now, how does the body react to this particle? And we have now a very recent publication from the Leeds University analyzing the particles and the reaction of the body of the different particles. And as you can see here, the Pilox Delta particles are not cytotoxic at the so-called clinical relevant composition, concentration, sorry. I think I have to go on this side and I can see that here. At this clinical concentration, there's no reaction, contrary to the gray one, which is cobalt chrome. If you achieve a threshold, then you have a drastic reaction of the body, which creates some immunological problems. So the Bilox Delta particles do not cause the release of immune mediators such as TN-alpha. Let me speak now about metallic ions. The ions can come either from the bulk of the material, that means the surface of the material, but also from the particles produced during the normal use of the implant. We can see two kinds of reactions. First, what you call metal hypersensitivity, if you have a low concentration of these ions, but if the ion starts to accumulate in the body, comes systemic, we speak about metal toxicity. 
The question is now, what about Bilox Delta? It seems to be strange to ask about the release of ions from a ceramic material, but a few years ago, there was some publication claiming that due to the fact that in the composition of the Bilox Delta, you have chrome oxide, it may release chrome ions. So there was a study performed on that about the leaching of the metallic ions coming from the Bilox Delta and compared with the cobalt chrome. The control was uh, bovine serum as shown on the left side. And then we compared for seven days at 37 degrees, two femoral bolets for the same design, same size, one made of cobalt chrome in the middle and on the right side, one made of Bilox Delta. As you can see with the cobalt chrome, even without any motion, you have a huge release of cobalt ions and some release of chromium ions, which was absolutely not the case with the Bilox Delta material. There was no release of any cobalt, no release of any chromium. So this is to demonstrate that with Bilox Delta, there's no risk to have any ion release coming out of the material. Let me go now to the so-called surface re induced reactions. Again, what you would like to achieve on the green appropriate inflammation, which means tissue integration of the implant. In contrary, inappropriate inflammation, again, chronic activation of the human cells. For that, we have to study the bacteria adhesion at the surface. And now we can see from this study from Sorrentino with two staph of, of uh, bacteria, Steph epidermitis on the left-hand side and Steph aureus on the right-hand side, used against at the surface of modern materials like the Bilox Forte, which is the previous generation of the ceramic from Ceramtec and the Bilox Delta in pink compared to metal and polymer. As you can see in the two situations with the two kinds of stuff, we have less, much less adhesion of the bacteria at the surface. That means a reduced formation of the biofilm. I think it is well known that the surface chemistry and the surface topography have a direct impact on the wettability of the material, which induces a good or a bad absorption of the, bad, of the protein, which finally leads to the formation of the biofilm. Thanks to the surface properties of the ceramic, we have a reduced formation of biofilm at the surface of the material compared to metal, cobalt chrome typically, and to polyethylene. But up to now, what I show you was a lot of in vitro testing. The question, okay, this is nice, what uh, Martin Zimmerman is telling us, but what about the real life? What about the in vivo situation? And now I would like to speak about something which is more and more coming out from the different registry as a major cause of revision of total hypertroplasty is periprosthetic joint infection. You have to know that the presence of an implant reduced the necessary bacteria concentration to induce an infection by 100,000 fold. That means in case of previous infection, you have a higher risk of reinfection. It occurs in absolute value in about 1% of total joint arthroplasty cases. The patient, of course, experienced severe pain, poor quality of life, as you can see here. It's associated with a higher risk of mortality. And last but not least, it increased the medical cost by a huge factor compared to revisions with no PGI. For that, I would like to show you a very interesting study done by the Bristol University and published in the Lancet Journal a few years ago. They were investigate, investigating all kinds of factors which may increase the risk of PGI. Factors investigated were so-called patient factors, typically the gender of the patient, the age, the BMI, and so on. Some health system factors, the place of the surgery, the volume of the surgeon, but also some surgical factors, what kind of uh, treatment has been done, if it's common from fracture neck of the femur, a vascular necrosis, and they also analyzed the bearing type. They came to the conclusion that these factors are the factors increasing the risk of revision due to PGI. Typically, male patients have a higher risk of revision to PGI compared to female, younger patients have a higher risk, elevated BMI, diabetes, and so on. And interestingly, they also came to the conclusion by using metallic implants as a bearing surface, you have a higher risk of having revision due to PGI. If you look more in detail, the results of this study, if you compare that now with metal on polyethylene as a reference, you can see at the long term, that means at more than two years, that ceramic on metal, which actually does not exist anymore, and metal on metal have a clearly higher risk of revi revision due to PGI. In contrary, Ceramic on polyethylene, as well as ceramic on ceramic, reduce the risk of revision due to PGI. 
Actually, this study from the Bristol University, which is based on the NGR, the database of England and South Wales, are not the only one. If you look at these top registries worldwide, the Medicare, which is a registry from America, NGR that I just presented to you, Repo from Italy, AOA from Australia, and the NZ from New Zealand, all these registries show clearly the tendency to have a kind of consensus by avoiding having a metallic component as a bearing material, you reduce the risk of revision due to PGI. The question is now, for the, what is the reason how we can explain that? I think one of step going toward to explain that was a very interesting study done by Professor Trampus from the Charité Hospital in Berlin. They were analyzing by sonication a lot of explanted part of the implants based following, let's say this way, for aseptic loosening as well as septic loosening. And they came to the conclusion on the left-hand side, what they call the qualitative assessment, the number of parts which show the presence of the biofilm. That means for metallic explanted parts that were analyzed, in 92% of the metal parts explanted, there was a biofilm at the surface. In all the polyethylene explanted, there was a biofilm. And let's say in only 69%, so that's less than the other one, on the ceramic, there was a formation of the biofilm. But more interestingly is now, okay, if there is a biofilm, how thick or important is that biofilm? And now we can see the quantitative assessment on the right-hand side, measured with CFU colony forming unit per milliliter. Both metal explants and polyethylene explants, they have very thick formation of the biofilm at the surface of the material, in contrary to ceramic, which is a very thin film. And this may explain why, by having ceramic components, you have a reduced risk of having PGI. This brings me already to the conclusion of my presentation. We believe that material matters in the choice of the material for a total hip surgery. Typically, the choice of, of having ceramic material is showing you that you have excellent biological behavior. You have a very unlikely pathogenic reactions to ceramic particles. The lowest wear of all bearing materials, but that's something I think was known already for a long time. Highly scratch resistance articulating surface, remember, if pristine situation, thanks to the highly crossing polyethylene, even cobalt chrome is good, but as soon as you have a suboptimal situation, you start to scratch also the surface of the cobalt chrome. It is associated with a lower risk of revision for PGI. It has a reduced biofilm formation compared to other bearing materials. So I thank you for the, uh, your attention and please don't forget the host when you make the choice of the material. Thank you. So I don't know if you have time to make some questions because after is a life surgery, which is a totally different topic. Questions? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Milox 40 is what we call the uh, third generation of ceramic, which is a pure alumina material. The Bilox Delta is a composite ceramic, which is a composition of zirconia and alumina. And thanks to that, we increased drastically the toughness of the material and the hardness. So Bilox Delta, we have this year making the 20 years anniversary. It was introduced on the market in 2003. And you can easily recognize also the Bilox Delta thanks to this pink color, which comes typically because of the addition of chrome oxide, which gives some specific advantage from the mechanical characteristic. That's why, because of this chrome oxide, some people were claiming in this new material, Bilox Delta, you have release of the ions, which is totally impossible of the ceramic. Another question. I think what I would like to show, we, we speak a lot in the last few years about the advantage of ceramic compared to metal ball heads in point of view of wear. But I think that's well known that with ceramic, you have less wear, especially ceramic on ceramic compared to other bearing material. The next step, what I try now to implement more and more and to present more and more is about the advantage of using ceramic in, ver in relation to PGI. It seems that due to the fact of the good pro surface properties of the ceramic, you have less formation of biofilm. And it shows as revealed now by different studies and also by the registries that having ceramic components, ceramic on polythene or ceramic on ceramic, you reduce the risk of revision due to PGI. And this cause of revision is increasing because aseptic loosening is still the number one, as you will see of my next presentation, but it's going down proportional to other causes. 
because we improved the material. We improved especially the polyethylene from conventional polyethylene to high cross polyethylene. So revision due to aseptic loosening is going down, but proportionally there's other risk, typically dislocation, which is a bit independent of the material, but also PGI. And now we want to demonstrate that even by using ceramic, you have an advantage of having PGI versus metallic components. Thank you, Martin, for the presentation. It was a nice presentation. Now, we'll, as the case for life surgery is ready, we'll go with the life surgery. Here, we are presenting the patient details. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a 50 years female coming with chief complaints of right knee pain for past four years. Her knee looks like grade four osteo osteoarthritis. She known of case of diabetes mellitus hypertension, opposite limbus PPR prelim. Her range of motion is 20 to 110 degree, various deformity. This is an image showing range of motion, FFD of 20 degree x-ray now the operating surgeon dr bd chatterjee is going to host the session and moderator is dr anil kumar reddy i welcome dr anil kumar reddy to moderate the session thank you Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Chatterjee, Krishna Kiran here. You can start. We have uh, presented the case details and uh, you're ready to live. go live. Hope you can hear me. Are you able to hear me? Hello. Hello. Check. Mike. How are you? again. Just take one, two, three. Take out this one. Yeah, I think now we can take it. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Dr. Yeah. Akhil is moderating the session. You can start right away. We have presented the case. Uh, you can start. Right no. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, the other thing is, everybody, uh, so, uh, I have no idea. Are you are you okay with it? No. We are able to hear you, sir. You can start the surgery. Everything. Hello. I think we have lost this. Oh. Yeah. 
can you see uh, how what is the picture like are you okay with that yeah yeah we can see you sir uh, can you, no, you zoom the video a bit out so that uh, okay I see. Suresh? Yeah, that, that's Yeah. That is I want to say, number usual case, it's not the straight box. Being that she will be, if you look at the eclipse, yeah. right? The there is amount of plane instability, but there is no corona instability. Uh, uh, sir, uh, can I stop you here? Uh, we were not able to hear you before. Can you uh, restart? Think there's a problem. Can you hear us, sir? That is what I was telling. Nothing else. Yes, it's a yeah, I'm joking, I'm going to No, there's a loose connection and coming and going. Uh, we are able to hear you, sir. Can you hear us? No, I've had to descrub because there's a problem with the connection here. So I have to scrub again and come in. Hello, hello. Yeah, they can hear me now. We can hear you, sir. You hear me? Going and coming, that's the problem. Sir, we are able to hear you. I think you should go uh -huh. ahead. We're able to hear yeah, you. Yeah, okay. They should... uh, you want me to? Yeah, you can just start. We have gone through the case. It's uh, They need to just... No, no, but there are, there, there are a few things here which I wanted to point out. Uh, I don't know if, if you heard me. Uh, now you can... This... Now we're able to hear you loud and clear. You can go on. Please. Okay. So if you look at the x-rays, so this flexion deformity is not due to soft tissue contracture, but because of bony abnormality of the proximal tibia. And you can see there are large osteophytes and an, an abnormal shape here. There's an excessive and posterior slope of the tibia. Now, and there's another osteophyte here behind posteriorly. Now, I, this to me, it looks very much like an old fracture, which is malunited, but she does not give any history. 
of trauma. So I don't know really how to explain this bony abnormality. There is a kind of a bony block. It's not the soft tissue contracture that you normally see. There is a sagittal plane instability, but on the in the coronal plane, it's okay. And like I said, you see, the big problem is there's a severe quadriceps wasting, which may be because of poliomyelitis. So these are the issues in this case, which is which makes it a little different from the run-of-the-mill arthritic cases that you operate, uh, you know, every day. So I think we'll need to look very carefully at the proximal tibial bony surface. We need to reconstruct that. We'll have to address the flexion deformity. And uh, I think the rest of it is uh, fairly. So I'll just scrub and come in in a couple of minutes. So the case is a case of uh, PPRP on one side. Probably there is some weakness mm -hmm. on the right side as well. And there is arthritis. So these sort of cases are different from standard arthritic knees. So you may have to keep a constrained implant to begin with because the load on that implant is higher. And if you use an unconstrained implant, there is a risk of early failure in these cases. So he has kept, I think, a, a constrained implant as a standby. Uh, and it's a good idea to up the... I was talking about the first check. That's the idea of this particular case. <laughs> and the proximal tibia bone defect, which uh, he was pointing out, sometimes it could be that long-standing virus deformity... Uh, the posterior medial defect can fracture itself over with repeated pressure, though there was history of trauma. So it could be just a fracture of the uh, big osteophyte in the posterior medial part of the tibia as well. That's what he was uh, pointing out. No, no, I want the, uh, yeah. yeah. This one. Lot of times we see this kind of severe virus deformities in both the knees. But in this case, because of the opposite uh, paralytic limb, she might be taking severe, lot more load than the normal knees. That's why the constraint backup is an absolute necessity. Most of the times we should be able to get away with the primary, but the backup implant is important. Sir, are you ready to start now? I'm, I'm just uh, gowning up. I had to de I had to de scrub because there was a problem with the connectivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now the connection is fine, sir. You can. Uh, yes, use... yes. Yeah, good. You're good to go. Just as soon as I get ready. So, uh, the the reason I asked this patient why why she is getting operated, and I think the reason for surgery is that she has pain. Which side is this? So it's always difficult for the opening batsman to start, isn't it? The ball is swinging around. Yeah. Once the ball gets old, then it's easy. Yeah, but the opening batsman is experienced enough, sir, so you can <laughs> start. Well. A few starting points, I think. What are the other things other than the bone defect you expect in this case, sir? Uh, any problems you expect apart from the bony defect? No, I think the yeah. What I expect here is uh, lack of soft tissues and general fragility of the soft tissues as a result of the pole. So most of the tissues are prone to rupture. If not very careful. I have done a few cases of uh, placements in. Poliomyelitis, but to tell you the truth, they have mostly been hips, not so much the knees. And I think it's important to counsel these patients preoperatively because uh, their outcomes may not be as. 
Yeah, you think uh, the non polyotic patient. You are thinking because of the excessive load, the ligaments might be more fragile than the normal. No, the, you see, you see, the severely wasted. The quads are severely wasted, so there will be a lot of stress on the joints. So it may loosen out earlier, and uh, she may still require a support for walking. So that she needs to be told. Those So I what is that? Uh, in demonstration demonstration cases it's probably a slightly generous incision so that you can see better uh, when you're doing on your own then here yeah. not able to see you sir someone is blocking the view yeah actually I'm, I don't have a monitor it's, see so you will have to you know keep communicating i think there's they are going to change the view of the camera sir yeah What is the approach? Do you prefer normally, sir? And do you go by the routine approach in this case as well? Or you want to change based on the deformity? Now we are able to see, you, sir. Yeah, see the surgery, surgical field. Can you hear me, sir? Hear me. Yeah, can you hear me? Can hear how attenuated the tissues are and that's why you need to be extremely careful otherwise able to have a good uh, medial tissue sleeve the other thing that you could is a big ostrich Do you do full uh, release in the beginning itself, sir, till the postromedial aspect? No, no, I don't do full release. Why? How do you find the tissues now, sir, once you have opened?
question, right? Just find out if they can, yeah, you can hear. Yeah. Can you can you show us the defect? Are you able to hear me, sir? Yes, very well. But I think you are losing me every now and then. Is that so? Yeah. Can you speak uh, speak through the procedure you are uh, doing, sir? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have just done the standard exposure. Uh, as you can see, the knee is grossly arthritic, so that explains the pain, and it's more on the medial side. I want a large gouge. So I'm going to do a PS knee. That's what I... Oh. So that's what I... Yeah, you've decided that based on x-ray itself, right, sir? Uh, no, really. I'm, I'm trained as a PS surgeon. I was trained by Dr. Ranawat, so they don't do a CR, but I'm sure a lot of guys who will do a CR in this knee and and do a good job as well. So it's just that I'm used to, uh, you know, doing a PS. In these kind of severe virus deformities, have you found difficulty in managing lateral laxity, sir? Uh, so uh, this, in this particular case, there isn't a lot of lateral laxity. But yet, uh, I think lateral laxity is one of the major issues to deal with when you're managing um, severe virus. And at times, you want actually to do some amount of constraint because uh, you, will, you will probably require, uh, you know, a, a, a some amount of constraint to address the lateral laxity. What, what are the steps you take to uh, manage lateral laxity, sir, uh, with the cuts uh, apart from the constraint implant? No, it's just that you keep your dissection on the lateral to the minimum. And uh, release uh, appropriately on the medial side. Try to get as rectangular a gap as you can. But at times, uh, you see your lateral laxity may be more than uh, what you can manage. And uh, in such such situations, you really will run out of uh, uh, thick thick insert. So then you will need to use a bit of constraint. You know something like the uh, PCK or the LCCK. Uh, just to get over that uh, hurdle. So I think you should always, in very severe deform virus deformities, you should keep that in the uh, you know the back of the table. I don't expect that here because the, here the main problem is a flexion deformity, yeah. which I said was bony. It's not so much because of capsular contracture. So once we manage the bony architecture, I think uh, we should be getting out of the flexion deformity. There, as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see this. There's a uh, severe attenuation of the yeah, yeah. posterior part of both the medial and the lateral condyle. Uh, the camera person there to show from the foot end. Uh, we are being shown from the head end. We are not able to appreciate. Yeah, now now the view is right, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take. Yeah. Right. So you can see this part of the tibia is very proud. This part of the tibia is very proud and it dips back quite steeply. That's there are a lot of bone defect at the, at the back. That's what is causing the flexion deformity and the extension block. Yeah, that's the posteromedial defect into which the femur has hypertrophied as well, right, sir? Yes, exactly.
most of the times though these defects are so deep okay. once okay. You take the cut and uh, size the tibia lot of the times the defect seems to be far less than what it seems in the x ray yeah true that if you you know you're lucky if you if you have that situation so sometimes you may have to build up but it's not not very very often i i agree but sometimes yes so let's see what we what happens today so you can see one osteophyte on the medial side which is which we just removed they are all very clearly visible on the x ray so to tackle flexion deformities you need to do the appropriate releases i find releasing the tibial capsule more effective than uh, releasing the back of the femur and uh, another trick is to take a little bit more uh, distal femoral resection but that within limits i mean you shouldn't take too much also but you in lot of times with the severe deformities it is lesser than one touch ki one cuts better initial right sir yeah what was that during uh, the, in these cases with severe deformity it's better to take a yeah. cut initially then go step by step rather than going a bigger cut distal femur yes i agree that the distal femur is the last thing you do but at times you might want to do that because so i am deliberately taking pains to take out the remainder of the pcl and do a little more exposure at the back of the of the femur because that's where the release needs to come you you do and uh, first or femur first sir all the cases or any specific i generally do femur first yeah so now you can see a large osteophyte here there can you see that that that's what tells me that it looks very much like an old trauma uh would it be the old trauma or sir or you thinking whether the osteocut by osteophyte could be fractured because of long uh, load on that for a long time uh well yes it could be but can you can you see here can you see there there's a big piece of bone here can can you can you focus here yes yeah we can see the uh, fractured uh bone there sir yeah yeah no this bit this bit of this one so that's that needs to go uh you want to remove that osteophyte now itself even though the tibia is subluxated sir no this 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 osteophyte has to go i mean i can keep that on the rest of it yes maybe okay. this is going to loosen the joint posteriorly and is going to correct the deformity to some extent so that's where what i was saying that this there seems to be a lot of bony abnormalities here okay do you have a towel clip mm -hmm. oh very good now i can see that yes 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 exactly that that's fantastic now th this is the one i'm talking about see yeah yeah we can appreciate it sir and if you see the slope you know it's sloping quite severely down like that so there's a lot of bone here very proud bone and then it just sort of dips back so the cut will have to be you know adjusted accordingly so that you know this will not work i just want a towel clip no just give me a towel clip that one just to hold it yeah this will not hold this is not a towel clip 
Okay. Yes, sir. Now, let me just take it over. There, you see, so there is a, there's a bony block, but it is a little bit better now, the, the, the flexion deformity. Uh, so now I'm going to take, yeah. Yeah. Uh, initially, it was around 20 degrees flexion deformity, sir. Now. Yeah, it was around 30 degrees. Now it's around 15, maybe. So uh, I think we'll take the tibial cut. Then now, and then uh, we'll see how things go from there. So what I imagine, there will be more tibia cut anteriorly than posteriorly. Hmm. You're taking the minimum cut, sir, or? I'm taking a nine cut, but you see, because of the slope, if I take if I take the reference point posteriorly, then the, there will be a lot of bone which will be going anteriorly. Now, on the other hand, if I take the reference point anteriorly, there will probably not be enough bone going posteriorly. So, so we have to be a bit careful on that. So I'm taking somewhere in the middle. And I'll show you once we do the cut, uh, you will see that uh, there's a lot of bone going anteriorly. You're, you're... Uh, taking a routine slope here, sir, or trying to increase the slope? I'm just taking a routine slope, three degrees. Yeah. Can I have a hammer? So we are not able to appreciate the lateral tibial condyle, sir. You can take a reference point from the lateral tibial condyle center point. As yeah, I did that. I just did that. Uh, I said, give, give me a bone cutter or something. Do you have a bone cutter? Yeah. Okay, give me it. Yeah. Let me take out this osteophyte. You'll probably see it better then. I'm removing a large patellar osteophyte just to just so that you can see better. Can you see better now? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you can just focus on this. Yeah, good, good. Can you see now? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some disturbance on the screen here, sir. Uh, is it okay? Uh, okay, just, just just take a retractor. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, good. Yeah, just protect this. Yeah, Okay, so now you see this defect is still there. Can you can you focus on this defect here? See, so posteriorly there's still a big defect. Okay. Now, if you look at the uh, resected segment, see, there's a lot of bone which has gone anteriorly. Yeah, focus on this. So there's a lot of bone which has gone anteriorly, yeah. but almost nothing posteriorly. Okay. Right. So that has corrected the slope now, but we still have a large defect here, which will need to be addressed. And I have some more um, osteophytes to take out here. Yeah. Uh, would you take out those osteophytes by sizing the tibia, sir? No, I think some of it I'm going to take out because I can clearly see that this is an osteophyte. Just give me, do you have a large cutter or something? Bone cutter? Achha, okay, give me an osteodome then. Okay, so that osteophyte goes, and uh, thank you. At 
So we still have fairly large osteophytes at the back. Yes. And there's a large bone defect here. Now, I have to decide regarding that. Now, if I can get away uh, with a smaller tibia, then I'll probably just leave it alone. Uh, forceps. Otherwise, Since the screen is giving a lot of issues with color, can we focus on the TV? The TV is okay, the show me this. this is how much? If audience can focus on okay. the TV. Forever. So, uh, I think I'm sizing it at three. Yeah, so um, yeah. So this is sitting pretty well. You can still see behind the tray, you still have a fairly large osteophyte with some bone defect. I'm leaving it alone uh, at this point of time. Um, and we'll see if we, have to, if we have to come back to it. So I'm going to tackle the femur now. Okay. So, so the, you see, the, you know, now the tibia sits back pretty well. Now, if you see the original x-ray, the tibia was just sort of subluxating out anteriorly, but yeah. now it is sitting well. So we have achieved that. Yeah. Yeah. Original X ray, the tibia was externally rotated and. Yeah. But, but you see now, now it is sitting in sitting pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. We can see that now. At least that part now we have achieved. Now let's manage the femur and then we'll do the final uh, adjustments. Yeah. So the uh, because of the large medial tibial defect, what has happened is that the fem femoral medial condyle has hypertrophied. Uh, We have to be pretty careful. No, it's just uh, there's a block. So. In the next hall, till the issue is uh, resolved, uh, you can switch over to the next hall, please. Mm. Okay. Block somewhere. No, there's a block. All to screen is better. Yeah, that is better. Uh, yeah. Till this issue is resolved. Let's go there. Right, Yeah. So we are starting with a nine resection. I don't, I'm taking a standard resection. I'm not doing an increased resection to start with. No, wait, wait. So it is under resecting on the lateral side, which is what I expected. Yes. Okay, come this way. Auto catch it, you Okay. Can somebody protect the tibia? Um. Okay, very careful. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to remove some more phosphates. There's a large osteophyte here.
Patrick? Okay. I think let's take out the medial meniscus. Uh, we have lost the video. Also. You have a cocker or something here? Suction. Suction. Don't take the silver. He's trying to get rid of the medial minute. So there's hardly any space, right? And we are still very tight on the medial side. Okay. This is no. So obviously we still have a lot of flexion deformity. So we will need to resect the femur some more. And we will need to probably so some more osteophytes are coming out, loose bodies. We'll probably need to take out that osteophyte. Otherwise, we'll not get sufficient relief. So that, that is what I was expecting, which was going to be the main, main challenge here. Not so much the, uh, me, uh, the medial or uh, the, the, me, the varus valgus thing. It's, it's going to be the uh, flexion deformity because of bony abnormalities. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. So we are going to have, we are now going to address these large Oste posterior tibial osteophytes, which is actually causing, uh, the preventing extension. Okay, can you give me a this saw with a small blade? Oh, this is... You want to remove that osteophyte with saw, sir? Yes, otherwise we are not getting extension. Plus, I will have to resect the tibia, the femur some more.
ओके ऑस्टोटोम आई वुड रेकमेंड नॉट ऑल पीपल टू यूज द साथ एयर ही इज एक्सपीरियंस बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इफ यू आर एबल टू गेट अवे विद नेबलर sometimes a very sclerotic bone when you are trying to use an osteotom or nippler yeah can... this bone is sclerotic obviously this one was taking the load what is the defect now once you got rid of that postromedial osteophyte sir you still have lot of defect so a lot of osteophytes which i am trying to remove because they are blocking my extension Hey, careful, careful! No, 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 no! Don't do that. The vessels are there. <laughs> okay, leave it. Let us see. And I'm going to resect the femur by two. Plus two. You're trying to take. Two I'm going to take two more, uh, two millimeters off the femur. What What was the gap earlier, sir, with the spacer you saw? Oh, it, it, hardly anything. I mean, even with this. I think uh, we'll see. Let us see if we can get in a nine insert in. Forceps. This is the challenge of the surgery. Once this is done, the rest of it will be straight, very straightforward. So we need to spend a little time on this. Yeah. Once you get the extension gap right. Once I correct the uh, the FFD. The rest of it will be straightforward. Yeah, I think we are getting somewhere now. Yes. 
can you see yeah we have about 5 uh, degrees perhaps still left but uh, i think we can accept that for the time being that is a 9 mm space except yes. hello that is a 9 mm space yeah this is a 9 mm space sir and with that i i think i have about 5 degrees of flexion deformity has come down from the 40 degrees so i think uh, we we can accept this because you have to remember this patient has been used to walking with 40 degrees to ffd now if she has 5 degrees i think she can cope with it rather i think we should avoid putting these people into hyper extension do you agree yeah hyper extension is to be avoided in the uh, patient who have yeah so there there's about 5 degrees still there so we still have some more bone resections to do so i think uh, we'll do that and then we'll see if uh, something else needs to be done i normally don't resect more of the uh, femur about 2 mm is i think okay some people do resect 4 mm but i think probably after the femur uh, uh, cuts and completion you might get, get some more gap as well once you release the yeah we might uh, improve a little bit let us see let's go okay tibia was much okay okay so this is about d so we're getting a d for the femur okay this it's good hmm no okay give me the um, angel wing so we are not notching i think we need to you should check that yeah how is the flexion gap sir you think the flexion is not as tight as extension in this um no it looks okay to me, but we'll see if the flexion gap is tight then i'm going to resect tibia more and i think that and get away you know correct both the any of you have any questions you can ask me we don't need to yeah please you can ask him any question so said the question is what is the amount of external rotation you have given in this case so we have i have given 3 degrees um people do you yeah. say because hypertrophy of the medial condyle do you think in such circumstances yeah. have to increase the rotation sometimes so uh, yeah so it does tend to put it in internal rotation but you know from the cut i can make out that it is not because i have the grand piano sign right so the grand piano sign grand piano sign tells me that the uh, rotation is reasonably okay yeah the other thing what we could have done is we could have uh, you know put it parallel to the tibia and cut another way of doing it but uh, after having done the cut i i feel i am okay so there are if you don't get a grand if you don't landmarks for the femoral component rotation and no one of them is perfect so you yes yes checking whether your the component perpendicular to the white side line whether it is parallel to the epicondylar axis whether you are positioning it at some degree of external rotation to the posterior condylar line or you are placing it parallel to the cut tibia provided you are sure that the tibial cut is okay but generally we tend to take all four parameters there is one other yes in use you can put in a spreader into the joint measure the gap and see what is the differential tightness between the lateral and medial compartments each millimeter yeah. one degree so you can externally rotate or keep changing but as sir has done you need to be conservative you cannot externally rotate and compensate everything with the bone cut so if you remove a posterior osteophyte from the femur you will get some gap there so then it will open more medially so you need to be careful and judge carefully on table looking at multiple landmarks 
upon implant you use also if you are doing measured resection most of the times you tend to not deviate from the default rotation setting if you are doing a gap balancing type of knee like a buccal papas knee or something like that there the rotation is taken care by the gap system here when since you are doing a measured resection you can have a 3 to 5 degrees maximum but you cannot externally rotate because uh the philosophy changes completely once uh, you do ex excessive external rotation just to manage the gap you do normal cuts then probably you try to uh, re do the release and adjust but, or else if you see that because of the posteromedial hypertrophy of the femur the external rotation is not adequate the 3 degrees doesn't seem like 3 degrees then you mm. mark the epicondyle yeah uh, uh, so we don't have a cutter no okay not excessive external we have a cut of the screw the thing is there are two he is got the correction till 30 degrees now he might get some more correction after cutting the, the femur and doing the post capsule release what he is stressing out is because he is a post valvular vestibular paralysis patient with weak quadriceps even on the normal side he doesn't want it to be into the hyperextension because weak quadriceps with hyperextension the knee will fail so he doesn't want hyperextension so he has corrected as much as possible with the bone now he'll finish the femur cuts does the posterior release and he he wants to accept a slightly flexed me around 5 degrees because he's been walking with 40 degrees 5 5 degrees he can accept on the flexion side but not on the hyperextension so he's slightly undercutting in view of his activity as a cprp patient bolo to lagido yeah no no okay so i'm just doing the notch I, i'm just finishing the femur then you know we are going to remove some more osteophytes from behind the femur and then take the final assessment there are some more osteophytes there yeah, do this cut probably you will be able to have more access to that for a flexion deformity with coronal plane deformity the idea is to correct the coronal plane deformity first because the mcl and lcl are attached posterior to the midline any coronal plane yeah. can contribute to flexion deformity so some of the coronal plane deformity correction Do you have a spreader? And then you, you have a spreader. Back to post spreader, post spreader. Yeah. Then only try and do additional distal femoral resection because there is a temptation yeah. to cut the distal femur more. Now you remove the osteophyte, correct the deformity, then the gaps become unmanageable. So it's better to be conservative. Do a nine millimeter cut. Do the coronal plane correction. Remove the posterior osteophytes. Do posterior capsule release. Upsize the femur to make sure that the flexion gap is stuffed. and then you you can take a call whether you can cut more tibia or you want to cut more femur or something like that. in general yes. i not to change the joint line too much 4 mm yeah absolutely the patello femoral joint will get into problems so i i absolutely agree that the only thing is see uh, in the first instance i had a zero flexion gap so with a zero flexion gap you know i thought i will resect 2 mm and then uh, you know try to manage no no i want to uh, give me this okay all right Do you have a spreader? I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh. Yeah. So I'm going to use that technique which you suggested by using a spreader. See some more osteophytes going. No bigger one, the Paris Paris. Yeah, please. Big osteophyte. Yeah, big osteophyte entering the capsule. Yeah. so all that is going to then contribute to the uh, extension gap that's why i was hopeful that you know we'll get, get there eventually
No. do you accept some osteophytes on the lateral side sir or you want to get rid of all the osteophytes um, no generally i do accept some on the lateral side but in this case i would like to take it out because i think that that's the only thing i have left now so okay just, just take this out yeah so it looks fairly rectangular to me now see can you focus it from the gap on the lateral side there sir about uh, nine so we are fairly okay see it looks rectangular to me yes sir it looks rectangular dr kiran is there uh, dr krishna kiran yes, okay all right so it looks fairly rectangular to me so i am uh, let's see now let's put in the trials and check uh, give me the uh, femoral trial no hate do okay sitting pretty well just let me impact it a bit all right give me 9 so it's a little no no don't struggle don't struggle it's a little tight on the medial side this is the stage where i do a little bit of pie crusting give me a number 11 night you do a pie crust so this is mcl sir mcl can you see the tight band here can you focus there you know it looks see how clearly it is seen yeah that this band can you see we can see that's, that's that's the only thing that i'm going to pie crust the anterior part of mcl generally which is tight in flexion so anterior part i'm leaving it alone this is the part it's one actually should not do the anterior part okay so i've just put two steps and that's all for the time being see now it goes in very easily and now is the, the we are nearly straight that looks very good that uh, looks excellent how is the flexion gap, gap is stable Ah, so now we will check for medial stability. It's absolutely rock solid, as you can see. Yeah. Lateral stability, absolutely rock solid. Now I'm going to flex. No, wait. Let's take out this. Yeah. Patella tracking looks fantastic. So close the capsule. The will track absolutely perfectly. Right now, there's a but i am willing to go and now it looks pretty okay that looks pretty good i think we'll leave you to cement the knee uh, very well okay, just just last thing yeah. see there is no opening on the on the medial side okay i, I think I'm, I, I'm... we got all the principles of a varus flexion knee uh, very patient surgery where he has taken a 9 mm cut checked then found that there was zero extension gap then took a 2 mm cut then did a sequential medial release corrected the coronal plane deformity did the removal of posterior osteophytes chose the right constraint for that patient ps knee and uh, is able to get away with a very very uh, well balanced and good solution for this complicated situation sir we'll leave you to cement the uh, knee and uh, okay. the program okay. thank you very much for the great thing huge round of applause thank you, thank you.
So uh, thank you all very much. Thank you all. Uh, see you back in the hall in a, in in a few uh, minutes from now. If it's there, so we can go back. We'll have a short uh, inauguration and then we'll go with the hip surgery. Sorry for okay. the uh, of, uh, you know some issues. No problem. I think I think uh, we managed to convey what I what we wanted to. So I think the rest of it is fairly routine. That was fantastic, sir. That was amazing. A very difficult case. Very well managed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Looks good. Patella, what do you, you guys do the patella or leave it? Okay. 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 Good afternoon to our distinguished, distinguished guests, faculty, and delegates. A very warm welcome from Tirupati, Om Namo Venkateshaya. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome everyone to this very much awaited operative orthoplasty summit conducted by 
Ball Trust Hospital under the aegis of Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams with in association with Merrill Life Sciences. It is our great pleasure to warmly invite the experts in orthoplasty field to from all over India who accepted our invitation to participate in to participate in this great event. Now I request our beloved executive officer. Sri A.V. Dharma Redigaru onto the stage. Now I request our beloved Joint Executive Officer Srimati Sadabhar Gavigaru onto the stage. Now I request our special officer Sri Rajpali Redaparadigaru onto the stage without whom this event would have been. Now I request Dr. E. Krishna Kiran Garu, the course chairman, who is the key person for this event onto the stage. Now I request Dr. N. Purnachandar Rao, the President of Tirupati Orthopedic Surgeon Society, onto the stage. Now we'll start the program with a prayer. So now I request uh, Shri Shalendra sir, Garu onto the stage. Now we'll start with the prayer. Now I request Mr. Vivek from Merrill to come on to the stage. Okay. So, so so, so now it's we'll start the program with a prayer. I request all of you to stand and I invite Dr. Kruti Anger to start the prayer. Mahagana Manasa Smarami Mahagana Manasa Smarami Mahagana Manasa Smarami Vasista Vama Deva Divandita Mahagana Patim Mahadeva Suta Mahadeva Sutta Guru Guhanutam Mahadeva Sutta Guru Guhanutam Mahara Koti Prakasham Shantam Mahadeva Sutta Guru Guhanutam Mahara Koti Prakasham Shantam Mahakavyanataka Priyam 
ಮಹಾಕಾವ್ಯ ನಾಟಕಾಧಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮೂಷಿಕ ವಾಹನ ಮೋದಕ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮಹಾಕಾವ್ಯ ನಾಟಕಾಧಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮೂಷಿಕ ವಾಹನ ಮೋದಕ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಪಾಪ ಮಗ ಮರಿ ಸರಿ ಸನಿ ಸ ಪ ಮಗ ಮ ಪದನಿ ಸರಿ ಗಮ ಮರಿ ಸರಿ ಸನಿ ಪಮ ಸನಿ ಪ ಮಗ ಮನಿ ಪ ಮರಿ ಗ ಮರಿ ಸ ರಿ ಸ ಸಾನಿ ಪ ಮರಿ ಸನಿ ಸರಿ ಗಮ ಗಣಪತಿ ಮನಸ ಸ್ಮರಿ thank you dr pruthi so now we'll proceed with the lighting of the lamp for inauguration of the event Yes. Bharat Trust Hospital it's and stands for Balaji Institute of Surgery Research Rehabilitation for the Disabled has started in 1983 with a 50 bedded institute now under the guidance of Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam and with their support it has grown up to a national level hospital a big institute of around 350 bedded institute now recently under the able directorship of our uh, executive officer dharma reddy garu it has acquired few more incentive caps into our institute we have acquired ct machine ultrasound machines and a few uh, our standards of uh, x-ray machines as well as and our three new operation theaters which are of ultra modern level of international standards because of his uh, service he wants to do more service for the poor people he has collected a donation of around 20 crores for the institute under which the institute is growing up and because of his able support only we are able to do this level of summit orthoplasty summit thank you sir. now now i request you can pass yes now i request our chief guest uh, sri av dharma reddy gar to say few words regarding thank you sir okay okay ಓಂ ನಮೋ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶಾಯ 
వెంకటాద్రి సంస్థానం బ్రహ్మాండే నాస్తికించిన వెంకటేశ సమూదేవో నభూతో న భవిష్యతి ఐఎమ్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ టు నోట్ దట్ ది ఆర్థో ప్లాస్టి సమ్మిట్ ఈజ్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ ఫర్ ద ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ అండర్ ద లీడర్షిప్ ఆఫ్ బర్డ్ ఇన్ క్లోజ్ అసోసియేషన్ విత్ మెరిల్ ఇన్ తిరుపతి ఐ హ్యావ్ అండర్స్టూడ్ దాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ బీన్ టోల్డ్ అండ్ అండర్స్టూడ్ దాట్ దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ సమ్మిట్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ రేర్ ఇన్ ఎనీ ప్లేస్ సమ్ ప్లేసెస్ దే ఆర్ డూ ఆర్గనైజ్ ఇట్ బట్ ద నంబర్ ఆఫ్ సర్జరీస్ ఆర్ అరౌండ్ టెన్ టు ట్వెల్వ్ ఓన్లీ లైవ్ సర్జరీస్ బట్ హియర్ వీ హ్యావ్ ప్లాన్డ్ ఫర్ అబౌట్ ట్వంటీ టూ సర్జరీస్ హైలీ కాంప్లికేటెడ్ సర్జరీస్ అండ్ వెరీ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్డ్ స్కిల్డ్ సర్జన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద కంట్రీ హ్యావ్ కమ్ టు తిరుపతి మోర్ దాన్ వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ సర్జన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద కంట్రీ హ్యావ్ కమ్ ఐ వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ టు తిరుపతి హ్యావింగ్ యాక్సెప్టెడ్ జనరస్లీ అండ్ కమ్ హియర్ టు డెమాన్స్ట్రేట్ దేర్ స్కిల్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో టు టీచ్ ద బడ్డింగ్ సర్జన్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఫీల్డ్ అండ్ ది బర్డ్ హ్యాస్ ఆల్రెడీ డాక్టర్ వేణుగోపాల్ సెట్ దాట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అ బాలాజీ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ రీసెర్చ్ అండ్ రీహాబిలిటేషన్ ఫర్ డిసేబుల్ విచ్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద బెస్ట్ ఎక్విప్డ్ హాస్పిటల్ ఫర్ ఆర్థోలీడెడ్ రిలేటెడ్ సర్జరీస్ అవర్ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ అండ్ ఎయిమ్ ఆఫ్ ప్రమోటింగ్ దిస్ హాస్పిటల్ టు ఏదర్ నేషనల్ ఆర్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఈజ్ దాట్ ఓన్లీ కాంప్లికేటెడ్ అండ్ కేసెస్ వేర్ ఆర్డినరీలీ దీస్ కెనాట్ బి రిజాల్వ్డ్ హ్యావ్ టు కమ్ హియర్ అండ్ ఇట్ షుడ్ బికమ్ ఏ రెఫరల్ హాస్పిటల్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద కంట్రీ అండ్ హైలీ కాంప్లికేటెడ్ విచ్ అన్రిజాల్వ్డ్ సర్జరీస్ and ailments should be treated here that kind of expertise we would like to develop for that purpose we are providing all the infrastructure required to this hospital we are heavily concentrating on complicated not only complicated surgeries but cerebral palsy cases also correction of these things and also so many other uh, things we are doing i request all the surgeons to participate in this program till 2nd july and have darshan of lord and seek his blessings to further improve your skills where you can serve the humanity and all the surgeons who have come all over india i request all of you we have got a facility here you can come from your station to tirupati spend one or two days and conduct surgeries free of cost because our hospital is a is a providing service to the poorest of the poor without collecting any money free of cost we have got all the state of the art operation theaters instruments and equipments so all of you whoever is interested to serve the humanity poorest of the poor please come because doctor is a living god so all the living gods whoever is interested to take care of their devotees they can come here and do surgeries and we will provide you the traveling allowance as well as transport local transport in tirupati accommodation food arrangements and darshan of the lord all these things we would like to provide please come already this uh, arrangement is there lot of surgeons are coming from nearby areas and uh, from far, far flung areas also please come and uh, uh, serve the poorest of the poor and i compliment the team of uh, doctors uh, headed by dr redaparedi venugopal deepak and uh, pradeep all to name everybody from ha- having done this uh, great job and providing this kind of facilities here and also i thank meril forward to sponsor 
this event and i also thank media for coming here to uh, give this information to propagate this information to the entire country that bird is equipped this kind of facilities to treat the patients thank you very much thank you sir now i request joint executive officer dr sada bhargavi garu to give few words dr krishna kiran sir uh, good afternoon to all present uh, it is indeed an honor and privilege to be serving the lord here and uh, bird hospital i think is one of its kind not only in india but across the world where there are 300 beds for orthopedic surgeries and then 10 state of the art operating theaters with almost 30 orthopedic surgeons working full time and nearly 50 to 60 people coming from across the country and even somewhere outside the countries as well to do free service to the poor people i think it's a fantastic endeavor and uh, under the able guidance of sri dharma reddy garu he is a man of very few words I have met him a couple of times and he has uh, whenever we discuss he said that it should be on the world map i said sir it is already on the world map because the number of work cases that they do the type of cases that they operate are not seen anywhere else and we decided that proof of pudding is in eating it and the newer generation surgeons must be able to see these sort of cases and learn from them and so we created this program where we had 100 or 150 people who come and we have top surgeons from across the country who are very very experienced who will uh, come here operate the cases and it's a pure live surgery program we are also helping 20 uh, poor patients with complicated problems to get better here and i think this is the first of i hope it is the first of many more programs like this where there is continuing medical education and i have no doubt that in the coming future bird will definitely be on the map of the world for excellence in orthopedic surgery under the able guidance of shri ara reddy garu uh, venugopal deepak my friend and all of them so there's a fantastic team of surgeons here who are already doing fantastic work and some other people come voluntarily to 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 serve the lord and help the poor patients uh, as per their convenience i uh, thank all the delegates for coming here and all the faculty members for traveling to tirupati to make this event possible and meril life sciences for agreeing just on a i just spoke to them for 5 10 minutes and they said sir this is a great cause let us do it in uh, tirumala tirupati and then Uh, put it on the world map and this is being telecast live across the world and i've got lot of surgeons from us europe asking me for the links saying that these cases are so interesting we need to see this and uh, this is being telecast at one of a kind event i will not take much more time thank you very much to all the dignitaries on the dais and thank you to the delegates thank you to the media guys and we'll go ahead with the program thank you i thank uh, our honorable executive officer dharma reddy garu and jayivo madam for uh, uh, gracing this occasion so they have on behalf of the delegates and the faculty i extend my uh, gratitude for giving their uh, special darshan so at the end of this 3 days i am sure all of us will be going back with a lifelong cherished memories of god god and bird thank you Just stand by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Successfully. Yeah, I must apologize for the small glitch which happened during the first surgery, but I think uh, we were able to get the principles across. So now we have a THR case, and uh, I think Uday must have. I think is it, is it Uday's case? Uday, who is doing? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, Kiran, can you hear me? Uday, we Hello? still five ten minutes for you. You have to hang on. There is one talk by Dr. Martin. and then after that we will go live you can uh, expose and keep okay okay kiran yeah martin i'm so sorry i think you have i i get it yes so we have a small talk by dr martin and then after that we will go live
same number. Yes, same number. It's 30 years. It's 10, it's 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. Let me do that. Can take over. I, let me let me let me. Let no, no, not this one. No, it's in the top right there. Go down. Okay, so 10 minutes more to listen to me before you can go to the next uh, live surgery. Sorry about that, but I think it's something interesting that I will speak about you, especially when you will see about uh, revision cases of uh, hip surgery. I will speak about uh, revision in total hip arthroplasty, the role of Bilox option heads. Uh, it's not working anymore. I, I use that, it's okay. It's okay. So as before, the same disclaimer and general information and the disclosure since I am a consultant for SRAMTEC, the manufacturer of the product that I will present. As you all know, it's working now. Yes. As you all know, revisions are on the rise, not only because the numbers of primary hip surgeries are increasing, but also because of the fact that we are operating more and more younger patients. That means more and more cases are really expanding. And that means a higher percentage needs surgery. If you follow the main registries worldwide, you can see that aseptic loosening is still the reason number one for revision of a total hip arthroplasty. That means you always have at least to replace one of the components for the hip surgery. This is the reason why, uh, this is the reason why Ceramtech many years ago developed a special system to replace the revision in the case of the ball heads. It's called the Bilox option system. It comes uh, made of material Bilox Delta that you heard about a little bit before, about the properties and the advantage of Bilox Delta. It comes in different sizes from 28 to 48 millimeter in diameter. And the specificity of this system, the Bilox option, is the fact that you have now sleeve, which is mounted on the ball head. And this sleeve is made on titanium, aluminum, vanadium alloy, and comes in different neck lengths, SML, XL, in order to adapt the position of the leg of the patient. So why use a ceramic head adapter for what you need the sleeve? The main reason is specifically when you revise the ball heads and you want to keep the stem in situ for the patient, if it's well fixed stem, then you can exchange the ball head by using that system by mounting a sleeve on the slightly damaged taper of the stem and use a brand new Bilox Delta ball heads. The other advantage is also intraoperatively if you want to adapt the offset of the neck length and having a different length, different possibility to adjust the position and the length of the leg. And finally, and also in some cases, in case of a fracture of a ceramic ball head, then you have to replace and we strongly recommend to use again a ceramic ball head due to the problematic of the fact that you have, may have some scratches coming from the rest of the fractured ceramic particles. I will go a bit faster on that. As I showed you before, we have a lot of, we think, advantage by using the Bilox Delta, the new Bilox ceramic materials with all the advantage as shown here. And I would like now to show finally, okay, let's assume we, we are using now this Bilox Delta ceramic uh, revision head. What does that mean? Is that really giving some improvements for the patient? And that's a very interesting study which has been published recently by the Rizzoli Institute in Italy. They were using between 2000, the year 2000, 2016, analyzing all the cases of revision. And they make two groups. One group where the revision was used a ceramic on ceramic. That means with this system of the Bilox option. And the other group, the control group, so-called, is all the other cases. That means you can have 
ceramic on polyethylene, the Bilox 40, the previous generation of ceramic on polyethylene, metal on polyethylene, as well as 40 on 40, this combination, which in principle is not used anymore. Let me look a bit more in detail about the two cohorts. On the left-hand side, the 327 revision case of Bilox Delta on Bilox Delta. As you can see, the follow-up, mean follow-up is a bit shorter than the other one, four years versus seven plus year. And also the head size is a bit different because it has been done more recently. That means we are go more going towards the tendency to have larger head. So the discord has a larger proportion of 36 millimeter ball head compared to the all the group as a control. Nevertheless, you can find these very interesting results as shown here. As you can see on the pink curve, you see now an advantage by using the ceramic delta on delta as a revision compared to the blue curves, which is all the other cases of revision with the other ball head system. This is why the authors of this publication came to the conclusion that ceramic on ceramic with Bilox delta shows a stable outcomes over the time with most of the re-revisions occurring the first year, which is also mainly due to recurrent dislocation. So there is a strong evidence with this publication that showing that having ceramic on ceramic with the Bilox Delta system, you increase the chance of re-revision, or re let's say differently, more positively, you reduce the risk of revision, of re-revisions in the case of the total hypatroplasty. I would like to show you now a curve which is not published, not shown in this uh, publication by this uh, Rizzoli Institute. If you look within the, the case, the cohort of the ceramic delta on delta, actually not all the case of revision has been done with the using the sleeve. As you can see on the blue side, on the right side, sometimes the, the surgeon used directly the what you call the primary bilox delta ball head on the damaged stem. And you can see here clearly that they have a higher risk of revision, of re-revision, done with the red one, which is you have using the sleeve. And that's why Ceramtech, the manufacturer of the system, the Bilox option, always strongly recommend in case of revision, because you always have a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, default on the, or damage on the taper of the stem, if you keep the stem in situ, it's always better to use a sleeve, it's more safe for your situation, as you can show here now concretely on these results. The question arises, okay, but now we have a tape, taper, we have a new sleeve, that means we have a new interface uh, created in the articulation, because now we have an interface between the sleeve and the taper, and then interface between the sleeve and the ball head. So we have, uh, we'd like to show you this uh, recent also analysis from the HSS hospital in New York, based on the retrieval of 24 sleeved, and they make an analysis where, quantitative, qualitative analysis, where does the fretting corrosion occur? And they use for that the Goldberg scoring for the situation. And they came to the conclusion that actually at the interface between the taper of the stem and the sleeve, you have a higher risk of fretting corrosion than at the outer surface between the sleeve and the ceramic ball head. But nowadays, they come to this conclusion that this finally, this quantity of fretting corrosion is really limited. And that's the reason why they really recommend to use, in case of revision, this Bilox option system with the sleeve, because they provide a more safe and secure connection of the ball head, of the ceramic ball head, against the taper of the stem. Let me show you some example of uh, observation. This is now the inner part of the sleeve, that means in contact with the taper of the stem. So they find some cases with no fretting or corrosion, minor or moderate. And on the outside of the sleeve, which is in contact with the ceramic ball heads, they only find no or minor corrosion. For all these reasons, they recommend to use a bilox option system in case of revision, specifically if you want to keep the stem in situ. But let me give you some just practical guys, some advice when you're using a ceramic bullet in general, and more specifically with the Bilox option system. First of all, it is important to remember that when you want to mount a ceramic bullet on the taper of the stem, you always have to clean and dry before you mount the ball head, the taper of the stem. Why? We have done a ceramtech some analysis. What is the theoretical resistance of the ball heads depending on the situation of the taper of the stem? As you can see on the top here in pink, if the taper of the stem is clean and dry, you reach the 100% of the theoretical resistance of the ball head. 
But as soon as you have some bond cement particle or even some drop of water, you reduce the theoretical resistance. And the worst situation is down here. If you have some minor damage at the taper, mechanical damage, which can always occur if you have a contact with the retractors on the taper of the stem. And that situation, as you can see here, only about 30% of the theoretical resistance of the ball head re remains. That means at that situation, you really need to use a sleeve system to avoid this risk of uh, fracture. So now we understand why after I've, having done a cleaning and drying of the taper of the stem, you make a visual inspection to make sure that everything is perfect, no risk. If the taper has no damage, which normally should occur in a primary situation, then you use a conventional bilox or let's say the primary bilox delta ball head. In case of revision, again, then you have to judge the, the, the fault of the taper of the stem and use the bilox option system. By mounting the ball heads for the bilox option system is the same as the primary. You slightly turn the ball head on the taper of the stem to make sure there's no tilting, and then you impact with a strong impaction to make guarantee that you have a tight fixation between the ball head and the taper of the stem, exactly the same as for the primary as you do for the Bilox option system. This brings me now already to the conclusion of my presentation. We believe that the Bilox option system is a versatile and proven solution for all these reasons mentioned here. And I should say now from a personal point of view as a material science, I think Ceramtech made the good choice to make this sleeve in titanium, aluminum, vanadium alloy, because it's more ductile and makes more uh, deformation, more adaptation of the damaged taper in comparison with some cobalt comb sleeve, which has been used in the past, the metal on metal at the large head, which brings all this disaster with the metallosis. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you a good continuation of your meeting. Thank you, Martin. I think a uh, very important message that if we are using a ceramic head in revision surgery, it is a good idea to use an option head with a titanium sleeve adapter. So yeah. I think that's the message for the audience. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Martin. Thank you for You're being welcome. here. Uday, I think we are ready to go now. Uh, we'll just quickly show the case details and then we are uh, over to you. Okay, Kiran. Kiran, can you hear me? I can hear you. Couple of minutes yeah. of presentation and then we are live. Yeah. Yeah, the, thank you, Kiran uh, Chandrasekhar, Dr. Arvind sir, and the entire board hospital team. Excellent, uh, you know, the uh, international level of uh, organization. I know your organization skills, uh, where I, I to myself have learned so many things. But here is a case of a uh, young female uh, around 57, where uh, she had a neck of femur fracture, and uh, she's been uh, working on this uh, since uh, 20 years. So, I hope uh, I'll have a good version tomorrow. So if I do the case uh, properly, because a 20 years old uh, case, neglected, neck of femur fracture. If you see the uh, uh, camera, can you show that? Yeah. So uh, uh, Kiran, can you see the X-ray? Yes, Hello? Kiran? Sir, we can see the X-ray, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir, clear. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So here, uh, the neglected uh, neck of femur fracture and 20 years old, there is a lot of remodeling. The, uh, there are a lot of changes in the cup side and uh, as well as the femur side. First coming to the cup side, uh, we have completed, we didn't keep an AP view, but we completed around uh, 46 or 48 cup because we need to have a small uh, cup and uh, the uh, head neck is completely absorbed. The, there is a grot, uh, not much gross shortening, what we examined uh, clinically uh, before. It was a two centimeter shortening of, uh, of this lady, but uh, she is uh, uh, pain, uh, pain, uh, no, painless for at least for eight, uh, some 18 years. Since two years, she has a lot of pain. So for this, uh, she came for this uh, replacement. If you see in the femur, in the lateral also, there is a lot of bowing of the femur. So the options for uh, the stem, uh, it always, uh, because the lot of metaphysical uh, remodeling and a lot of uh, what you call uh, broadening of the femur, proximal femur, I think routine coral type of stem, um, I have doubt of uh, fixation. So I told them backup of uh, cemented stem or uh, distal loading stem. But the problem is in distal loading stem, again, she's a short female, uh, maybe one, 190, uh, maybe the cutoff. I need to check with the CM also. Can you hear me? 
yes yes we can hear you yeah so that is the femur so uh shall we go go for the case yes please so uh, because of the time i have exposed uh, can you see now yeah we can see very nicely yeah yeah, yeah thank you uh, atrium see uh, routine posterior approach uh, dr kiran and uh, we have exposed the uh, first fascia mainly the tensor fascia we have excised my stent uh, lift the knee uh, in the abduction so we we cut the tensor fascia later we expose nicely there are two things one is this uh, gluteus maximus i have insert uh, insertion i have released here for uh, betterment for the exposure and also for stress on the sciatic nerve second thing is uh, this uh, rotators when my stent asked me to uh, ask him to rotate so i expose the rotators this is my routine practice where i put two two stitches after exposing the fine mommies and the uh, two conjoint tendons i put a knot here for rotators and one more knot in the for the capsule so after can you can you see the head now yes yes we can see that yeah so now i'm exposed till here i'll try to remove the head after placing the one uh, spike inferiorly gently how much uh, the limb right? discrepancy yeah. operatively yeah yeah sorry i can't hear you how much was the limb length discrepancy 2 cm true shortening it is cocker simma do you use any limb length stitch or anything to uh, restore the limb yeah length? see yeah that was uh, my boss has to do dr pachore sir but uh, i'll see the anatomical uh, landmark uh, rather than the stitch i'll show you that offset and comment and version my during my uh, course of the procedure okay okay yeah so if you see the head, uh, head is exposed it is uh, almost a little bit more than him this time focus Can you see the head? Yes, yes, we can see the. Head. It's like a actual cracking. So now I'll go with a special uh, uh, retractor, snake retractor. If you see this uh, retractor, can you see this? Yes, we can see that. Yeah. So I'll ask my assistant to rotate. If you see the leg, complete. Show the leg here. you are able to see you are able to see okay rotate and i'll palpate the anterior one of the cup or acetabulum slowly i'll pass below it and i'll try to expose slowly in fear spike so the first spike goes slowly on the anterior side retracting the femur for the benefit of the, the second answer, spike can you yeah. tell us what are your landmarks for placing that homan retractor yeah yeah if you can you see the uh, the spike where it goes i'll tell you the thing first yeah yeah we we can see it clear you, you can see the clear no yeah. so it goes just under the uh, uh, the anterior wall it sits on the column if you see the spike here yeah you can see here spike it goes and sits on the column here and this side it will not only expose the cup but also retract the femur yes can you see now yeah we can see that and what's the position of the limb when you place that yeah can you see now it's uh, rotated yeah this is rotated excellent rotated here yeah we can see the entire limb yes Can you see the under limb? So the uh, spike is positioned into the anterior column with forty-five yeah. degrees of hip flexion, forty-five degrees of internal rotation. Once the no, okay. place, he will uh, flex. Kiran, can you see the leg internal. leg position? The tricks to mobilize the femur, like he said, is to cut the gluteus maximus tendon first. 
then it will prevent the posterior sticking of the femur. It can be translated anteriorly. Then he's using that curved retractor to lever the femur forward. Unless you expose a stabulum, you can't do the surgery. Till the table, little bit, little bit. Ah. So, can you see the uh, leg? Internally rotated, little bit. Yeah, very 40 good. degrees. I think you can't see the leg, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, please zoom out and show the leg. More. No, we're able to see it in uh, screen in screen. There are two screens. Okay. Here. So, we're able okay. to see it. See, this is a second spike. This is uh, going as a most uh, weak, weak wall of the astablum. It goes inferiorly. The mycelium will push it down. It will not ret retract. So meanwhile, I'll clean up the uh, cup area. We'll see uh, if required, I'll put a superior pin here if required. So I'll, I'll clean up the cup more after the exposure of uh, cup 360 degrees. There is some remnants of the head coming out. I'm exposing a little bit of a superior lateral of the uh, capsule here. Can you see? Can you see the cup inside? Yes, yes, we can see. Uh, uh, please uh, tilt the camera. A knife, Emma. Just I'm removing a little bit of a little bit. It's a useful idea to stick to the anterior and posterior walls of the astablum when we are disabled yeah. because the anterior wall will limit the neurovascular structure on the front, the femoral neurovascular. Posterior will protect the sciatic nerves. Okay, Identify the if wall. You see the the wall. Yeah, sorry. Uh, if you see the cup inside, it's almost like uh, some uh, dysplastic area. If you see, I expose the TAL here. Can you see here? Yes. It's not very clear, but we are just able to see. Yeah. But this, uh, see the shape of the cup? It's like uh, it's like uh, egg, egg, Good. half egg. You can appreciate it a little better. Yeah. So the, this is uh, almost the false establum here. My artery is showing, and somewhat this is a true establum. I can see some amount, amount of fat. That is a landmark for showing a true establum. Can you see this? Yes. So if, if you put a reamer somewhere here on the false, you're going to be in a high hip center or maybe a little bit lateralization. So I'll go with the landmarks, what on the table. This is a fat pad. I can see here. Can you see here? Pad, pad? Do you use any Chanli pin or anything for uh, posterior retraction? Uh, the Chanli's I have stopped using, but I'm okay with the uh, uh, maybe a semen pin if required. Because that will are able to see the are able to see the entire problem. We're able to see, but I think the posterior capsule is coming in the way. Uh, perhaps it's a good Post idea to put some Homan retractor or put a Chanli pin posteriorly. So that we'll be able to yep. see the three uh, plane. all around the establishment. You, you, you mean to say in the ischial tuberosity or somewhere in the superior one? Mm. Ischial, ischial tuberosity. Yeah, because the, the soft tissue is so tight here. It looks pretty decent to that. I think you should carry on. Looks pretty decent. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. I think you can carry on. There's no issue with that. Yeah. No. You can see the almost uh, 300 degrees of establum. That's pretty decent. It's very nice view. 
you yeah can... now you can see more yeah first stream remember the first streamer is a smaller streamer just shall rein the floor usually i use a cm for even all the primary hips but but here due to the time i am going for the landmarks on table here, here i am planning for a smaller cup the what the template uh, uh, was showing on 46 i think 44 or 46 should, uh, should be uh, okay for this but before that i need to develop a concentric uh, or hemispherical cup to to match that one so this is the second demo for this side 40 uh, 40 41 the first demo was 37 at the base next is 41 so my demo if i go from superior to inferior i'm going to ream entire uh, superior part can you see here but i am leaving a gap here i'm going according to the landmarks can you see please rotate camera the focus has gone out of the field we not able to see the ah, they are adjusting ah thank you Can you see? Yeah, we. This can. this is my first streamer here. First streamer. See the angle of the streamer. It's exactly parallel to the TAL. If you see the TAL, I've I've seen I've shown here once. I'll show again. This is the TAL. You need to rotate, ba. You can roll it. कैमरा इट नीचे रावल या सर सवन एस टू बी बैक ऑफ मी जस्ट सॉरी फॉर द डिले If you if you miss the TAL again, the all the landmarks are missed. Where I want to keep a first finger parallel to it. Uh, Uday, we are not able to see much. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, not this one. Not this angle. You and. Uh... whenever you're reaming maybe they make adjustment this the camera is moving too much whoever is a cameraman he should not move too much and it's out yeah. of give, give, give the ring give the ring more so someone zoom please the the camera has gone out of focus completely yeah yeah he's adjusting the camera person is adjusting and the brightness has increased you need to focus from my back actually so that it will sit no not that zoom amma this zoom zoom not zoom out zoom in okay reduce the zoom please actually ikkane chalavale so yeah i think you yes, should stop it. here and stick to this view is unnecessary yes yes much, yeah. yeah you are okay with this view yeah we are okay with this view yeah you should go out. that's it that's it yeah uh but please don't move camera pass so yeah. this is a first streamer it need bit better focus picture see him now we can see the transverse stapler ligament anterior retractor everything yeah it looks nice yeah forward bit more forward bit more you can see the tail get it now just i'm going parallel to tail yeah your bone is very very porotic 
Don't change the camera. Almost I've reached the floor with a first streamer. Because since uh, she's walking since 20 years, the walls are pretty weak. You should be very, very careful in going this. So the next number is 43. So I'll not go deep. Just I'll ream a little bit of column, little bit till it catches. Can you see this reamer? Yeah, I can see. We can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going very slow. Right. So I'm reaming a odd number 43 so that I have one extra bit of uncemented 44, 44 trial elements. So you said you templated it to 46, is it? Yeah, 44 or 46 because uh, it was not a one to the magnification. They showed me on the, that uh, what you call uh, the digital view. Any questions? From so I thought, may, sorry. Just some checking with the 44. Whether I have something old. So with the last streamer, did you get a good capture, uh, AP capture? Yeah, I got a good capture. Yeah. But I don't think because the bone is so poor, the 44 instead of 44, what the template was there was 46. I'll try with 46. Because it's an old. You know, I'll, I'll, open, the head is... I'll open the. Sorry? Because of the old, uh, you know, chronicity of the, uh, you know, with the pathology, it's an old fracture. The head yeah, is yeah. formed and the, the acetabulum also has gone out of shape, isn't it? Yes, yes. So I, I think you, you, you need to, you know, to rely on the opposite side, which you did, I guess, isn't it? Yes, Chandra. Yeah. This is not 46, Amma. So for the benefit of the audience, usually, you know, when you, when you remove the head, the size of the head will determine the size of the cup. So you shouldn't be over reaming or under reaming. So typically about, it's about two to four millimeters above the size of the head. Like for example, if you get the size is 46. So the maximum you can ream oh. up to is about around okay. 50. So you can get up to a 50 size cup. So if you put a larger cup than 50, then that means you have over reamed the yeah. cup. So this Chandra, uh, so I kept this 46, uh, what uh, was a template. Yes. So it is parallel to the TL. Little yes. bit of anti-version, 10 degrees of anti-version. What size? I'll hit and see. What size? Trial? 46. 46. 46. Are you planning for I can a... see the fit. You, you I can see the fit. The pelvis is moving. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So, I can see that the, the fit is okay. But I'll go with the uh, 46 same same original cup with one or two screws because of uh, the porosity of uh, bone. Can you hear me? Yes, it's breaking up in between, but yes, we can hear you. Now. Yeah, can you hear me? If you see the zoom here, yeah. I, I can move the pelvis. Can you can you see the can you see the picture? Yes, yes, we can see. The pelvis is moving. I think uh, it has a good hold, but I'm not 100% happy. Uh, maybe uh, I need a couple of screws to fix. So 46 cup. Okay. So the two things to look for, one is the AP capture and there should not be any super yeah. toggle. So once you've done the trial, you, should, you shouldn't be able to sort of rotate the trial within the acetabulum. So you should get yeah. a good AP capture and when you try to try to toggle it, there should not be any movement there. So Maybe, these two parameters Maybe. to look for the stability of the cup. Forty-six. Wash. Amma, give me the thirty. 
small one, 37 or around this one. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. So there's a question from the uh, audience today. Yeah, yeah. Please tell me. Uh, is it, do you routinely remove the entire entirety of the labrum? No, no. Oh, mainly on the so, so superior lateral part, just for uh, uh, checking uh, the overhang of the cup because. If you see the inclination angle, the original inclination angle is up to 40 to 45. So if you keep a cup, there should be a little bit of, uh, you know, the, what do you call uh, 5 to 6 mm of overlap of the cup. Means there should be, there should be seen some, uh, what do you call uh, the cup outside the surface should be seen. That is uh, exact objection angle. Can you, can you hear me, Chandra? Yes, 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 today. Yeah, yeah. For that purpose, I've removed a little bit of labor from here, where I want to see in my cup a little bit of uh, overhang, so that I, I want to maintain that abduction angle 40, 45 degree. Okay. See, the labrum has to be, if there is any soft tissue interposition, then oh, competition. This osteo integration will not happen. Uh, the, the bone is so fragile, okay. like only you, with the first reamer itself. Uh, I reached the floor. Not so that's why I've gone only two reamers. Then I'm going for original cup. Do you use any special measures to check for your uh, inclination and version? Yeah, see, uh, give me a routine cup, uh, trial cup. Uday, do you use any smart devices to uh, recheck your inclination and version or you just rely on the TAL? No, no, I'll rely only on TAL because, because uh, TAL, whatever, in a huge revision, so TAL is uh, not, not going to change. But before TAL, your position of the table should be perfectly parallel and perpendicular and there should not be any strictly no movement. So I'll demonstrate this uh, position of uh, abduction and uh, antiversion angle uh, with the trial cup now so that... Uh, for benefit of the junior colleagues. So the, 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 this is a, <clears throat> what you call uh, vertical and this is horizontal to, to the table. So your, your tal uh, will determine you, your, your position of the cup, your position of cup, 45 degrees to this, 40, 45 degrees to this. If anything, if anything, your cup goes in this direction, means your cup is opening up or it goes in the opposite direction it is going to be in so second thing is uh, this is anti this is anterior side and posterior side if you go for more opening like this then there will be too much overhang and there will be impingement on the anterior side and if you go on on the uh, retrovision side high risk for dislocation yes Oh. Can you see the uh, stablum, Chandra? And then you, you you see all circumferentially all around. So you have to make use uh, there's of the a, to check your inclination. A three hole cup. Be parallel to the tile and make sure that your walls are visible. So if it is. This is a three hole cup. You'll be able to see a little bit of the. 46 size. Surface posteriorly, if it is ready, uncemented, and it will be pointing the other way. So, sorry, forty-six cup. Yeah. Yeah, forty-six cup. Okay. Do you normally check it on CM uh, during the trial or? Uh, yeah, yeah. As a routine practice? All my, pri all my pri primary cases, I'll check on the CM, uh, Chandra. Without CM, I'm not going to come out. Here, if you see the original cup, I'm checking out the bottom out. Yes. Can you see inside? Yes. It's bottom out nicely. There is a overhang of the cup here. Means my abduction angle is around 40, 45 degrees. I can see the cup is tilted in the direction. Yes. 
the dandy reside yeah. my devotion and the cup is holding very good but still because of the porosity i want to put uh, one screw so there are uh, uh two screws we can keep in the uh, superior lateral quadrant it comes like a v shape one is from the what you call uh, sciatic notch it comes like this to the center of the establum this area give me one more atri and one more is inferior spine to the center of the establum this is a safe zone of the screws yes safe zone of the screws yeah bill oh, open 30 so dr uday was explaining about the levnic safe zones for the placement of the screws so the posterior superior quad yeah. that's the safer safest area for placement of the screws so less chance of injury to the neurovascular structures yeah so th there is a 24 uh, and uh, 30 screws so i'm placing 30 screw first if i'm happy i'll leave it with one screw what do you suggest one or two screws your practice chandra it depends on your on the feel i mean if if i'm able to get a good fit so then i prefer not to use screws not, uh, not as a routine practice but if there is yes. a doubt about the stability then If I go for screws, I'll always use two Focus screws rather button. than one screw. Let us have a vote. How many screws do the audience use? Two screws. Hmm. One screw. Yeah. Okay. Possible. Possible. So generally, the so Kiran at least two screws really? divergent because the screws will compress hmm. the area of the cup sector. In closer to the bone, so if you have a single screw, the cup mm. can still rotate. And how do you choose whether okay. to put a screw or not? You uh, rotate the cup and see if it is not rotating. That means the AP capture is very good. Okay, good. A trial in and you rotate. So AP capture is mandatory for successful cups. Like this had a good AP capture. He was checking by rotating. So, and the second is so, perpendicular to the AP capture. You move it in a superior inferior direction and see. If you have both stability, no screw. If you have AP capture, no superior inferior, two screws. So that's generally the fundamental principle. So how to assess? If you get forty-eight cup AP capture, no superior inferior stability, go one size up. But you cannot go more than four or five millimeters than the head size as well as Chen Shikhar told. So these are all the things we keep in mind when we are making a choice in uncemented. Yeah, uh, Kiran, I'm going with the poly. I have uh, happy with one screw because my AP capture was good. Uh, I I thought of leaving without screw, but still uh, place one screw for my safety because of our long-standing uh, porotic bone. Now I'm uh, I'm placing the poly. This poly should sit properly, exactly where it should be intended, like posterior. Focus. Focus. Yeah, I'm okay. Yes, sir. I'm done with the cup. I'll go with the femur. I think the femur in this part is a bit difficult. As you see, there is a broadening of uh, facial area. My assistant will hold up to complete flexion of the hip. With internal rotation, yeah. and my second assistant will try to put a spike closely to the neck neck area, calcar area. But here I I don't find any gap here. Put the leg a little bit right. Are you are you able to get a uh, all around view? Uh, you uh, yeah yeah no, no I'm not able to get it. Why? Because uh, the there is a lot of uh, what do you call. Uh, Morphology has changed. The proximal femoral, this morphology has changed here. No? So, just I'm trying to expose a little bit more. Uh, uh, I'll expose a little bit of uh, trochanter area, so that. So, if you are doing a posterior approach, should be able to adduct and internally rotate the hip freely. So then only 
your reduction will be easier now you you, you can see it from here the complete this is a tip of gt here tip of gt pointing vertically yes and uh, i i don't find any opening of the canal i need to go very slowly because the morphology has been changed here what stem are you planning with a cemented or uncemented yeah i'm planning uh, because is a type c door i'm planning for uh, mostly cemented okay. because the metal has this uh, coral type of stem i think in uh, white uh, metaphysis i don't think it is going to hold so i thought the uh, cemented stem might be better or in case uh, something like a disloading stem 190 diameter but i'm worried about the lot of going there not only that i mean in this kind of a chronic so the, the, this is a step where you should be very careful i, I palpate the tip of the gt just to the uh, middle to the uh, tip i pass my first what you call box cut to remove some amount of bone here yeah in this kind of a chronic situation you can anticipate difficulties in reduction so a cemented stem would be a better idea than going for an uncemented stem one two things second thing is i'm passing a reamer to find the canal whether i'm in the canal or no on dorsi morphology where the the canal is very wide so yeah it is better fit with cemented and the other one is if you are having any difficulties you can sink the stem a little further in yeah rust yeah because so we have a small morphology of uncemented partial rust for the uh, lateralization let i'll rasp this is cemented stem we don't have rasp here routine rasp so i'm rasping with the uncemented stem to so have a good lateralization i'll go very gentle slowly expand next A cemented stem, which is next. Yeah, this cemented stem. Ah, ah. This is a cemented stem. Yeah. I'm slowly, I'm extending more. Marek, please. So, for the audience sake, whenever we have a high riding hip, so there is a problem with reduction. Yeah. So there are three options for any uh, high riding hip. If you want to sink the stem low, you have a cemented, which is easy because you can change the version whatever we want. We can take it craniocordially also. Very last one. Excellent. So uh, we must be thinking whether you know it's the easiest option, and we know that from registry there is not much difference between cemented and an uncemented. Rotated hip, sir. Huh? The femoral side, acetabulum different. Uh -huh. So if you can do a good cementation, three four no, and a collarless three, four steeper type of stem rather than two a last stem, uh -huh. then it will last very long. Two choose your stem carefully. Not one one with ridges, one with a big two original no, collarless. Take it two original. The standard of keeper. So the so other... here, uh, Kiran, we have only two sizes in uh, cemented stem. Uh, they said that uh, they have only zero and one for the trial. Two original we have, but if you see the uh, one size uh, trial, if you see the stem, it's completely going and very free. So I don't have two trial size here, but uh, mostly I'll go with uh, original stem two later after the uh, uh, reduction. Yeah. Give me, soft give me answer, Mr. Ma. Yeah. What are the soft tissues we have to release? Is yeah. there any re release of iliosovus is required? And uh, post capsular, uh, anterior capsular release also. Is there any uh, releases? Needed? Yeah, there are still three structures, sir. One is anterior capsule. There is a grass. If required, there. iliosovus and the reflected head. Uday, we should Uday. be careful. Uday, there's there are some questions from the audience. Yeah, please, please tell me. Because it's a long-standing case. Uh, yeah, soft. Ilio soas as well, and uh, yes. There is a breaking. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, the first question is because it is a long-standing case. What is the yeah. soft tissue release, and what releases will you be doing? 
do you have to release the iliopsoas as well that is first one second is there seems to be some anterior bowing of the femur and the bone is osteoporotic so what precautions yeah. would you take uh, in such kind of a bony morphology there of a first question is here uh, the true shortening is only 2 cm so i have released the anterior capsule and uh, i haven't repeat, uh, released the uh, illusions yet after the uh, pl placement of the stem and uh, i'll see the reduction if required i'll, I'll release for the release i don't want to overlease and pre release before my trial reduction i'll go in incremental way second thing is because of uh, bowing my long stem option uh, have ruled because here the stem starts from uh, 190 or 200 so for this uh, i'll be in trouble if i place that one and maybe the anterior cortex may hedge that's why i selected a cemented stem Chandra Shekhar, can you hear me? Yeah, we get that. Uh, Oda, you keep working, so we will uh, uh, convey what yeah, section. Section. Yeah. The, the key step is whenever he's trying to internally rotate the hip. Yeah. If you're not How able much? to internally That's rotate the hip to ninety, you can't do the surgery, right? So these structures which impede internal rotation are the gluteus maximus insertion first, which we release. Then you release the anterior capsule. Next. Then you have to release the adductors from below the lesser trochanter. So your addu adductor magnus comes from the linea aspera. on the posterior medial aspect of the femur so you release that 2 3 cm below the lesser trochanter you release that mm. till it is not internal yes, internal next sir so that is the order of release but if he got internal rotation to 90 without doing all that he just did a g max release little bit of capsule work he got internal rotation to 90 now he will do a trial and see if he is not able to reduce the hip now he will do further release in that order again 1 2 3 4 g max anterior dorsal losing adductor magnus followed by iliopsoas that is unlimited next next is a 300 degree release depending on the requirement should not be releasing the abductor attachment that is the most crucial thing the gluteus medius minimus hmm. attachment should not be released can release all around until you get a full ex full internal rotation and exposure unlimited demo try just nibble remote osteoporotic bone as he had said that's the reason that's one of the other reasons why he chose a cemented stem uh for the, the demonstration purpose what happened is like uh, we don't have a, a, a cemented stem of uh, more than two so the stem was wobbling so i put a uncemented stem six i'll so, so yeah change... i'm starting with the offset of minus 3.5 I'll check it on the CM, and after that we'll go forward. If it is reducible or no. Have you changed your plan? Right. Plan B, uncemented stem, is it? Yeah. Uh, see, only for the trial purpose. So many of the places. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, so I'll reduce and I'll, I'll take a call because the stem uh, we don't have more than two here. So, uncemented stem. I'll check in the CM how much it is fitting. The size six is fitting well with uh, completely no rotation. So, uh, I will see after the reduction. I'll take a call. So, my essence. If I see here, I'll try to push it a little gently. Traction. Yeah, it's tight. It's tight. So, there are two ways. I need to push the stem more in. And have a little bit of release more. If I have a release before only, what happens is if it is reducible, then uh, the risk of instability is high. That's why I waited for this before the trial, just checking whether I am able to reduce or no. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you loud. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, that was a question prior. Prior, like, uh, what are the structures released? Initially, I released only gluteus maximus and anterior capsule. That's all. So, uh, because a uh, little bit of tightness, I might have to release a little bit more of the uh, the other structures, like iliopsoas or little bit of uh, adductors. There is a huge bone here. it's very tight 
I'll try to uh, nibbler. It's impinging on the soft tissues. That looks oh. like the lesser trochanter, isn't it? Yeah, lesser trochanter is more here. Here, the the bone is completely uh, morphology has changed here. Entire thing. So I need to remove a little bit of bone uh, uh, from the neck here, a little bit. Uh, rotate, please. Be gentle. Do you think you can? Can uh, you see here? Little bit. Can of you see here? There's there's a big bone here. Okay. So if you see here, it's away. That looks like to the uh, to me the medial cortical prominence, which has remodeled over a period of time. Yes. Yes. So. so uh, your trial was is the latitude stem or is it the uh, uh, proximally coated stem which we are trying to use here? Yeah, this is a proximal coated stem. Uh, sorry, latitude stem. Latitude stem. Do they have the proximally coated stem there or they don't have that? They, they don't have. They don't have. They have latitude. Okay, right. right. Just wait, nice. Yeah. I'm checking what are the structures are tight so that I want to release more. Rotate. Yeah. Ah. The spike is should be very careful here. Goes close to the nerve. Nibbler, please. Have you done the release of iliosoas? Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to release because there is a huge uh, bony uh, growth here. Can okay. you see here? Just I'm to trim that one. Then I'll release one more spike, please. Can you see here this one? Uh, yeah, we can see. Yeah. Then. Okay. Nibbler, please. Okay, quartering. Put it. Nibbler, please. If you see in the pre-op X-ray, just to show that X-ray, that big uh, chunk of uh, bone on the middle side. That's holding the soft tissues tight. Traction, Yeah. Now it has been moved freely. Go back. Can you check it now? The moment. Uday, little maybe, bit of free now. Maybe you can open I'll, the real cemented stem which you're planning uh, and yeah, yeah. trial with. Yeah. The cemented stem. Two. Yeah. 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 
ಕಾನ್ಸೆ ಸರಿ ಮಲಟ್ This is a minus three fraction. Okay. Yeah. I got a little bit. I need more, a little bit more release. ಫ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಇದೆ ಯಸ್ ರೊಟೇಷನ್ ರೊಟೇಷನ್ ಸಟ್ ವೈಟ್ ರೊಟೇಷನ್ ಯಾ ನೌ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ರಿಲೀಸ್ ದ ಇಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ರಿಲೀಸ್ because i need <coughs> i need uh, to bring the fumet down pick with okay. good proper vest. open the cemented please sir we saying either we should have modular stems or it's easy to play with the cemented stem yeah cemented stem try lima try lima original chese ಉದಯ್ ಚಂದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಟ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಸಿ ನೌ ಯಾ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸಿ ಉದಯ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕೆ ಕೆ ವಾಸ್ ಸಜೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಯಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಡಿಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಟ್ರಯಲ್ but yeah. you know with cime- uh, uncemented it may be difficult to sink it in because there's a risk of hydrogenic fracture why don't we just yes. go ahead with uh, a real cemented stem and then do do a trialing you would know what length to uh, you know to achieve yeah. in terms of reduction yeah. we already we already open uncemented uh, cemented stem you've opened the st- cemented stem yes maybe you can yeah. you can see this that and then Uh, b- before yeah we are, yeah i am doing the same thing because i need to sunk the stem in a little bit more so that i can uh, toggle a little bit i can uh, reduce it yeah because uh, since it's uh, uncemented i'm not able to push in or not uh, c- coming out that's why i'll uh, cement it and uh, lightly reduce excellent excellent idea uday i think you should go ahead with that uh, yeah. we'll, we're just watching very nicely and uh, you know we can see everything clear yeah, so just for the audience sake the there are two two degrees of freedom for the stem one is versional freedom second is craniocaudal freedom so you you will have versional freedom and craniocaudal freedom both with a cemented stem so it's a most cost effective way of addressing these complex problems where we just want to sink it a few millimeters to uh, reduce it and you have an uncemented stem with a fixed neck length and offset and you cannot downsize that stem and sink it in because it will fail with the uh, aseptic loosening so uh, these are cases where we must look at a cemented stem as an option in our armamentarium two other options modular stem more expensive you have the co- more more expensive so these three options available this is the cheapest and best option so for all over uh, con- uh, for our country this is very relevant to you know be understanding how to do good cemented stem fixation mm. idea behind putting this case with hybrid fixation is that cement huh? still relevant ha huh, what is it receptor have you done a trial uh, uday are you going for cementing no no see the trial we don't have the sizes actually so they have only uh, only one size uh, uh three because uh, i'm uh, i'm trialing with the original stem i'll sunk the stem inside little bit more 
then I'll go, go with minus three offset or zero standard offset. Uh, why, why not doing a trial reduction with without cementing first and then knowing how far to sink it in? Because even after sinking, if you are unable to do a reduction, then you're stuck. Yeah, no, no. Here, what happened is the stem, whatever they provided, a stem, trial stem. The smallest stem they have, yeah, two. The size two. Can you see this? Yes. Yeah, there's only try. try uh, yeah. Now, can you see this? Yes. yes. This is a stem they pro provided, tri trial stem. But my original stem is this one, so wide. So, if I put a trial now, you have hand limb. Huh? Just hand limb. It's completely going in. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah. So, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that if I sunk in a little bit, go, go inside. Just I'll remove this and see. Oh, Kanisha, if I sunk here, I think I can reduce here. Can you see here now? Uh, Uday, what Chandra is suggesting is that you can use the real stem, put it inside without cement first, reduce it, mark the position where it is reducing, and then cement it till that level. That is what is suggesting. Handle. Yeah. Handle, handle. So they provided the stem, this one, the original one. Kiran, can you see this? They don't have a handle here. Yeah, you can put a head so they don't have... and reduce it. You can yeah, head. head and try and reduce head. it. It will yeah. where it will go, and then you can mark it out and then sink the stem till that level. Yeah, because I don't have handle, that's why. Ah, go. Go. Just wait, don't rotate. Mm. Right. Yeah. So now you can mark out where it has sunk to, and then that is the position till which you must sink the stem. Yeah, I'll check the CM also once, one shot of CM. You got a CM? Yeah, that's fantastic. You can check the CM. Yeah, so uh, just get the CM, please. We'll check the cup and this one. If I see the flexion is good, yeah, extension, I, I can do it nicely, and the rotation. Yeah, it looks very good. I think we'll here to complete the cementing. The message is very well conveyed. In a patient yeah. high riding hip, astablum is likely to be soft. So he has very gently reamed astablum, used the uncemented cup, put in a screw because he wanted additional stability. But he nicely demonstrated how to get an AP capture and superior inferior toggle. Patience is the key here. And then we cannot be sold or married to one philosophy. If you know pre-op that, okay, this is a not a great case for, uh, and you can see that excellent cup positioning and then the uh, stem is nicely filling the canal and this will do a very, very good job. And uh, the technical glitch is because of the lack of trial and that is not the surgeon's issue, but he has still nicely managed the situation. Thank you, Uday. I think we'll right. implement the stem and we'll go on to the next yeah. surgery. Thank you for an excellent demonstration. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran and Chandra. Thank you. Okay. That is why we have volunteered to do this meeting. So it's unlike any other meeting. So we want you to participate. So if you are very, you know, mute and, you know, just seeing, then we don't know whether you're understanding or, you know, uh, this thing. So please be 
open ask whatever you think is the stupidest question doesn't matter all of us go through that uh, phase where we don't understand and it is okay not to understand that is the whole idea of learning we also learn every single day and that is how we improve and all of us are responsible for our patients eventually you get the point so the idea is is not to show that okay this work is done this is it's all secondary these are to show you that these are the difficulties we can see each case has been thought out and selected with that mindset so that we give you some take home message no talks are included so that we don't waste time on that and we will not become lot of experience. completely uh, near the tear drop and it's, yeah, english and everything is good 46 year of female post op right knee antibiotic spacer primary t care was done in february 2020 we have done implant removal and antibiotic spacer in feb 2023 after two days okay. we have plan for right look patient is known case of hypertension diabetes migraine and rheumatoid arthritis konjam nikku kuda cut chesanu 0 to 60 degrees cut chesanu entadi anta release chesanu gaatledu so these are the extras of the case dr jv shino is operating surgeon and dr krishna kiran sir will be the moderator for the case hmm ee handle ochindu okay sorry dr deepak sir will be moderating it amma అదే పెడతా వేరే సిమెంట్ వేస్తాడు పెట్టు ఇది లేదా స్టాపర్ సరే హలో మేడం ఓకే స్కార్ or an infected case you want to remove the scar in a neat fashion i usually stack two dp handles like with a similar blade and when you give an incision you will get a parallel incision excising the scar great am i visible now when clear yes sir yes so tunique is we are doing surgery in the tunique and the scar i'm exercising here so when you suture it it will be much easier and it will look like a primary wound that's a skin the scar which i have removed and to identify a plate normally you should go 1 cm above the original scar that is what you will be to identify the fat and the muscle there because at this point you have a lot of scars right. see there you can see the muscle and then from there you make a nice flap this is a lateral flap i'm doing please feel free to ask any questions in between let it be more interactive what was the range of motion before you started okay a range of movement because she is on antibiotic spacer we hardly have 20 to 30 degrees that's the range of movement she is having okay so are you planning an extended exposure yes 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 we are ready for it either it's a quadriceps nip or a vy plasty based on the situation inside most of the time once we remove the antibiotic spacer it will just go for you will have good flexion 
in case if it is not happening pottery yeah my index finger is at the supramedial part of the patella and then i am doing a medial standard medial parapetellar approach I no, no, I don't think we have entered. Pottery pens, Tara, Kancho. Forces, forces, okay. You need to debug the scar to get a good exposure and aversion of patella. Are you planning to send any tissue for culture at this moment? Yes, 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 yes. We have already taken sample for culture and we are sending this tissue for culture. Both the tissue and the fluid I have taken. And that's the antibiotic spacer in place. The deep knife ema, deep knife petama. Yes. In the audience, how many have done a VY plastic? Let us know. It's a cement. question for the audience. How many of you have seen done VY plastic? Nibbler, ma, nibbler, ma. Almost nil, sir. So you want to do VY plastic? What? The audience. They want to see VY plastic. Am I right? Maybe he can come out. Dr. Deep, Deepak, Dr. Deepak, what is the consensus there? The consensus is they want to see VY plastic from your hands. Have they not? They have not seen. They have not seen any VY plastic. Neil, no, none of them. 
let us see if we can get away without that extended approach i think you can come out we'll do that if it Rainivas, they don't want to see any vy plastic Even they want to see see i don't want to see okay so you can show them a rectus snip or something maximum peda dima i'm just releasing the adhesions in the gutter so that for sima ఫుల్ సైమ్ ఇక్కడ ఓకే మై గటర్స్ హ్యావ్ ఫ్రీ ఓకే చిన్న ఫిమ single nice name single name hmm let's go come baby come ఓకే దట్స్ అబిల్ సిమెంట్ అవుట్ స్పేసర్ అవుట్ ఓకేమా అంతేనా <coughs> yeah we got approximately 90 degrees flexion you can see you just hold the flexion yeah okay so we'll try to extend here if possible Okay, so he. Yeah, one lateral spike. How much is there? How much? Yeah.
ఇంకోటి ఉందమ్మా నార్మల్ హోమన్స్ ఉందా స్టేట్ హోమన్స్ ఓకే ఐ హ్ డన్ వి ఆర్ సబ్లెక్సైటెడ్ పటేల్ ఆర్ లాటరలీ వే నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు ఎవర్ట్ ఇట్ యూ కెన్ సీ ఇట్ ఇస్ సో టైట్ హియర్ so as the as we proceed proceed i'm sure this fatal will be the extensor mechanism will become further loose i'm just debulking the scar here let us see pedda gaul ante esko adi ji sir adi yeah okay i'm a... no it's clear yes sir curate curate yeah curate yeah padadi so we we'll clean the joint from one end to the other end so whenever you're doing revision don't do episodically start from the anti superiorly then come down nibbler it need to keep here ma better make it up so that's an anterior cortex that is the chamfers of the primary surgery and that's a distal cut and the posterior part sir there is a question yes is the mcl is still intact yes i will show that so I, let me clean it up and i'll come back to that i'll show that all the structures కొంచెం పెద్ద నిబ్లర్ ఉందమ్మా ఉంటుందా ఓకే ఓకే మీడియల్ A retraction please yeah nibbler okay. i'm just going to the popliteal behind now you need to clean back of the knee remove all the scar be very very careful don't go to the depth we have vessels there okay <clears throat> i have two good three good assistants here who are young and energetic they will definitely help me to get the flexion definitely right <laughs> bigger one is there ma adi it wait ko okay slowly my tibia is subluxating that's a part of the posterior scar
पल्सटाइल आवाज इज रेडी Great, ma. So I started superiorly here, distal femur, posterior part. Now I am coming to tibia, and then या Okay, now I've taken the samples. I've cleaned the knee. We'll have a small wash and start preparing the bone. Any questions till this point? Ah, uh, sir. Don't don't don't. Let's. Ah. Huh. Audience. Ah. Uh, yeah. Lot of bleeding is being seen. Lot of bleeding. Yeah. So that, maybe because of that also uh, the visual. She's quite a obese lady. Okay. and probably the tourniquet may not be yeah. it's at the pressure of 350 mm in spite of that she is having little blood loss it's okay saline le what idi theema need le idu Pressure, my pressure. Not coming. Eh? In the range, low level, but how are they? Kind of easy. Okay, we'll start with tibia first. It's your choice. You want to do tibia, femur. whatever it is but in revision normally i start with the tibia just for the sake of audience uh, you carry on yeah. we will uh, we'll, uh, interrupt you when we want so the okay revision are three one is establish the tibial platform you have to set, set the tibial platform where is it once yes. you have the tibial platform now you create the flexion gap so you have to create a symmetric flexion gap so that's the second principle how do you create flexion gap you have to size the femur accurately and you have to rotate the femur accurately based on the tibial cut available soft tissue tension and the epicondylar axis once you have size established tibial platform set the flexion gap now you have to measure the extension gap and equalize the flexion gap to the extension gap so the three principles of yes. uh, revision so always start with tibia go with the femoral sizing rotation to set the flexion gap if extension is tight take additional distal femur if the extension is loose bring the femur down using augments so that is the basic principles of revision joint line determination so deepak will tell how to determine yeah so uh, approximate sizing of tibia what we removed is 2 okay 2 is good can we start with the intramedullary reaming please discuss later and this is critical your your intramedullary reaming will determine your slope yeah gunnel kodtinanda gunnel kodtinanda gunnel kodtinandela ana gunnel kodtinanda ha mate 
that was what size was that smallest 8 mm the stem starts from 9 10.5 12 13.5 13.5 Second master. Hmm. Ah, Dr. Krishna Kiran had uh, had explained regarding the three principles of revision TKR. Now, there yes. is from the audience. How do you determine the joint line in revision TKR? Yes, I will show that. Anyway, Krishna Kiran has told TBI is the first step. Once we establish the TBI here, we get your flexion space, rotation, and then you decide your femoral component up and down. And approximately, we have a scale there. I'll show you. We'll measure from the medial epicondyle and show where the joint line should be there. This is what size? Reamer. Ten. Next is. You want to use well, uh, epicondyle as end mark or the fibural head? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Ah, uh, do you? No. you I use epicondyles, medial epicondyle. Okay. Sir. So this is twelve. Since I am using a cemented stem, probably ten point five. I'll be choosing ten point five into hundred millimeter. Okay. Ten point five into ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಕೊಡು ಅಟ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಕಣ ಟಿ ಬಿ ಆ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ ಕೊಡ ಹ್ಞೂ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಮಿಡಲರಿ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಆರಾಮ್ಸಿ 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 ಡೋಂಟ್ ಡೂ ಒಂದು ಪಿನ್ ಕೊಡ ಸೊ ಇದು ಟೈಟ್ ನೀ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಟೆಂಡನ್ ಟ್ರೈಸ್ ಟು ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ ಎವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ Uh, sir yes aren't you using any intramedullary guide uh, for the tbl cut yeah i'm just making a flat surface later i'll see where we have to adjust the cut so you you are cutting by eyeballing but it don't it yeah. easier to do with the intramedullary jig yeah even if you use a intramedullary jig or extramedullary jig eventually you have to do fine tuning okay i'm just coming to that step now i got a flat surface you can use a intermediate jig there's no harm in that yeah show me two preparation illa three torso two is too small three idya three tp idya so there is some defect in the medial condyle yes 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 it is there medial side there is a defect if you see the pre operative x ray the bone loss is in the varus 
medial side bone loss is there i'll adjust that now hammer kada hammer india yeah, one more illi sir there is another question yeah what if the condyle are not intact for the joint line what are the landmarks if the condyles are are not intact yeah then you have to see your patella tracking where your patella is tracking and normally and you, you see your fibular head also no yeah you have to see the fibular head yeah. you have to be just above it approximately 0.5 to 1 cm above it that may be a natural joint line see how where your patella is tracking that may be a crude way of seeing kill punch kodu careful yeah ha huh? kotra better small sir So good, small corner. See, when you have a sclerotic bone, very high chance that you may fracture it. Good. You know, so the keel punch. Good. Yeah. Sclerotic bone. better side before you broach okay let us do a trial and do a fine tuning now tibial trial kodo 3 3 tibia we have prepared Three, three, three. Ill is the stem. Ill is the. Good. Punch. Good. Low again. See now your intermediary. Come on, boy. intramedial if you see that bone loss is on the medial side right can yeah. you give me a, a uh, sir uh, uh, i'll show i'll show there i mean to just adjust it yeah yeah now is you are able to appreciate your this is the line perpendicular to the mecha, me mechanical axis that is the intramedular axis this is the line perpendicular this one the bone loss is this one so the defect is here you can see here we ja ko 10 mm ak kodu so kodu agle big blade saw it saw him ha and ready na kodu matte well ready be so ready yak ishtato bid hogle so i am taking a medial side Uh, 10 millimeter wedge because it's a bone loss this side. 
ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊಡ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸರಿ ಕೂತಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ರಯಲ್ ನಾವು ಇವರೆಲ್ಲ ಓಕೆ ಹ್ಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕೊಡ ಹೋಗ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ತದೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಮಿಷ ತೆಗಿದನ ಇಲ್ಲ ಪಂಚ್ ಕೊಡು ತೆಗೆದ್ಬಿಡು ಜಸ್ ಗೇವ್ ಅಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ದ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ದ ಟ್ರಯಲ್ ಬೇಡ ತೆಗೆದುಬಿಡು ಹಾ ರಿಮೂವ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ರಿಮೂವ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೊಡು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಎತ್ಕೋಬಾ ಗೀತ ರಿಮೂವ್ ಇಟ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಯಟ್ಕೊಂಡದಿ ಪಂಚ್ ಕೊಡು Okay, so, okay, this is the defect we have now. Then I'll go to the astrotum. I'm going to take it off. Take it off. Give me a saw and a little bit of free hand. i need to shave on the lateral side just give me this yeah aage bacha ke ga Yeah, one minute. Uh, intermittent. Uh, reaming, intermittent. Proximal interface is reaming. Gun low. Gun low. Metaphyse is reaming. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Just. Just. Give me the trial now. Oh. As usual, there's a small technical issue. We don't have a screwdriver to put the screw there. Oh, yeah. ಓಕೆ ಅಂತ ಲೋಪಲ ಮೆಟ್ಲರಿಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ರೀಮ್ ಚೇಸ್ತಾ 
sir yes ha uh, in the give two minutes let us have some questions <laughs> yes yes please uh, so what was the esr crp value of this patient yeah esr is i think 40 plus huh esr is 54 crp is on point point 1 Seven. Yeah, now it's sitting. No, 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 it's not sitting. No. Can we reduce? No. Can you reduce to five? It's not. It's not sitting yet. Stop, Guru. Stop. No, it's okay. It's okay. Huh? Hmm. ಒಂದು ಸಾವ್ ಕೂಡ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷ ಯಾ ನಾವು ಪಂಚ್ ಕೂಡ ಐವ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಮಿಲಿಮೀಟರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸಿ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ yeah cotri that's a h osteotom so good i'll just make some space for that wedge to sit here posteriorly give the trial now first term yeah so mm. yeah Okay. Huh? Uh, yes. There is another question from the audience. Since there is a lot of medial bone remaining still up. Yeah. So any plan of using the offset stem? Offset stem. Yes. But we don't have it here. It's an ideal situation. But we don't have it here. Right now. ಯಾ ಅಖಿಲ್ ಪಂಚ್ ಕೊಡೀಗ ಓಕೆ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಪೋಸ್ಟರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಟ್ರಲಿ ದಟ್ ಬೋನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ನೋ ನೋ ಈ ಸ್ಟೆಮ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ವಾ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಹಾಕೋಡು ಔಷಧ ಸ್ಟೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಭಿ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಹೇ ಎಸ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಕೊಡ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ತಗೊಂಡು ಪೋನಿ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಬ್ಲೇಡ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕೋಡ ಅಂತೆ ಕದ 
Sorry, this is not sitting. No, where it is, you know, it's going inside, right? Correct, no? Medial wedge on the phi occur. So we got it now. Okay, yeah. Okay, this is looks good. Sir. Yeah. Okay, immediately I've taken 5 mm wedge and uh, it's a size 3 tibia here. Can you go a bit big blade saw, please? So once the tibia is done, we'll go for femur. Yeah, that's done. Okay, tibial side we have done. We'll go to femur. Can you give me intramedular reaming start, please? Medular reamer, please. It's a eight millimeter reamer. First one drill bit is record. Yeah, drill bit is record. It is sharp. The good. Yeah. Mm. It's in dreaming mode. Next, uh, drill mode. The is actually dreaming about the slow dreaming. What size is this? This is eight. Next. Nine. Mm. This is ten point five. You made twelve. That should be the last one. Mm. This is twelve. We'll use a ten point five stem. Okay, now we'll do a distal cut based on your intramedullary jig. Ah. Mm -hmm. Flex it. Can okay, pins, please. Okay. There, zero. Yeah. Uh, this will this jig will determine whether we have to use five millimeter or ten millimeter distal augment if required. Wait, wait, wait. It's not correct. Can somebody hold this, please? Not correct. One minute. Can you give these pins in the gun? Possible. Do we really require here? Hmm? Distal. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think any way. 
wedges is required is still I'm I'm just pressing here. I'm not taking any bone. Yeah. Next. I tell you. Next. Uh, we need to have a box cutting, chamfer cuts, in Gurtia. Okay. Sir, there is a question. Yes. How much was the inbuilt valgus cut? How much degree? Which one? Uh, the jig, in the jig. Femur in the jig? Yeah. Six degrees. It's a five degree fixed fixed alva. Six degrees. The company instrumentation is six degree valgus. Okay, sir. Yeah, this is a C femur I'm taking. Yeah. To check in case if I require any posterior. Uh, sir, can you use that comma guide uh, to show to the audience? Which one? The comma guide. The jig. Sizing. Femoral guide, sizing. guide, jig. Yeah, no, that's a sizer. Yeah. Okay, that's a sizer what we use. Yeah. What size is this? This is C. The posterior diameter. C looks okay. See, looks okay. So, yeah, most of them are copied from. <laughs> so, either Tumba offset go to the Noda. Eddie? Take size feet, three uh, C femur and uh, 10 stem marker. Ready? Which one? The yellow. Okay. To see whether your femoral component where it's going to sit. Okay, that's that's where naturally the anterior cortex was there and it's sitting in the right place. This is all a destroyed bone. Right? I'm just checking if required posterior. <clears throat> yes. Angel wing kuda. My God. Yeah. What the Second is being parallel to the tibia. Yeah, hold it. That is, sir, explain. No? Okay. I don't think you require anything. <clears throat> This is the place where we determine our external rotation based on your epicondyles. Rotate it. Yeah. Flex. No, no. Yeah. Pin is the Pin kuda. Gunnel kuda. Malatel revision. Sclerotic bone. Put. Pin drive in the other one. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. One more. You don't have K wire jig, huh? Coupler. Either ma. Better ma. Yeah. Or else give me a drill bit at least, yeah. Don't get anti No. Uh. Okay, ideally you need to have a K-wire drive so that you can hold the pin and drill it inside. In the revision, when it is little sclerotic, you try to hit, chances of having a fracture is there, small blade. Huh? 
small blade small blade so amale box cutter next step oh yeah ಹೊಡಿ ಸೊ ಪೋಸ್ಟೀರಿಯರ್ಲಿ ನಾಟ್ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೋನ್ ಲಾಸ್ ಆರಾಮ್ಸೆ ಆರಾಮ್ಸೆ ಓಕೆ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಯಾ ಅಷ್ಟೋಟಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಹ್ಮ್ ಕಾಕರ್ a small bone here hmm. can i pull that bone off yeah that no. one yeah got it chal leave it so box cut as uh, intermediate uh, illa kada intermediate that just cut medial cut che illa kada let us see gunnel kottira Yeah. Yeah, enough. Ma. One more. Yeah. Enough, enough, enough. Oh. This is removing the metaphysis. to be very careful here you know taka okay okay astrotom just give me astrotom one minute one minute give me broad astrotom please yeah hold here give me a blade be there only be there only <laughs> cocker cocker yeah let Yeah. Give me the trial femur please. Once kodi. Karpa thanda. Saw kodu nimsha. Big blade huh? big blade saw. Are is keep the saw here yaar why you are taking that side always you are taking that side entire surgery is over saw 
you are taking there a broad ashtam please we almost done dr deepak give me 2 minutes then your femoral trial will go in place hmm nibler give me the femoral trial now yeah yeah punch please yeah it's going hmm what size was stem was no some more it has to go some more it has to go on the medial side yeah no no we cannot be hitting so hard laterally it is sitting already so probably on the medial side you may require a 5 mm wedge distal wedge okay give me a scale okay that's a medial epicondyle where i'm touching and that is measuring okay if you can see here somebody can focus it is 2.5 cm from the medial epicondyle the distal edge of the femoral component so that's a joint line i have determined from the medial epicondyle trial insert please and somebody wanted to know about the mcl mcl is here right here and it's intact 11 mm insert no no one minute one minute take the instruments off from down rotate inter rotation yeah smallest idana smallest sir this is for that hey size nodu idu cam do this is ha huh? three no this is it is bigger one where we used to see what is uh, you must have put d or e yes check here check is at the side according to femoral huh huh this is c i know e must have gone even from e c 11 yeah yeah take it off one minute yeah so we are going to hyper no flexion is loose one minute one minute don't be in a hurry give me a bigger one please yen size korte what size you are giving ma this is 14 Mm. Yeah. So we are doing CD. Green L A. Yeah. Just leave it at that point. One minute. One minute. Can you give... no it is not sitting ma please that is not matching with the tibia so see that is not matching huh so what size is this one three tibia three tibia hai and c is a femur we need to have an insert a original one you have okay this is so we can we have a cm shot yeah cm cm dr deepak yes sir am i audible there yes sir see we have put a femoral trial here 
there's a stem in place okay 10 into 100 mm stem is there there is probably you may require a medial side distal wedge 5 mm there's a defect here tibia more or less we have addressed it and the insert is not correct here because we don't have a trial matching uh, trial insert but they they do have original one okay. eh? so this is original is there yeah yes tell me and that's the patella tracking what we'll do is we remove it we wash it and implant with the original one okay 5 mm distal medial okay another five minutes will implant see this good medial lateral stability is there but this is 14 millimeter brother is it 14 14 we may have to go with a bigger one Sir, you are happy 17, with probably space? yeah you are happy with the extension space right yes yeah. No, uh, now it is looks good, but the actual trial is not sitting inside the tray tri here. So you are happy with so the probably you are happy with the 14 millimeter poly, right? Yes, yes, yes. No, this is 14, but this is not seated inside. No. Okay. So uh, that's why reason probably I'll take 17. Okay. If you can see here, it's not sitting inside. It's a trial of I'm um, put a femur of three, but probably this trial is a bigger one. I have to go to they don't have the trial okay there are multiple methods to address this so you can put a thicker yes. generally revision we don't want 17 or more because then we are now worried about the integrity of the collateral ligament and there is a higher chances of failure up to 17 is okay so what you can do is yeah. you can take the platform up more the tbl tray above either using two wedges or a full wedge yeah Right, that's, that's an option. He's saying he, he can use a full wedge along with a half wedge to take it 5 yes. 15 millimeters up. So if you had a 25 yes. is coming in, then you proximal yeah. the tibia. That's the way to handle it. Or you can use a sleeve if it is available and upsize the sleeve till the sleeve is sitting about a centimeter above the tibial tubercle. This is you can palpate the fibular head or the tibial tubercle. A centimeter above mm. is what? the reasonable joint line is so he has nicely demonstrated in a defect situation so he's done a little bit of playing around because he's experienced is uh, determined the med medullary canal size freshen the tibia without removing too much bone address the medial tibial defect set the tibial platform set the femoral component sizing rotation to establish flexion gap and then equalize the flexion to extension gap through distal cementer mixed models I think that's a fantastic demonstration. Uh, we will go for the next. You can go ahead and cement your uh, implant. Thank you very much. Very complex case. There's a, there's a vacuum mixing here. If somebody wants to see another five minutes, I can show that. What is that? Vacuum mix, vacuum mixing of cement with a cement gun. Another five minutes if you want. So we will try. I can demonstrate. That. If they can show P and P, uh, they will show. Yes. Your, we'll be going on picture in picture. And we will move on. Yes. Running about half an hour late. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, yes, yes. Demonstration. Yeah, put it picture and picture better. Thank you. The next case. The next case. Hey, yellow implant take a curl, Lero. But they're ready, but they're torso. Cement, though. Media lady. It is in concha veggie system. It's precious. Time, eh? 34 year, year male with bilateral petrusha stabili. Uh, more uh, symptoms. Time, right? So, your place for right. Time to... the patient, patient had a fall 10 years back. Patient was ambulatory. Careful, careful. Fall, pain in the right hip radiating to the knee from past one year, affecting day to day activities. Uh, so, uh, attitude patient in supine position, the head and center, spine, in, spine neutral, both hips. A knee joint in the knee joint in the neutral position, foot in the gravity assisted plantar flexion. Examination flexion was 40 degrees, abduction 10 degrees, external rotation 15 degrees, internal rotation restricted. There's a shortening of two centimeters. 
and you can see the x-rays here there's a bilateral petroblast stabilized planned for the right side now spino pelvic parameters are normal these are the spine x-rays both We are taking a few minutes uh, for the uh, hip to go on. Okay. In the meantime, we have Professor Rajesh Malhotra sir here. He is the uh, head of the department of. Uh, he was the head of the department of orthopedics at AIMS New Delhi. Vast experience with bilateral proteges, bilateral bony ankylosis. So there will be some question answer round. You have lot of questions to ask with him. You can ask. Sir will be in the call. It's our privilege that sir has come here. I think to Tirupati. He was. Uh, our teacher my teacher actually so we all whatever we have learned is from him so it's a very good opportunity for you to ask interact questions to him so we have a tv we can't see and uh, you must understand that uh, once oh, you oh. Another, you have seen every complication right? we are talking about this <laughs> when you make don't uh, so we can't see what what is there live it is going we can't see Hi, Dr. Rajkumar. Ah, hello. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice anymore. <laughs> no, that's what I was asking for a uh, uh, TV here. They said that there is no TV in this. I couldn't. You should be able. The to voice is not clear. You huh? should be able to recognize a surgeon from New Delhi by his voice. Ah, huh? who is? I'm. Uh, I'm not able to hear. So I said you should know the voice. Of a surgeon from oh, you, sir, sir, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, <laughs> and now, now I got it. So sorry, are, sir. Sorry, I am extreme. I was, no, just, no. I was just telling the audience that you are the right person to do this surgery. And I, was, I uh, so no, 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 not at all. Actually, you should be here. I know you are going to do a I'm here few more challenging. I'm here you, I'm here with you. Don't worry. I'm here only. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming, and uh, uh, I'm really so honored that you are here. Sorry, I I couldn't recognize your voice initially. Right. Just, I'm just kidding. It's not possible. I mean, can we go ahead? Please don't do it to me next time, right? <laughs> Are we audible? Isn't heard it. So, okay. Uh, who is moderating? Who well, is I moderating? think uh, Rajkumar just take us through the experience. Okay. Kiran, are we going live? Yes, we are live. I think we are not able to hear. he is not hearing it so he is saying we are not yes sir we are live Asimar, we are live we are yes, live yes. the entire conversation is live here yes and audience is uh, very excited to see you operate this case he can't no he can't hear us see this is what is happening he just now said they can't hear me because he can't hear us he thinks we are not hearing this is very true about you know things we don't know <laughs> It's something similar, you know. So if we don't know the answer, we think audio is not coming. The other person is wrong. Raj Kumar. No, I don't. Ah, uh, I'm not. Can you hear us? Can you, uh, Kiran? Can you hear me? We can hear you, Raj Raj Kumar, but I don't think you can hear us. No, he can't hear us. I think we should fix this. so there are lot of issues here so anybody uh, would like to ask a question otherwise i ask the question yes what do you mean by rotation of pelvis ah uh, but i am not able to i can't hear we can't so what do you mean rotation of pelvis so first thing no, is no. You know, am i audible to the audience because i am not getting any response from there udhar kuch phone karke batao okay it's not coming here okay okay sorry uh, there is some uh, other speak i am not able to hear the audience uh, inside the ot anyhow this is a 34 year old uh, male bilateral protrusio one side if you look it is uh, divergent type the right side which we are going to do and the left side left side uh, look, looks like a uh, convergent so it's very unusual for unusual for a 34 year old male uh, without much of an any inflammatory pathology 
uh, having a bilateral protrusion that was severe protrusion like that and also this patient uh, metabolic workup is done and i saw that all normal so exact cause we are not able to uh, pinpoint this is the reason for a protrusion but anyhow uh, uh, biomechanically we have to address this issue because he cannot walk painful so the now the plan is on the right side so if you look at the right side it is divergent the couple of key points here is no way you should think about a dislocation i will not do that straight away your plan should be first is any approach do an in situ osteotomy first second thing is the, the divergent ones is like quite a big hollow space a lot of cortico cancellous bone grafts is needed the bone will be soft osteoblem uh, even though the cortex of the femur is looks good dor type b but the osteoblem will be soft so your reaming should be very careful uh, based on your uh, need you have to adjust the reaming and the uh, principle here is to lateralize the cup but the key point here again you should not lateralize so much so in protrusion everybody we all know that we have to lateralize it but we should not lateralize too much because the center of rotation gets altered so much so we have to be very careful you should not hesitate to use a cm whenever we are doubt whether we are able to place the cup in the right position so the as you can see here the medial wall sleeve is very much intact so use that as a uh, spacer for the packing the graft the right side will take more graft but the left side the convergent ones will not take that much of graft so you don't need a graft on the left side so much but here we will need if you look at the lateral view very good lateral view they have taken you can see that there are a lot of cystic uh, lesions in the osteoblem the wall is thin so that means it is very osteoporotic the columns are intact majority of the times in these kind of cases the columns are intact you have to make sure but you have to open the mouth so the reaming has to be so i am going i am going to do this by an anterolateral approach i know the audience is fully packed with the posterior approach malgotra sir is here the pioneer the master of posterior approach but uh, here i am going to do an anterolateral so i don't know how many of you do here anterolateral in the audience so dr. shall we proceed dr rajkumar can you hear me ah yes sir so uh, uh, anyway uh, thanks for your comments i knew that you were not able to hear us i want you do posterior approach also isn't it or you ever always do the anterior lateral approach hmm ante dr rajkumar tibi akado yes sir change ade eppudu ante final step lo unnapudu ni se idi ga pani cheyadu hmm pedukodi yes, so he has outlined all the difficulties there are just a few things i would like the to the cement texture where untundi the sciatic nerve is very close remember that because the hip has gone inside the nerve will be very close that's one thing you have to keep in mind mm. and then to just keep the hip extended and the knee flex to keep the nerve relaxed that's the other important thing the second important thing is that the uh, the in situ cup uh, cut is fine because you should not struggle hard this has got very good bone quality so i might even be tempted to dislocate it but it is fine if you just cut it uh, and no, no, I, if i'm trying to dislocate i'll just give it one or two attempt to see if i uh, can do it the advantage when you can dislocate a hip is that you can measure the vertical and the horizontal the tendon carefully under a maybe post up long knee brace will then knee bending avoid this and doctor three weeks measure this and that's answer mm. to your question also that how do you decide yeah, that yeah. you don't yeah, have to yeah. worry about in a bilateral hip disease do the first hip note down the vertical offset horizontal offset have a stable mm. hip with the uh, well balanced soft tissue and recreate it on the other side whether it's limb length or the or the abductor tension or the shock test everything so don't have to worry too much about it the last thing is this is a femoral side is good bone quality adle undi 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 we will be increasing the horizontal offset so first thing is you should always try to get a rim fit the tendon structure itself is different in this inside it so if your cup goes inside the rim it will fail even if you put the screws so uh, i don't think you can excessively lateralize it if you are in the confines of the bone but try to have a peripheral fit and if you look at the x ray again when it comes there is a constriction mm. at the opening so there it's like a hemi replacement which goes inside 
and then you find that gradually bone has formed so the orifice is narrower than the cavity so that is why again you have a reason to it will set in very fast but not compromise the subchondral bone at the open then last thing is that like i said that when you are ball like bandid illi the osteoporotic greater trochanter which sometimes says in a rheumatoid patient the trochanter can fracture hmm. excessively lateralizing so all those things you have to be very very careful when you operate on these patients if you the the hip always tends to go medially and superiorly so that is the tendency which has to be counteracted so you know you have to counteract that tendency of the hip if your cup is deep and it will get pushed medially and superiorly anti original insert to anti yeah mixing the uh, injectable bone graft, uh, bone substitute along with the allograft uh, or the graft bone graft and what does does is it actually immediately solidifies and forms a very uh, uh, hard composite so it can support the cup and you can start the weight bearing a little earlier otherwise all these patients will not huh. bear weight immediately so one of the reasons why we operate on them simultaneously on both sides is to normal insert ledu and we operate this revision insert than matching ledu will degra and in the same sitting if you are doing opposite side because yeah left side will need chal odle mate idu dare the right side will need more graft so you will may have insufficient graft for the right side many times the head is destroyed so if i am doing a bilateral simultaneous this is the only condition where i'll do the less affected side i have more graft with me so that if the right side the head is destroyed better cavity is large better ha huh? bone graft there and then do that that's yeah. one thing the second thing is that when you operate on them for 6 weeks you are not going to make them bear weight so you have to discuss with patient if you do simultaneously at the end of 6 weeks start walking but if they can if the other hip is not very painful then it's better to do one by one because then they can walk full weight bearing on the unoperated side keep toe touch on this side and then after 6 weeks you do the same thing for the opposite side lateral rendi chela choose kolama dr rajkumar hmm you can you hear me ha ah. sir can you i was asking you when we want went off here i wanted to ask you you do posterior approach as well isn't it yes i do when there is a need like a posterior plating or some ostabular implant insert in, inside and then i need to remove and do otherwise all my primary and revisions are all anterolateral so your reason for using anterolateral in this case is that uh, there is a protrusion no in, uh, no all cases i do only anterolateral Okay. okay all my hips all my hips whether primary or revision is anterolateral posterior is only if there is any posterior plating needed for like a posterior column plating like so, that otherwise yeah so i know the advantages of having the patient your patient is supine or lateral lateral patient is lateral fine okay then i'll not ask you the next question because anterior lateral can be done in supine position also and i thought that if you can do and that is yeah if you can that is very you can do direct anterior as well yes sir but uh, you need lot of assistance then flexing the knee so much of difficulty i and this i understand the doing the femur in anterior lateral is very good particularly when the patient is in lateral position okay we got your point so now um so what i do is i don't go and uh, uh, cut the uh, abductors or split the abductors in direct lateral i go very little anterior so 3/4 of the abductors is intact little bit or uh, homans the only thing is bipolar is not working small small one it's working ha uh, hold it here pedal ha ah. langenbergs so the 3/4 of the abductors is intact langenbergs so that is the advantage so we all uh, worry about the post operative abductor lurch in these kind of patients but uh, when you are careful and in this approach you are not cutting any muscle it's only the splitting so what i do is one more lang and back like that ah okay 
ಡೈತರ್ಮ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪ್ಲಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ so this is you can see the whole abductors is here laterally so my approach is even though it is lateral approach my most majority of the work is anterior ah careful don't uh... okay now already you can see that you are in the joint ah homans so you can see here ah gently rotate oh gently ah sir careful careful okay ah give us okay so now so the entire abductors is on the behind this homan so i always use only this now i am so it's a sort of a watson jones approach raj or you are taking little bit of abductor out no 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 abductors little little yes it will get split i am not removing it it will get split little bit but 3/4 of the abductors is intact on the lateral side rotate so incision is lateral incision they split the fascia lata and then anterior fourth and posterior 3/4th of abductor is making a plane yes so the when i when i am incising the incising the fascia lata the, sorry vastus lateralis i curve it like a over the uh, trochanter yeah. so that you leave some tuft of uh, abductor is here and the uh, gluteus medius so that you can suture it back so once you're done you should orient the audience towards the head and foot ends and then the anterior posterior sometimes oh yeah yeah definitely once i this one leave this sorry to ah okay sir so, ah so you are right now on the capsule where are you yeah already already opened sir Open. one second working on the femoral yeah. anterior uh, yeah you can see the i i hope you i okay once again i am just okay sak so wash okay so i so just uh, this is the uh see i'll rotate and show little bit uh you can see that head so you can see here the rim and the nibbler one more homans one second it's the joint fluid ah okay full okay now it won't it will not okay rotate it so even though uh, even though it, some amount of the head is outside and uh, as uh, mayotra sir said that he might uh, try once or twice but i i think here sak sak 
and i also said because the femoral bone quality is very good but i think ah, yes, sir. it is best yes. not to try uh, the the uh, for us you know giving one or two attempt is for two three reason if you are sure you are not going to break it one if you take it out you can measure the offsets like i told you and second is that you know if you are able to dislocate then the surgery becomes easy because otherwise once you cut it in c2 then even removing the rest of the head sometimes you have to struggle and then again if 100% I too much i'll just take a small remal and ream out most of the head rather than starting anything acetabulum so yeah so now if you, now if you see one more one more hormones for a beginner if you are not used to dealing yes, with deformities just yeah, not small one yeah okay now i i will show you as kiran was asking about the uh, head and so this is the head and can you see yes this is the head and this is the foot and and then this is the anterior and this is the posterior marker marker so yeah this is posterior this is head and and this is foot end and this is anterior that is high riding okay so again head end here opposite foot end then the anterior and then the posterior i am standing from the posterior end so there was so a patient is dr rajkumar and if you ah yes yes sir there is a question from the audience that if the trochanter is high riding and then uh -huh. the protrusio so do you think it will be easier to do it by posterior lateral approach or you will still do it by the anterior lateral approach i will do by anterior lateral so that's what Here, this is the that you should use the approach which you are doing most frequently and you yes. are certain with so it it is still easier for you to do it by your regular approach than to try an approach which you don't do it normally and then you try to do it for a difficult case that's really not a very smart thing to do that makes it still more difficult exactly ah so here if you see sir even though you can see some amount of head here the it is so much gone inside and you can see posteriorly even in the x ray you can appreciate that there is a overgrowth osteophytes like a stop mechanical block so if you need to dislocate you have to chip off that osteophyte make sure you are not Uh, uh, cutting the astablum, you are not chipping the astablum. It look, it adds the difficulty, but uh, still you can try once or twice. But in this case, even while rotating, if you see, it is not coming. But uh, pull, pull. So there, there is not much of movement from superior to inferior. Rotation is happening. So in this case, I will not. try too much what i am going to do is externally rotate ah so uh, so so you can see this is the neck ha huh? no need so here i have one the abductor is protected with this homan anteriorly here one more homans tak light can you appreciate the neck yes we can see the neck there are also oh, okay thank the you neck and uh, we can see it from here see in the direct anterior approach also we don't dislocate the hip so one of the challenges Pull. is to restore the vertical ah, the gently lower, rotate particularly in a unilateral ah. disease put it down you have to hold it doesn't matter so you should do a very ah. careful thing and you should know your you know offsets from the pre operative templating and of course the advantage is that you can do the fluoroscopy intraoperatively and you can check there but the if you do by the usual approach langenbach you dislocate it's easier for you no romans offset and reproduce them or uh comments hello ah okay now nibbler 
not my nibbler the bigger one okay so this is the inferior and uh, uh, remaining neck here okay now even though uh, in a in a uh, fused hip you have to take a wedge of bone like a like a napkin they say napkin bone you have to remove in this also you should not try to rotate too much but here in this case the moment i did the osteotomy uh, dithermy osteotomy the neck uh, was so much mobile the joint uh, the space was so much that i was able to uh, uh, rotate so now in this approach if you see the femur can you show this femur so i have to i am hanging the leg in this shape and the sir opposite my first assistant controls the whole leg in this shape so it is already it is on the floor so the orientation is so much that i know this is the medial side this is the lateral side the petala is my guidance for my femur entry and i don't need to worry too much about the uh, version because i know the lesser trochanter is here and everything is in in front of me so now sir so now i'm what i'm going to do is after doing that osteotomy i am going to clear off the space in the trochanter's basic cervical region so that i know where exactly i am going to take the cut so here i accept dr malhotra sir's point that the templating part will not be of much help if you are going to do a in situ osteotomy so still what i will do is i now know the trochanter is here the the trochanter is here the lesser trochanter is here and is there a template for the system yeah so what is this lebetas okay so this is the template they have given me so what is this that is the great trochanter okay so this gives you a rough idea i ah okay dithermy nibbler so you should make sure you are before cutting uh, doing uh, the osteotomy again make sure there are no osteophytes so that it will not uh, misguide you on rotate rotate this nebular okay now we are done now we have to remove the head now again straight uh, bring it back okay okay now remove this so i am going to put this homans uh, small one anteriorly so this homans which is going goes anteriorly but and then this homans i have to reposition it goes posteriorly okay and then the self retainer ah okay can i have a cock screw drill first a drill bit okay give me this so in protrusio you have to be little careful you cannot bang too much oh. not working such so now you are trying to remove the femoral head with the cock screw yes sir the only thing is you don't have a resistance medially so to hit it ah uh, impact so you have to adjust little and you can't even have like, it and let into the yes, head because then it might go inside okay. yes sir that's what uh, it is happening it is little loose so i'm 
suction block. So your point of trying to dislocate is a valid one in this regard. Sometimes when the head is so small, deformed or sclerotic, it is difficult to remove it. But uh, so unless it is very osteoporotic and the orifice or the opening is very narrow, uh, we'll uh, drill, drill. then we know that we are not going to try dislocating at all. Other cases, we just see if something is happening, it's showing any promise or anything. But by and large, okay. what you did is exactly we'll end up doing just cut the neck and then try to remove the head. So that is the most yeah. challenging part of this surgery. Yes, sir. Uh, better to be on this because the side, the side, the. Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. So because it is not. Uh... And there's corkscrew. It's a thicker drill bit. I need a thicker drill bit. Okay. So when you are not able to bang, better to drill, make some entry because the bone is clearest. And then do the corkscrew. I think it's almost done now. Done a good job. So other thing sometimes which helps is just to push the head with a bone lever or something and try to enter from the articular side because many times so, uh, that's, that's so you can see sir the, uh, so this part was outside but this part was going inside and it got locked even with trying to pull with the cock screw it was not coming that easily so in this case definitely trying to dislocate will would have been a challenge but anyhow. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, like I said, it's just like, just trying uh, sort of. Full. Okay. Now, now comes the challenge of the, all the fibrous tissue, everything we have to make sure, spend some time and clear it off so that your uh, knife, deep knife. So, Dr. Rajkumar? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Do you always do the acetabulum first or do the femur first or you keep it flexible? Always, always acetabulum first. Always acetabulum first. Okay. So any particular reason for that? Uh, first is your acetabulum is here already. Prepare the acetabulum. Do the cup. So you will have a... Uh, you will know where exactly you are dealing with the rotation and all because... You are getting your cup correct. Then the moment you do the hip, then you are going to reduce it and then uh, check the trial. But having said that, there is no specific too much of reason that you should do this first in this approach or the uh, femur first. Right? Okay. Any advantage you will say that femur should be done, sir? So I always do femur first for several reasons. One is the workflow. So everybody cuts the femoral head, uh, femoral neck first and removes the head, even if you are able to dislocate. So when the when I've dislocated the hip, light, light. I measured the offsets, I cut the head, I prepare the femur, make sure I've restored the offset so that when I put the Gosh, cup, please. I'm immediately ready for trial, number one. Number two is I can leave the rasp inside lift that up, uh, femur up with the bone hook and I can uh, release this. So in this case, it is difficult to push the femur away from for exposure. So I right. the rasp inside, do releases and push the femur out of the way nicely to expose my acetabulum. And third thing is that uh, if your femur is showing uh, a, a yeah, femur okay, good. version, you can actually adjust Malik. that on the acetabular side to have a good combined antiversion. So a lot of people who think okay. about version yes. you cannot change the version in the stem at all you can only play around with it in the acetabulum so if you know from ah, your you uh, it, side that what the version ah, don't is, pull it towards you, you. Ah. Able to make some changes in the acetabulum ah, those are my reasons for uh, doing this last reason is that many often the femoral bone is osteoporotic so if you try to push it against a retractor it may get crushed so we always leave a rest knife right against that trunk long tip so that we don't damage the trochanteric bone so those are my reasons for doing femur first 
long term. It also makes it more efficient because you got you got cut the head. You just quickly prepare. Okay. Do everything. Uh -huh. You just ready. The moment a cup is, up, you reduce. Check everything. Up, long time and you are out. Anterior capsule has to be released. The inferior capsule between the aliosoas and okay, uh, valid valid point, sir. Like uh, so, and release the uh, rectus femoris and release the gluteus minimus. So you can have femur far away, so they can have a three sixty degree view of the acetabulum to prepare it. Yes, sir, Doctor Rajkumar. Quite nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Almost. See, uh, my one homan. This is what I use always. One homan here posteriorly, one anteriorly, and then a self retainer. So I don't use any Chanley's retractor. So okay, I can see the other self retaining retractor. So no. that's a okay. nice thing. Lot of people wash for Chanley's at all. For subs. So we don't have much okay. of uh, right, Dr. Last piece. Dr. Rajkumar. So we are uh, we, we can't see sir? much. Yeah. Huh? Better. Thank you. This yes, sir. So you have removed the fibrous tissue from the acetabulum? Can you? For me? Almost, almost, yes, sir. Almost, yes. No, not, not from the acetabulum inside. I'm going to do that on curate. So, light. I know if I'm trying to bend, uh, it is hiding the... So, this curate, in, in all these protrusions, before we start, it is better to cure it like that and so that you, that's a uh, little bit slimy, fibrous, soft tissues, which was lying there, can be uh, removed so that it will not uh, hinder your reaming and it, the reamer will not slip here or there. Then you will expose the bone properly. Nibbler, that very big nibbler. And that, that by curating this, you will know exactly, particularly in this kind of divergent uh, protrusions, you will know how much of uh, uh, empty space you are going to deal with. Where you need a knife. So this part is the what I'm doing is the postro superior labrum. I'm removing it. And here is the rim with some amount of osteophytes. Suck inside. I don't know whether you are able to see the acetabulum. We can see the acetabulum, except that uh, it's a little Correct. dark there, but we can see where you are working and we can see the acetabulum. Uh, because I'm curating, there is some oozing everywhere. So this is definitely some kind of uh, inflammatory arthritis. And I think it may be a good idea to send some biopsy from there because we don't really know what it is. The patient uh, has bilateral protrusio with, uh, which does look like some kind of inflammatory pathology. Although I like you BP said, is very high. no other stigmata. BP, can you reduce it? How much? Huh? Okay, okay. Not necessary. Oh. It doesn't matter because in order to do that, no. Suddenly the BP is raised, so that's why. Purchase. So your entire this bone is very poor quality bone. The only fit it will give you is at the aperture. So if you peripheral rim, if you compromise by reaming too much, in order to convert it into a conical thing. That okay, now almost ready. Uh, nibbler, very nibbler. Absolutely not. Okay. Can you appreciate the acetabulum? Yeah, we can see acetabulum, Dr. Achma. Diatherm. Okay, sir. So we can see this, the, the tall is here. Can you appreciate? Yeah, we can. It's not. I don't know whether you can see I here. Can, ah, okay. Can imagine. The, uh, the diatherm. The dithermy part, which I'm right. 
Okay, this is the tall here. Okay. Now I am ready for reaming. So the 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 big part, uh, anterior posterior. But if you can feel it, always better to feel the anterior and posterior wall. Anterior wall is very very thin. There is a lot of cystic lesions, and it is very uneven. It is not even. It is very uneven, up and down. Anterior, posterior is also, but anterior is in fact, you can see there is very thin, and the medial, completely medial wall also is very thin. But there is some wall there. So we are not going to ream too much there, but still we have to clear the soft tissues. So I am taking a smaller ream. I'm not going to give any pressure, but I'm just clearing the soft tissues there. The small reamer I'm taking, clearing the soft tissue. See that? Because once you start reaming with the bigger reamer, you will not go too much medial. That's right. So it's so much of soft tissues and yeah. the fibrous tissue there. So it's a good idea to start with a very small reamer. Ah, Just clear out the tissue from the depth because you don't want to ream there. And if you use a very big reamer, almost I'm making will not be able to clear that soft tissue. So now you can see touch and feel that the soft tissue is going off, and then slowly you are able to uh, see the bone. And then I what I do is that big cystic lesion cure it. I try to uh, Cure it that cystic lesions because the soft tissue layer of that the cystic lesion. If you clear it, and then you pat with bone graft, then the bone integration happens. Otherwise, if you just don't cure it, the reamer will not go into that cystic lesions too much, and uh, bone integration will not happen. I know it needs a little bit of time. I'm taking little time for that. I'm not reaming straight away. This is a complex pathological problem, and I think you are doing the right thing by showing the audience what needs to be done. It's not a matter of time, but the fact that you have to clear all the soft tissues from the acetabular side. That is important. Yes, sir. Thank you. I uh, almost at wash. Now you can see and. Uh, Appreciate the problem as well. I'm able to. Okay, Gospis. Okay. Ah. Okay. Now you can see the a small bleeding bone. Okay. Now, reamer ready. Ah, uh, I want a bigger reamer. Forty-two. It's as I said. Since it's a divergent, the whole astablum is like that, like a balloon. So even the forty-two. Okay, next forty-six, forty-four. Ah, oh, I don't know. Next, next. It's it's really like a balloon. We need to see what size it is going to take. Next. So I'm not. I actually I'm not giving any pressure. I'm not dreaming anything. I'm just seeing what size. So this gradually going inside with the reamers. It will give you an idea. What kind of size you are going to deal with, and as simultaneously, slowly you will be opening the mouth also. See now, slowly, little bit of purchase, and the same time, whenever you put inside and take it out, you are opening the mouth. But I am not going. I am not doing anything on the anteroposteriorly. I am not dreaming. I have not started. What is it? Huh? Fifty-two. What was the size we redeemed before? No, no, no. Reamer, reamer, fifty-one. Huh? Huh? So already, already we have gone to fifty reamers. We fifty, we have finished. So now we have to be little careful. We should not uh, get carried away with the size fifty-one.
again i am not dreaming much inside or 52 hmm. huh? okay i'm getting a little bit of bite anterior and posterior 53 one by one what is it why okay right oh good thanks okay keep on pad sorry okay uh, now 53 so now we are going to have little bit of tightness in the mouth so uh, now i am getting little little bite and purchase on the anterior and posterior i have reamed a little bit and then see the tall these two homans okay what is the size it was no no 53 no 54 cup just for a trial so some amount of purchase was there with the 53 trial uh, reamer so i just wanted to see a trial how it is fitting just to have a feel of it so here tap so i am not banging so i need even though 53 i might need to 54 reamer so i am going to open the mouth alone so it is not entering so i am going to open the mouth like okay now 50 54 again sorry 54 uh, a cup eh? 52 cup kodum trial trial 52 so i reamed till 53 but uh, 54 i just to know where we are i am going to trial a 52 and see no harm in trialing like that ah see so we know that definitely we have not dreamed much but still 52 itself is very low so we know that we are in the right direction now now 54 reamer once again one useful tip for the audience is when you are coming closer to the ap capture you can we can be little aggressive here and try to go for a bigger reamer straight away Re but uh, reamer to it will just disengage so reamer on reverse and once you reamer on reverse once you get the ap capture done yeah reamer will disengage so that's the size of the socket that's how you can determine 54 cup yes mm. so you instead of reaming on forward in complex situation ream on reverse as you understand okay, good. closer to the size so one way of understanding the size if you are able to dislocate the head again professor malotra was saying if you get the head out and measure the size of the head as chandrashekar said in the morning so Four mm larger is the cup size. Once you come closer, if you're not sure, ream on reverse. Once okay. Once it engages, that is the size of the socket. Yes. Okay. If you cross Now, it, then you will damage the columns. Right. Now again, when he is preparing the acetabulum. Okay. Now I I tried a fifty-four fifty. Cannot remove soft tissues many times. Fifty-four cup many was anteroposteriorly. This was good fit. Real Give me fifty-four reamer once again. But sure there is no soft tissue when you have done the final reaming. Bone graft should not. They should not be prepare the bone. Whatsoever. You prepare. Yes. Cortico cancellosa huh? nibble. Ah, not very small. Not very big. You prepare it. You put graft and then you put the real cup. So there's no point in grafting now. He has not prepared yet. So yes. Okay, fifty-four. So Ajmal, trial. hello. Fifty-four trial. Rajkumar, can you hear me? Ah, oh. hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Hi, Reemer. Ah. 
Yes, sir. So, what is your go-to cup if you had? Ah, yes, sir. Now I can hear you. Entire world available to you, which will, with the regardless of the cost, what what cup will uh, you? Now, use? what I have done is fifty-four. Yeah. Now. Hello. In this situation, sorry, in this situation. Yeah. In this situation, he is only a thirty-four. So I will definitely try to go for a play, regular pinnacle cup. I will try to get a fixation with a regular pinnacle cup, not straight away jump into a Gripsian type of cup. But definitely not a HA coated, a porous coated, but not a Gripsian type of highly porous. He is only thirty four. Bone stock is good. So first is that if on table, if I see the osteo osteoblum is very osteoporotic, then think about a highly porous. Like a pinnacle should be fine, or something like an R three cup is also very good. I'm not used to this Lebetas cup, so I'm going to use it now, and I'll see how good the coating is. Okay, so because uh, But, point is that ah, yes, sir. bone is very sclerotic or pathological or abnormal, then these porous coated cups give a very high coefficient of resistance against twisting. So if the patient can afford, my choice will be a Gripsian kind of cup. So when he said I'll use an R3, R3 and Gripsian are same. R3 is also a porous coated cup. So using a porous coated cup in the presence of abnormal bone is a good idea if the patient can afford that, because uh, you can't risk failure here. Your uh, initial fixation or bone fixation is compromised. So if you have a cup Sir. with a very high coefficient of friction. Correct. Correct. are value correct, correct. because of the roughness because of the porous coating and highly osteoinductive kind of coating then that is always a preferable thing yeah but uh, in literature if you see sir the, the uh, better than the gripsian the pinnacles Most results are very good being compromised when the host bone contact is compromised then you need to go for a porous coating yes i can see still that after reaming i can see big big cystic lesions Uh, the cystic uh, uh, tissues i am curating it out big big ones yeah because it's so, a pathological acetabulum as we saw in fact uh, i sometimes little bit drill and then cure it drill and then try to remove everything i can see now so much of pockets after the curate i don't know whether you can appreciate there my uh, first assistant uh, doctor what is his name avinash is preparing the bone like uh, the he is preparing the graft so in the meantime i am doing this i will show you how much, oh yes <laughs> i'll show you how much of cystic okay okay oh. see here ट्राइ द ओके रीमर सो दिस द पेरीफ्री दट इज द माउथ नीड्स लिटिल ओपनिंग बिकॉज दट इज नॉट गोइंग टू टेक द फिफ्टी सिक्स इट विल नॉट अलाउ द फिफ्टी सिक्स टू एंटर सो आई हैव टू ओपन इट मोर आई एम यूजिंग द फिफ्टी सिक्स रीमर i'm not going deep 
only the periphery. Now I can see some good reaming of the. Okay. So I can see now there is, I'm rotating. Can you see me rotating? Yeah. Ah, so there is no rotation. So anthroposteriorly, can you show me here? Anthroposteriorly, there is good fixation and uh, there is no movement. So I will, now this is the size. Even though I, if you look at my reaming, I have not reamed much on the anterior and posterior also. Only cleared the debris, opened the mouth because the cup is so much like that. So with the gentle reaming, careful, I was able to get this 56 inside. So this is my cup size. So now my plan is to pack the bone graft. I have not pushed the cup too much deep. You can see there is space. I don't know. I, I don't know whether you are able to appreciate. Yeah, we can see the, that. Uh, we can see that. The cup is ah, uh, the cup is not bottomed out. So there is a space for the bone graft. Now I know where much how much I'm going to lateralize. I'm not going to lateralize so much. Once I put the cup and then pack it, impact it, still more it will go inside and get a good fit. So now I know based on this, one more thing what I do is I know where my tal is. So then I take an artery forceps. This gives a guy. It gives a rough idea. So, okay. So this artery forceps, this artery forceps and this reamer rather uh, trial is uh, in place looking at the version. So I can see that it is parallel to the tile. So my version is okay and my abduction angle also is okay. No much of uncoverage. So this is how I use the tile as the main uh, reference point for my version, right? Bone graft. Ah, then please put small, small. What happened? We are ready. Ah, okay. The results of cemented uh, cups in protrusion are very. Ah. So okay, fifty-six cup. Action crafting. Lebitas. But generally, the long-term results are. All of small pieces. Ah, fifty-six. Small, small pieces. In a long term. Yeah, no, another small piece. It's all sclerosed. So, in the meantime, they are preparing. I can go and do the femur in the meantime. Dr. Rajkumar? So, ah, there's a question from the audience. Ah, That's a poor piece. On the table, you are not able to get a good peripheral fit or a satisfactory mm. uh, stability. Would you go for a cemented cup? Uh, I, I think 99% of the time you can get the uh, uncemented cup if your reaming and your sizing is perfect. I think you can get away in protrusion, even though it looks scary, it, the main problem is in the medial wall and in the mouth. The uh, anthroposterior, I accept in this situation when it is so much uh, ballooned out and astablum, I accept that you can have a cemented system as a backup. In fact, in literature also, nicely impaction bone grafting done with cemented uh, cup also gives excellent results. So if you are confident enough to do a cemented cup, definitely we can. So what you are saying is that you would much rather do a gription rather than a cemented. Yes, yes, yes. If that, in spite of trying all those things, okay, uh, the two goss I'm going to do is they are get the bone is very scleros, so they are preparing the bone graft. In the meantime, I will go for the femur. goss. So here, what I do is whenever we pack inside, whenever we pack inside, always I keep only two goss pieces, so that we know the entire team knows that we are going to keep only two. So in removing also, we will know that two is kept inside, we can. Otherwise, sometimes three, sometimes four, we should not keep. Or one. Always we keep two. Pack it. 
that's a very useful point whenever you are putting any gauze pieces there must be a very scrupulous count because that can lead you in real trouble particularly here my entire team always knows yeah, that it is only to differentiate it come here okay now we are ready with the femur gauze piece is not a bone graft substitute so <laughs> although it can give temporary stability hormones 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 two hormones quick quick Uh, flex, flex the knee. Ah, 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 right. That's all. Okay, now there's enough evidence. Hormones. No, oh, uncontained. Difference. One more hormones. Still, oh, you hold it and hold it here. Put a cage or oh, don't bend. It may be better. Ah, protrude your device with. Ah, right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, small, small hormones. Is it open? Is it hold? Let him hold. When the entry protrudes your cage, if it is not resting on the bone, it. Ah, Langen, gently, Langen, but. it's non biological 5 to 7 years it will fail but without support behind it will fail much faster ah okay support it here diathermy forceps so what i'm doing so i don't know whether you can appreciate the leg can you show the leg right let's let let's let okay so can you see the leg it is opposite so i am now this is me okay i am standing exactly on the uh, exactly posterior that is like when we do a femur nailing so i am standing in that position this is the uh, this is the trochanter this is the lesser trochanter this is the greater trochanter lesser trochanter this is the sharp and this is the patella so the entire reaming rasping everything my patella is the guide and the lesser trochanter is the guide so when you keep the knee in 90 degrees flexion and the lesser trochanter is here then you know where exactly you are going to rasp and position of the implant so this is the one big advantage with this approach that the femur is there in front of you not much of difficulty to push the femur anteriorly and try to ream the ostabulum and also while preparing the femur you don't need much of assistance help in keeping the knee in 90 degrees flexion and rotation so are you in a figure of 4 right now ah yes almost like that sir almost it is just hanging the knee is 90 degrees flexed the hip is uh, in fact uh, the hip is put the leg is hanging outside the table inside a bag here there is no bag but routinely we have a bag the leg goes into a sterile bag keep it so yes okay now ready just two homans here ah one retractor here this retractor is retracting peri nibbler big nibbler one my nibbler is here okay bone graft ah okay ready so just uh, clearing the soft tissue and make sure your lateral area entry area so we all know that your entry has to be as lateral as possible ah okay now i know this is the entry entry area this is the trochanter entry area so clear of all the soft tissue don't be in a hurry to the wooden handle yeah nibbler hmm all cases without every case Even in the revision, we have a drill. Thick drill. I need to. The entry area is also little. I need to ah. act osteoporotic femur. I don't want it to fracture, so something should be there in the canal. And for doing releases, there is something I can lift up with my bone lever, like the either a reamer or a rasp, and then do my releases so that I can push, and I push oh. it against. Now, ah, next one, next one. like i said if i finished femur the moment i put the real cup real liner trial and ready to be more efficient process you are going to enough size what is the size 
coming back to prepare, then going again for trial. So this is more smooth workflow. It has to be retracted. Okay, next size. A rasping size because you need so many adjustments still. Nine. Okay. Uh, actually, the bone is very hard. It's not that soft. Ah. Okay. Enough, enough. Okay. Rotate. So you keep the, rotate it a little bit here. Ah. What is the first size, sir? Huh? Okay, right. The camera is uh, moved from its position, I think. Yeah. So I'm using the smallest size that itself is reamer, reamer. It's very hard. Bone is also hard. That not that soft reamer. I know, no, soft, soft. Use a bigger nibbler and what nibble it. You just heard that he said that the femoral bone is very hard. So when you are dealing with these long-standing deformities, post-septic arthritis, AVN, post-core uh, decompression, fibular grafting, you should always keep a burr. Because... Uh, I, I, uh, burr exactly very good. Exactly very good. Done. Very good point, sir. Actually, I uh, back home, I have a flexible reamers. Always use that uh, flexible reamers also whenever we... Is another... That is again a great point. So in case you have sclerosis in the canal or obliterated medullary canal, it's a good idea to open the canal with a drill, pass a ball tipped guide wire, and then start initial reaming with the flexible reamers so that you don't perforate the canal. So once you have found the canal and then subsequent reamers Next. is fine. So there is a high risk of perforation when there is uh, sclerotic islands in the bone or neocortex or uh, old septic arthritis or uh, even in AVN also, right? Next size. I have removed some screws. You have removed the uh, screws, uh, cancellous screws for fracture neck femur. There'll be neocortex around them and they can divert your drill or divert your uh, uh, reamer and cause perforation. And don't hesitate to use the image if you're not sure. Just the size. and make sure you are inside. Uh. Okay. See, now the version is knee is 90 degrees flexion. The lesser trochanter is here. Now this femur uh, implant is almost 15 degrees anterior to the... So this is the lesser trochanter. My femur rasp uh, implant is 15 degrees anterior to the lesser trochanter. That creates the necessary antiversion which we have to do. So that way you can see the implant sitting flush. So I was able to get a good fit. There was no rotation or <laughs> axial instability or uh, looseness. So this size, what is this size? Size two should be the right one. So if for putting the size two, I had to prepare with the reamers. Then only I was able to get in. So we have to be very careful that it is looking like a door, door B. Sometimes it is between door A and A B. So you have to open the canal properly. Otherwise, you will get a distal fit in the first itself. Which is not good. That's okay. A very right. Point Rajkumar is making. I think uh, for the audience sake, I will repeat it. So you have three types of femoral morphology. You have the door type A, where the proximal part is wide Nibbler. and the part is narrow. You have door type B, where there is you know the distal part. Lang and box. And type C, where there is Nibbler. Nibbler. Lang and box. Paradoxically, the correct put, put, hey, not too much to fail in a door type A ah, Nibbler. young uh, male. And some of these are copies, the Merrill and the you know, Biorad, these are all copies of Corel. The what happens is even with Corel, midterm failure happens when you have a distal catch. So okay. what did you do? You saw him, he was reaming. Rail. So how you must be aware of that if your astabulum is 52, yeah. putting a very small femur okay. problem. Yeah. 52, you must put a neck. three or four. Ah. This is inside. Situation, but two in a male patient is still small for me. 
so i would still dream more and try and go put a 3 or 4 or something like that it should give you an indirect hint rotate head second head, head. when you introduce the stem the stem will catch distally first so if Lang you have four or five centimeters you are hammering it in it is more a and catch, not proximal so one more lang and bucks millimeter diameter we have to ream the canal so put a flexible lang and bucks ream it then you use that stem the stem must be introduced with hand till about a centimeter deep, deep. last centimeters we must hammer so if you ah, have yeah. hammer half the stem in like that catch like that it will fail okay a lot of you will Suck not inside. it was looking very good it's stable it's stable distally it will not ingrow proximally it's a liner liner thick coated stems like corel trail liner like canal if you can choose an alternative stem you can choose a proximally coated stem or something like that if you are wanting to do the same thing for some reason trail liner the canal be aware if there is establish this is 56 and identify this cause of failure this is a very common cause of failure and this must be avoided at all costs so next time don't just rasp ream rasp in yes. fact i uh, excellent points kiran uh, what you have again uh, reinforced but uh, the thing yeah here i if you see the rasping was very very little in fact so it was only the uh, reaming was done yeah this is exceptional situation where acetabulum is very damaged so size 2 is probably okay and uh, raj one question for you sometimes yeah. i found that these sort of cementless stems with fixed offsets are difficult uh. to use in these protrusive situations yeah yeah that is the reason i was uh, behind the deepak for a uh, low offset stems in fact this lebitus is a very very high offset stem you have to have a, a short neck corel or a summit type of low uh, offset I mean, stems short neck length but uh, uh, neck shaft angle which is more various for these cases so yeah. you cannot have a 145 degree Suck. shaft angle it should be 125 neck length should be smaller because the reduction will be difficult such such because the neck shaft angle will be around 120 in these cases or gas piece acetabulum out so yes lateralizing so your combined length or combined uh, whatever is the offset is already increased by acetabulum so femur you'll have to reduce the thing yeah we have lateralized so the astablum is see now this is no no lift lift and pull 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 gently no 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 just pull just pull ah okay definitely this will not go inside oh i have to put uh, uh, put the stem little more inside yeah now show me the cut also is little bit i have to re readjust the cut here and uh, try to put the stem so as we were talking uh, myself and kiran was uh, again reinforcing about the offset here a high offset stem like this some uh, in this kind of situations is uh, difficult to get in so you cannot always go with corel pinnacle and then try to reduce it always so these cases you have to have a backup with a short neck so corel has got a short neck here but i'll try to readjust here uh, i might able to get away with the stem being inserted little more inside and also you need to know that the size here the cut is i'll revise the cut little bit pressure net up and put the and we also have to be very careful that the more sizes we are going up from 3 to 4 then the offset also increases so we need to know the system hold it here we need to know the system exactly what offset it starts with how it gets increased uh, so so these are all real life problems all of us face you have a previously uday demonstrated you know you you couldn't reduce it because it's too tight so use the cemented stem so that is also an option in these cases for protrusion i always keep a cemented stem because patient is not walking that much or you must keep a stem as raj is saying with ability to adjust the craniocaudally or you ha- must have a very short neck and offset so that is okay. the stem for the audience yeah so there is where the pre operative planning pre operative planning means it is not just drawing lines in the x rays 
it is it is everything the lang and small lang it is everything preparation of the implants instruments and then talking to the company person knowing the system Yeah, one a little more mallet. No. So we also need to know what is the size of the stem when compared to the trial. Is it the same as Corel? 1.6, Jonathan. The original stem is a little bigger than the huh? Oh, see. <laughs> In uh, this uh, Lebita stem, what we are uh, uh, trialing, it is line to line, it seems the size. Whereas in Corel, it is 1.6 mm bigger than the rasp. Okay, trial, suck. This is the smallest. Okay. Do you have uh, minus four heads in uh, some of the companies? Some of the com start, uh, companies start with plus 1.5. If you are using a ceramic, ah. so that also you must be aware. One more line. Minus yes. Four. Sometimes you will get away. Sure. But if it's a plus 1.5 starting, you will not be able to reduce it. And for cement yes. stems, how much you can sink in is very limited. The play is around 5-6 millimeters. Yeah, so yeah, we cannot sink too much. We cannot sink too much. Yeah, so that's the problem. <laughs> ah, suck. And okay. also, you must make sure that the trial liner. You have a small push up, small push up. The real liner. Sometimes you have lateralized real liners with lip and they will not reduce. Okay, so you have to be aware. You should make sure that the liner which they are giving you for trial is the same as the liner which they are giving you for the real cup. You have to give traction, okay? Ah, yeah. Suction. Ah, push up. Okay. Ah, pull. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so you have okay. cups up to 70 mm available. No, no, pull, pull. Hato, that is why you have to no, no, just to see. Uh, keep no no, keep the leg. Uh, pull. Uh. Okay. Yeah, now yeah. I, I, I don't know whether you heard that the tongue sound is actually good. So that's a very good tension, yeah. Yeah. So now if you see Langenbex, now I'll show you. Two lang and legs. Okay. Can you see the head? Yeah, we can see the head. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, my first assistant keeps the knee in extension and then gives a longitudinal traction, gentle traction. No, no, keep the knee. Don't need to go there. He is very energetic. Tirupati energy is there with him. Ah. Keep it in extension. Sir, ah, okay. Energetic, Avinash, yeah, he is. He says, sir, by this time I would have done three hips here. Ah, pull. Ah, see, not much of movement. So that means the touch sound reduction reasonably okay. When I'm able to now, I, the cup has to be impacted a little more. So the cup will go a little more inside after I impact it. So in that way, I'm able now. I'm in the right place of the right size of the cup. The lateralization is adequate. My uh, stem insertion uh, position is okay. Now, the chuck test, which we don't rely too much now, but still you have to make sure whether the chuck test before doing it, whether the patient has got a ligament laxity, hyperextension, all generalized ligament laxity. If that is the case, particularly females, young females, you will see that they have even pre-op. So, for those cases, you cannot rely. Now, test for stability, flexion. See, full flexion, full adduction he is doing yeah. and he is trying, he is pressing. He wants to bring it out. He is pressing, but it is not coming. Uh, extension. Okay, extension and then externally rotation. So, it is no. possible that sometimes if you are not able to take it out, the trial are more expensive than the real implants. So okay, now I am happy with this implants. Stem, they could not take it okay. out. Now, the stem lasted 17 years for that patient. So they just put some headache ah. in because they could not. So this again, correct. 
tension of pulling it out also is correct. Okay. So now ready for the cup bone graft ready. Okay. Put it here. Right. So Raj, you, you quickly show ah. the cup and then we will leave you to finish the case. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Because the next case is ready and we are... Uh, I, I'll show the cup one second. Just show us the okay. grafting and the cup. Impact. Ah, okay. We will leave you at... Moments, it. moments. Okay. Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Stem, me pedu ke vanda. One second. Hmm. Because we'll put the cup. Ah, okay. Keep it ready. Okay. Cup ready. Ah, come this side. We'll just show. Take off this moments. Bring it out. Okay. Mallet. Okay. Home on either God's piece. I'll just show two, three important points and then you can go off live. Oh, that's all. Okay. This is the second home and again. No, don't pull towards you. Mallet. Not that mallet. Hmm. There only. No. Ah, I know. Hold it here. Ah, okay. Self retainer. Okay, suck. Handle. Sorry, screwdriver. Oh. One drill bit, long drill bit, ah, gas piece. Okay, ready? Wash drill bit. Okay, so I'm just making just a small, small drill bill. I'm not doing much. It will change our trialing everything. Just making small drill bills because the bone is little scree roast. Okay, wash. Cure it once more, cure it a little bit. I'm not removing any bone. I'm just removing the soft tissue. So you should, if you remove, if you remove the bone, then that means your trialing, sizing, everything changes. You have to be careful. Okay. Ready with bone graft. Hold it. Ah, yeah. There. Can you see the astablum? Hello. Dr. Krishna Kiran. Ah. Hello. Ah. Uh, who is that? Can you see the astablum now? I am Dr. Ravi from Amara Hospital. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, see, you said uh, that uh, astablum and femur, like uh, if the cup size is bigger, femur size also should be bigger. Uh, the bit. Usually, yeah. Because here, what I didn't understand is because of the pathology in the acetabulum, the cup is bigger, but the femur morphology hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah. So, do you go with the native? Uh, stem itself or would you try to match uh, i didn't get the point so, yeah, i was trying said. to tell that this is an exception so yeah. he has used the native femur only two size stem yeah but if i was having a 56 cup in a normal astablum yeah. and i'm putting two stem then i would be worried yeah normal it's okay but and in a patient where the morphology you have this is three uh, pusher in particular case two is okay but if you were having a normal avian hip say pusher pusher pathology, long push uh, uh. Come. When you're having to put a two stem or one stem, then it's a problem. 
match that and putting a bigger stem you then you will be reaming so much so this case this itself this case we have to use this first stem which gives us fit and uh, stability but yeah. i am telling them about avs avascular necrosis where there is no ah, yeah yeah that is different story that there that in that situation you will not get into a 54 cup here correct correct that's right you will be nibble some more bone graft the bone graft is little sclerosed also because of the head is sclerosed yeah can i have a reamer so we are looking at the peripheral fit on the uh, acetabulum as you go in the stability will go pusher up. pusher so it, the Punch. divergent protrusio sub sub cup goes in it will become unstable so the rim fit has to be there and rim is sometimes a mis- misnomer you must have a three point sub- fit in the periphery of the acetabulum and fix it with yes. good idea because the moment the graft resorbs or something happen cup goes in reamer becomes reverse reverse small. small reamer not big now oh. so i have packed the bone graft impacted with that push pusher so it's not morselized it's not very morselized little okay suction okay ready some more graft little more so the the here the graft also is little sclerosed so that's why i have made it little smaller uh, very sclerosed graft if it is a cortico cancellous you can have a big chunk if it is very sclerotic then you cannot have big big chunks suck yeah okay bone bank you can use bone bank the uh, heads Or okay is not not approved kudu sir kudu you have two types reamer reverse storage one is uh, fresh frozen okay. where you store it in minus 83 degrees of temperature wait for 3 no, months graft measurement get the retention sample that is H- hiv hbsg hc which should be negative at 3 months and then uh, you can use that the pusher other is a lyophilized bone graft so which again we don't have access to most of the bone banks in this country have got f- fresh frozen bone graft but you need to have approval for it you cannot just use ah. okay ready so now once more uh, forceps so this is your tall here so this in this approach the acetabulum now you know that you you are not uh, deoriented in unlike the posterior so here you know this is anterior this is posterior and this one homens in the posterior behind the posterior wall and this behind the anterior and one self now you are ready uh, glow the uh, anterolateral approach is very good there is no doubt but it is not disorienting with the posterior approach so i would disagree with that <laughs> i expected this ha ah, okay ready ana kudu give me that i'll show the cup so this is the 54 cup so class ha huh? ah, sorry 56 cluster hole okay coating is good ha ah, sir so now you make sure you make sure that hole cluster hole is not in the middle so you you may you should know that it is not at 12 o'clock position you have to make sure that hole is somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock you cannot and then first initial tap uh, uh, initial one 
tap a little bit. Okay, enter, then you in between, you see, and then okay, then again you stop, see where you are, the orientation. Okay, enter, then you check again. Suck. So, uh, this cup you can use both where as a polyethylene liner. And you can also put in a dual mobility cup. So, that's the advantage. So, you have uh, an option of converting uh, the see the based on this is the first time we are i'm using this cup but always try to use cups which you regularly use when you will know exactly the feel how much it will go inside how much it will take all those things it's a it's really getting a good fit wash i don't need any screw at all You can open the liner. That looks very good, uh, Raj. I think we'll leave you here to complete the case and we'll uh, yeah. move on to the next case. Thanks. Thanks, Karan. A very, yeah. very complex uh, scenario. Huge round of applause from the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karan. Thanks, uh, Malhotra, sir. Yeah, sir is coming to OT, so you can meet him there. Okay, there. Okay, the thank you. Waiting again to see him operate on the revision case. So we kept it intentionally. I know, I know, I know, I know you have kept uh, judicially, strategically that case as the last case. No, no, but the dinner is arranged here. So it's not a problem. We are here to learn for okay. liner, liner. We will make you free early on Sunday, but this day you should see. I want 36 ceramic head. Really, huh? Huh? Okay. Good evening. Next case yeah, is good evening. primary total knee replacement of 82 years male patient. With range of uh, movement 0 to 120 degrees with the 20 degrees virus deformity. The operating surgeon is Ramana Murthy Garu and uh, the moderator is Chandrasekhar. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good evening and thanks for inviting uh, to operate in this holy uh, city, uh, organizing team and everyone. And I have a case of young, uh, 82 years without any comorbidities and virus knee. Thanks for the organizing team to giving uh, such a case. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll start straight away because uh, this is a, because we are a delay of uh, an hour. So, so he's under tunica, I'm doing. I believe he is yeah. 82. 82. That's what the, yeah. That's what the, okay. <laughs> how old is he? 82 years, young, young only still because he is not having any comorbidities except the sclerotic vessels you can see in the x-ray, sclerotic popliteal vessels. Yeah. So I am starting a midline incision and medial parapetalar approach. Is that your standard approach? Because, yes, it's my standard approach. Beneath the uh, subcutaneous fascia which is very important. for that another retractor use the two retractor so medial border of the patella and the tibial tuberosity uh, palpating and going uh, straight away medial parapetalar nebular see the x-ray of this patient 
uh, straight forward virus with uh, partially correctable a lot of osteophytes and the subluxation to lateral it is there and uh, i use the knife only to release the medial capsular release i don't use the uh, diathermy because i don't want to make it necrosis with the uh, diathermy heat and the other issues with it usual will not feel any uh, will not see any bleeds there superior elevation i want a bigger one bigger knife is there uh, 20 22 blade please so you are elevating the medial sleeve in flexion is that your uh... yes yes i do like this i can see properly and it's stretched out so that uh, uh, till uh, i always prefer a sequential release yeah. till mid sagittal plane i'll take out that sleeve and i'll take out the whatever the osteophytes there yeah flexion it's uh, very easy to see as well this is my uh, this way of doing the varus knees that's how i do and up to mid sagittal i have gone and i am extending i'm checking just how the uh, uh, how correction is uh, achieving i'll take out uh, a little bit of sinum over here anterior cortex anterior that's it and hold 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 the right taking out the patellar osteophytes at this point No, no, don't need to put. Take out a little bit of four first fat pad, not entire. I'm going for the uh, yes. Are you a CR or a PS surgeon? A uh, PS. I am going for a PS here, and a freedom knee. I am using. So here we have to be caution. If it is a lot, the osteophyte sometimes uh, uh, stretches the MCL, even superficial MCL. That's the reason. Be careful in subluxating the thing. Yeah. Put a spike. Like here, with the, the uh, I have not removed the medial meniscus, so the, the meniscus capsule and all they have to protect the MCL here and yes. superficial MCL. They are subluxate, they are subluxated. Take out whatever the remaining osteophytes here. Don't take out too much bone here. Juncture, I am taking out the lateral meniscus. Take out, take out all. Yeah, keep it. So basic uh, release and the uh, exposure is done. Udi is there, I think. Standard uh, valgus five five degrees. I am using. Any yeah. any questions at this point? Yeah. Any tips to the uh, junior audience about uh, your entry point? Uh, entry. If it is a, a like a routinely uh, uh, eight to ten mm anterior to the PCL attachment, will go and uh, me a medial biased because uh, femoral canal will be the lateral side, and sometimes the femoral bowing is the big issue. In those, like if the femoral bowing angle is more than 5 mm, I use the robo or the navigation. No, I don't use this uh, intermedial rigid at all. Okay. If, it is a, if the bowing angle is uh, drawn in a four quadrant, uh, uh, like uh, taking a four parts of the femur from the lesser trochanter to the 5 mm, 5 centimeters above the medial epicondyle, and we draw from uh, 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 first quadrant and the distal quadrant, then if it is more than 5 five degrees then better go uh, take an assistance of a navigation or the robo whatever you have 
Okay. And otherwise, it's a five degrees uh, uh, straightforward cut is my uh, option in in all. Take out the osteophyte if it is sits on the osteophyte. Take out the osteophytes yes. because the full extension is possible here. I am not going for a plus two or anything. Direct nine mm cut with a five degrees valgus. In Indian scenario, five degrees standard valgus is enough for all cases, almost all cases. Any contra in contra in this? I mean, uh, do you, uh, does your valgus angle change with the height of the patient? I mean, if you're yes, in males usually if it, the offset is more in a, uh, a tall male, you can go for a six degrees. Otherwise, five degrees. Yeah, it's usually four to uh, six degrees in Indian scenario. In uh, West, maybe it's a little uh, more. Yeah, I mean in. In short individuals, I usually prefer to increase my valgus angle. In taller individuals, yeah. I go for six. In obese, obese and all. So the and nine M standard. Battery. Just, just a small tip, not, uh, not directly related to this particular case, but uh, while doing the yes. femoral resection, especially when you're mm -hmm. dealing with uh, uh, severe FFDs, then when you're trying to take more distal femur resection, your limit should be the epicondylar attachment. So you should never cross beyond the epicondyle levels. Yes, usually not more than 4 mm. Yeah, yeah I mean, again, it depends on the morphology of that particular patient, but your epicondyle should be your limit. Because in some situations, most of the time, you, you, plus two will be enough. But in case of severe FFDs, you might have to go for plus four also. Yes, up to five, plus four acceptable. More than that, usually no. So your normal routine is complete the femoral cut first and then go for the tibial. Is that correct? Distal femoral cut first, then tibia, then uh, uh, four in. Okay. No, no, it's not. I mean, there are surgeons who will do, if it is a measured resection, you complete the femur and then go for the tibia. If you yes, that can also be done. You make sure. The but usually. Mm. And then balance. Yeah, please, please. Tibia. Yeah, tibial cut, which I take uh, always as less as possible uh, from the lateral uninvolved condyle. I'm taking 9 mm. I think the 9 mm is their uh, smallest poly thickness. Yeah. And I take always take the medial uh, one third of the tibial tuberosity and the uh, distal most shin, not in between. I never see in between. And that foot I usually in females because they're always in a deformed. So distal shin and the medial tibial tuberosity. That's it. These two parameters I'll hit and straight uh, can go for it. We can rely on them. And it's on uh, uh, determine freedom knee is uh, three degrees, which I'll take usual. I, I never use such sort of a jig. I usually use the straight uh, jig in um, like in a Jimmer or a Smith and Navy and all. Okay, this is a little away. From this one, at least uh, at least two fingers away is uh, usually they have given marking also there. So if you are used for these jigs, you can uh, maybe uh, you have to take a call like three degrees. So you, I can see with my fingers uh, as well. This is the two fingers away from the uh, distal chin. Usually I take a straight uh, uh, jig. Can you see this jig? Yes, yes. Uday, can you see this? Very clear. The, uh, what you use, like this sort of a jig or a straight jig? This is eccentric, you can see here. Yeah. Yeah. But this is fine, but uh, the thing is, if you are used for it, it's good. Otherwise, uh, whatever you are used for, that jig can be used. Because the three degree slope for jigs, uh, cutting uh, jigs are available in each, every company. Even you, you can keep those jigs in this uh, freedom. Or in a like like that, you can vice versa. You can use it. 
I'll give the secret. I'm taking out uh, not much. This. I'm not testing the de depth of the defect. You can see the depth of the defect. I may take out this extra portion of the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, later uh, soft tissue balancing. In a useful point, uh, if there is a tibial defect on the medial side, you make use of your lateral Sorry? thing to the cut rather than Sorry? because. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. That's what I'm said, saying. If there, if you are facing a situation of, uh, you know, defect on the medial side. See, it should it, it should be just above. You should not cut below it because you will end up cutting too, taking too much of tibia. So it yeah, usually try to always try to minimize your bone cuts, preserve as much bone as possible. Yes, always, always. Better use the lowest thickness poly as well. Because Never the, test with the uh, depth. raised by one of the uh, uh, hmm. one of the uh, delegates. So whether you yes. try to go below the defect and fit in eleven poly, or just go above the defect. So I was explaining the uh, you yeah. know the importance of preserving the bone. Yes, yes, sir. Because here I I don't need to uh, see the depth of this defect as well. Because most most of the time times we need to resect this one, downsize the tibia for the uh, getting the uh, balancing. See the extra osteophytes here. So we need not take up to the depth of this area medial corner. So at this juncture, I'll, I want to see the size of the tibia. Four. A little big. Give me four. Uh, Dr. Ramamurthy, if you could at this stage uh, ah. tell the audience about how what are your landmarks for, uh, you know, uh, setting the rotation of your tibial component and also the sizing yeah. of the component. Yes, yeah, sizing will take it to the lateral uh, tibial plateau as the size. Yeah. And uh, rotation, I'll take it. Not right now, I'll take it because uh, at the time of uh, a yeah. trial, I'll take that one. I'll take uh, three landmarks for the uh, tibial rotation. One is the tibial tuberosity. Second is, anyhow, I'll do the uh, trial uh, free ROM technique. You know that uh, while doing the trial, we leave it and uh, if whatever the position it sits, we'll take it. That yeah. is the second point. And third is the curve and curve technique. You know that I think anteromedial portion of the uh, tibial curve uh, sits with the anteromedial portion of the uh, tibial tray. That is also one. Thing. If it is going like this, this is not. Uh, that's a ro internal rotation. So this is these three points will take it for the tibial rotation, a correct tibial rotation. <laughs> any any anything yeah i think that's perfect yeah those three points will take it for the tibial rotation that's very important for patella tracking and uh, flexion gap symmetry now i am taking out in extension i am taking out the remnant of the medial mal the medial uh, uh, meniscus so till now is protecting my mcl and the capsule as well Not required. Don't don't change the lights. I am happy. Now keep it like this. Keep the light. Okay, that's it. So are you excising the meniscus now? We are not able to see the operative field. Yes, I am. I am excising the uh, ex meniscus. Okay. Post in horn of the meniscus. You can. Now I will see. Check the uh, extension gap. Maybe nine. Yeah. We are unable to see the field. Yeah. Can can you see this now? No, no, we are not. Okay. Able to... Yeah, just focus, focus. They just have to change the camera orientation. Oh, this is the nine mm spacer I am checking in extension. Yeah. For the rectangular gap as well as the amount of the gap. This is a nine mm in full uh, extension, and uh, not much opening on either side. 
Okay, fine. Can you see this? Okay. Now, after my distal femoral cut with the five degrees valgus and uh, with the three degree slope in the tibia perpendicular to the mechanical axis, I am checking the extension gap. This is a nine mm block, a full extension achieved, and either side of the this one is a rectangular gap without too much uh, opening on either side. So most probably nine is enough for me in extension. So we'll go with the uh, focus there. Go with the femur uh, cuts. Here, extension, external rotation of the femur very important for the flexion gap symmetry. Yeah. Earlier, so here I'll take. Was, yeah. It was asking about the how you said the femoral external rotation. I mean, is it by default you always go for three degrees or something more than that? Uh, three degrees of what? Femoral external rotation you are talking femoral about? Femoral external rotation I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Femoral external rotation, I never uh, take it granted in the three degrees. I go five degrees, seven degrees in my practice very often. Why? Because I'll check it with the uh, gap technique. You know that gap technique. Here, the medial, uh, medial side is very tight and the lateral side is uh, opening like anything. In this case, at least I need a six degrees. Yes. Apart yes. from your trans epicondylar nine, this white side line, and all you can draw uh, the posterior femoral condyle line, all these things can be drawn. But my technique is the soft tissue balancing, uh, like, uh, balancing technique. Okay, the gap balance technique for the external rotation of the femur. That is nothing but the see. I am keeping the keeping the leg in ninety degrees, and lifting one guy is uh, our assistant is lifting the thigh. See, you can see the fem lateral femoral condyle lifting and the medial femoral condyle is very tight. It's not the uh, soft tissue tightness is uh, very high. So this hypoplasia is also there on the lateral femoral condyle. So we'll go for the, in, the, in, the, in this uh, set of freedom, we have zero, three and six degrees. Yes. The fixed thing. In uh, Smith and Nevue and some of the sets, if you see it, we can change it to four degrees, five degrees, six degrees like that. Yes. Usually I go for a five degrees most of the times because in these, uh, these sets, so we have a zero, three and six degrees. I prefer six degrees in this case. Yeah. Everything clear? There yeah. are three, four points we have to be clear. One is a gap technique, what I'm using in 90 degrees of flexion of the knee. And if at all we want to see, we can see the uh, surgical epicondylar line. Yeah. Okay. Anatomically, it will change like a sulcus of the uh, medial. Epicondyle, we'll take it, and the lateral epicondyle also we can take it. Yes. Yeah, we have multiple usually landmarks. The Leo white side line, which he's drawing now, then the surgical trans epicondylar axis, and that's one advantage of uh, having made your tibial cut because you can make use of your uh, make use of your yes. tibial cut also. Yes. Yeah. Yes. As a reference point for your external rotation. Yes. This is this is a uh, tibial. You you are hundred percent sure about the mechanical axis per perpendicular cut of your tibia. Then you can make it a perpendicular to that is uh, enough. Yes. That is also a good point, sir. Give it six degrees. Sizing jig. The the posterior condylar axis is least. I think you know. Uh, I would say important of all this, because sometimes you can face with uh, posterior condylar hypoplasia or hyperplasia. So you can uh, you, uh, that can influence your uh, rotations so you should not exactly the no not not label uh, landmark you can see. here you are getting a e size size e with a 6 degrees see here 0 3 6 degrees external rotation available and there are available you some of them uh, in jigs uh, you can change according to your uh, requirement of that case 4.5. So size E, thing anti reference on the highest point of the anterior uh, lateral portion of the femoral condyle. I want to change it, lateralize the jig. The, another pin. All the components should be lateral. That, yeah.
one more pin please here at this juncture also you can see this optic tube balance with the with a C blade like this and lift lift the thing. Yeah, this is so what, essentially yeah. we got a nine mm. Yep. Make sure it is balanced. Yes. Yes, it's balanced or not. We can check it. It's good. Okay. Not cutting much. You can see very little cut on the yep. femoral side. In this system, uh, it will cut very less in the posterior condyles. So I'm protecting the MCL on the medial side. You can see this uh, spike, very useful spike. Yes. That's very important. Keep your uh, eyes over it. Direct inside. Okay, the saw should be directed inside. And here also the same popliteus. So the key is protecting the soft tissues. So if you yes. keep the soft tissues, so that will determine your uh, success. So you do your anterior cut at the end, is it? Sorry, again, please. The anterior cut at the end. You, you do yes yes i i'll do the chamfer here anteriorly then i'll do the final anterior cut okay that also gives us an idea about notching yeah to for that only i am taking out the chamfer and i can see properly yeah. <laughs> I'm taking out the uh, cut chamfer here, anterior uh, cut chamfer. Then we can see properly, we can see everything here. So it's flush with the cortex. You want to see that? Sure. Maybe you're not able to see this, uh, I think. Yeah, right here. This is a flush with the anterior cortex. That's what is very important. Not stuff too much to the patellofemoral joint. Or clear cut. Astrotome, small astrotome. I want a small astrotome, very small astrotome, the bigger astrotome. Yes. Take out any posterior medial astrophytes again.
especially in okay. uh, elderly person with calcified vessels you have to be careful when dealing with the posterior part in the yes middle. yes the so pulses are good in this case and uh, i am doing it under uh, tourniquet yeah e even with uh, such sort of a vascular uh, problem if it is a more than 50% flow you can use the tourniquet that is the latest uh, literature yeah. everybody agrees for that i think so i think most surgeons are uh, under tourniquet yeah. okay sir the chamfer is not well done so on the top layer cut astrotome astrotome and the hammer Now the box cut. Protect again the tibia. Anmurti, I have a Here, yes. So at this stage, yes. after you have done your box cut and uh, removed ah. the uh, you know remnant PCL, if you notice that ah. your flexion there is a mismatch between flexion gap and extension gap, what would be your? Strength? Not check it. Not check it. I can I can check it with a block or a direct. I can go for a mm -hmm. trial because I have prepared everything. Fle flexion gap is loose. What will you do now? If the flexion gap is loose, I have to go for the distal femoral cut. Yeah. To match it. Usually, in measured resection gap uh, gap techniques, these uh, in, uh, rarely it happens. Yeah. A large astrophyte. Posterior femoral condyle, artery. This is the mouth is small. It's a little bigger at cocker or something. Lip, lip, lip. Yeah, can upsize it. Well, trial. So I want to do the trial now. E. You have to use augment. Augment. Yes, augment. Cement. Look at box cut, please. Take out the film. No, no, no. Yeah. It's sclerotic. It's not uh, going inside the trial. So I want to do a bit uh, with the rasp or the box cut. I want to revise a bit.
one is enough. Uh, Yeah, you can do the box box of the sclerotic bone. The sclerotic bone is not. <laughs> On the check out. Yeah, Nadi. Check out and Yeah, Doctor Onmuth. Yeah, there is sclerotic bone. Yes, it's sclerotic bone. Yeah. There's a question from the audience. At this yes. stage, if you feel that, you know, mediality is still quite tight. So what would you do? Medially, if it is a tight, I can, I can, I have an option of downsizing here and the medial femoral, uh, medial tibial condyle that, that gives you a very good uh, soft tissue balancing. I have one more, that one is there and I can go post medial release and all. I have not taken out anything uh, from there. Because he has not I have an option. tibial preparation. So when you're preparing huh? the tibia, you can do hmm. go for a medial reduction osteotomy, tibial reduction osteotomy, release the post medial part of the capsule and the MCL as well. Okay. Most of the time, once you do that release, that medial gap yes. really opens up. See, anything, anything you do on the tibial side will influence both flexion and extension. Whether it is in flexion or extension. Yeah. Yeah. If it is flexion, that means, yeah, that means, yeah, exactly. Is matching, huh? Not matching. Hmm. The cutting jig and the component is not matching. Take out and see. Are the are the chamfer cuts matching? Yeah. Yes, yeah, chamfer cuts are matching, but. Uh, I don't know. This is a new set uh, came from uh, directly from Ahmedabad. It seems they just opened. It's entirely new set. One of the suggestions is when you put that, you know, the jig for the uh, the box cut. So I yes. think just revisit the chamfer cuts. Uh, I didn't get you. Uh, tell me again. So if you could you put that uh, jig again for the box cut. Yes. Then check if the chamfer cuts are matching with that or not. The, po the posterior chamfer. The, the, that, that is matching okay, the box cut. Yeah, you the e only you are giving, no? That's been done. Okay, this is okay. E, are you, e? Show me that what you are giving. Mm. E? E, right. Freedom. Oh, but again, another way. Any sclerotic bone on the uh, posterior condyle or on the chamfer area? Yeah, there is a little bit of sclerotic, uh, entire, entire bone is sclerotic basically. 
but uh, it never happened no like this take out yeah we we will we'll do we'll do a bit of uh, posterior as well There is a little mismatch, is it? Definitely, it's because it's we we never see such a situation, no. Give me the box again. Box again. Box again. Astrotom, Karoda Astrotom. Lift. Sometimes these notch osteophytes can also be an impediment. Yes. Not many osteophytes here. Everything is clear. Okay. I want to do a box again. Most probably that may be the reason. But this is also good. Put the pins. Only put the pins. Yeah. Mm. Just give me the sir. Yeah. I said, so I could tilt Kirke. Yeah. Yeah. I think much to cut actually is good. That's, might be, that's okay, I think. I'll take it now. I believe they gave you the correct size uh, box. Yeah, they, they, yes, yes. Uh, you know, for the box. Now this is uh, in. Yeah. Good. Can see? Yeah, we can see that it's nicely sitting. Yeah, this is a four. With four nine. Okay, no, don't don't lift it. Just give a pressure here. So nine sitting well in flexion. Yeah. The mid flexion and the full extension. Here, for tibial rotation, somebody asked. No, yes. I'll take out this. Uh, Tibial holder. So free ROM, you can take out these pins. Maybe we can go for 11. Yeah, I'll check it the congruity. Hold, hold, hold the leg. So, matching to your uh, tibial uh, femur component, that's what. And I'll make a mark. Always make a mark, but it will help fulfill your uh, yeah. original implant implantation. So I think here the flex quite nicely demonstrated, Dr. Ramnuthi. Yes, yes, the sir. This is ready. I think it's just right. tibial preparation and the cementation to be done. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, carry on, carry on because it's a routine Much case, anyhow. Anything else? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramnuthi. Fantastic display of uh, very complicated case, severe virus. I think very sequential, meticulous way of doing. So, we saw Dr. Chatterjee do similarly in the morning for a flexion virus. I think similar principles again have been reiterated how he has taken a conservative tibial cut, osteophyte removal, conservative femoral cut, and sequential balancing. Thank you very much. We will. Uh, thank you. Case. Thank, thank you, you Kiran. Thank, thank, thank you. We'll move on to the yeah. final case of the day. I think it's very heartening to see people still staying back and, you know, I think uh, the, uh, somewhere it is working. So this is the. I think it's the case of the day. After Rajkumar's case, maybe it, uh, it's a right uh, revision hip.
diagnosis is post operative right hip antibiotic spacing Diagnosis is post-operative case of right hip antibiotic spacer following PFN implant removal. Then for this case is right uh, antibiotic spacer removal plus right THR. The patient had history of trauma nine months back where PFN and right PFN was done in an outside hospital in October 2022. Uh, immediately in after uh, two weeks after post-op period, uh, the implant loosening uh, screw back out was seen and the implant removal was done. AB antibiotic space was kept in at a hospital in Bangalore in October 2002 itself. Coming to examination of the hip, the patient in supine position, head center, spine is neutral, hip in neutral, knee at 20 degrees, fixed flexion deformity, and light lower limb externally rotated. Both ACS are at the same level, the scar is healthy. There is anterior joint line tenderness and proximal migration of right data trochanta. There is true shortening of four centimeters. Base of band strength is shortened. These are the X-rays after PFN removal and antibiotic spacer. The previous X-rays were unfortunately not available. ESR and CRP are within normal limits. And this is our walking video. She's not bearing weight on her limb. She's not walking, she's jumping. <laughs> <laughs> non weight wearing company, not weight wearing. Okay. Thank you, sir. So it's really an interesting case, four centimeter true shortening. Let no. us see how he does. Mm -hmm. The operating surgeon is four Dr. Rajesh Four centimeter Malotas, true sir. shortening. Gone. Four centimeter now. Everything Five is gone. Centimeter. Four centimeter they said. Is it a bath or no? Long, long fixation is gone. Okay, the operating so it is shortening is reducing in the notes it says he told me five and now they are saying it's four. <laughs> we should correct we should quickly operate otherwise it will become equal or longer than the other side. Good evening, Hello, sir. Anybody? Good evening. Yeah, Can you hear me? Waiting for your surgery. You know the yeah, that is all right. But we were just discussing, we were given some notes in which it was written that the shortening is six centimeters. Then we came here, we were told it's five centimeter. And then now in this being discussed is four centimeters. So I want to quickly operate before it becomes longer than the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a count of two centimeter. Now we have compromising four centimeters. So it's all right. It doesn't matter much. The important thing here is that um, I was asked whether it will need a subtrochantric osteotomy. So that is not an issue here because, and second thing is, the issue will be only because of uh, uh, infection and scarring. So I have operated on a patient. I can show you the x-rays who was operated 16 times. And the last two first stage were done with us. And then I did the second stage. And I could lengthen it only by about 10 centimeters because, uh, because, there was, because of the soft tissue scarring. So I just tentatively pulled it on the table under anesthesia. And I don't think that equalizing the limb length will be much of a problem here but i have a strategy for equalizing which i was discussing with my assistants so um, i need another pair please okay. so now the issues the issues here are 
number one we have to expose number two we have to take cultures of the fluid and the tissue culture number three we have to get the spacer out of the way so acetabular spacer may not be much of a problem the femoral spacer i don't want it to break into two so that then rest of the evening we struggle taking out the rest of the cement from the acetabulum fourth is the osteoporotic bone putting the stem fifth not harming the the cement uh, the acetabulum is not much damaged but it is porotic so the uh, we have to get do a good job on the acetabular side without eating away too much of bone the next thing is equalization of the limb length and preparation of femur without causing a fracture of the femur and lastly we have to tie the greater trochanter back you can see on the lateral view the greater trochanter is lying behind anterior to the shaft so that has to be fixed back in place and i might use a dual mobility keeping safety in mind can you show the x-ray so my only worry is that there is a hole here so i don't have the previous x-rays but i don't i wonder whether there was a screw there which meant that the original nail went beyond the extent of this current spacer so i'm a little concerned about how good toilet of the medullary canal has been done uh because obviously this uh, it seems that this uh, spacer might be short of the original blocking bolt which was put into the femur so and then this is a somewhat of a varus neck so we'll have to keep that in mind i don't know about the offsets of the uh, uh, of the monomed i don't think it comes with an extended offset so uh, right so so we'll manage it the usual way when we manage the horizontal offset without uh, having a lateralized stem sir and uh, so yeah and other thing is if you look at the scar these are the two scars this scar is far to anterior and uh, we will <coughs> we will uh, have to take another incision the trochanter is here i don't want to go so far anterior i don't want to go so far anterior so i'll take another scar but i don't think that should really be a problem sir sir before we start the case i have few suggestion to the cameraman there as long as you are making it to cameraman only it's okay but you can make suggestions to me also can you please tell him to you know uh, stay in one place without roaming this camera all the head to toe yes i think so um that is a good place can you zoom in there a bit a little bit maybe we have so actually actually i think normally it's a good idea to have two cameras i think we have only one camera here we have two the second one we are using is this one so what we are seeing there is the this one right this one so you have to put your camera somewhere maybe you know behind from to show from this side so you'll have to come to this side without making anything unsterile so like i said it's um, i'll have to give the incision a little more anteriorly because this is far to a little more posteriorly because it's far to anterior so we are ready for the incision antibiotics have been given light handle please okay so incision better din so the whole thing about surgery here is releasing the scar and you know the when you have infection with osteoporotic bone which obviously it is because it was uh, an osteoporotic fracture so we are concerned about the bone quality you must keep that in mind so i have seen the acetabulum going inside the reamer going inside the pelvis i think uh, okay okay Bye. so we we need the syringes we'll take abundant sample because uh, although the esr crp is fine we'll still have to take cultures and we routinely give antibiotics we don't withhold the antibiotics at second stage because there have been studies which have shown that if there is infection there is no 
compromise of the detection of infection by the use of prophylactic antibiotic, but it does make a difference to the risk of infection, right? So I'll just take one mop to mop everything away. So it's very important to make planes here, especially uh, in cases of repeated surgeries and infection, because you need to close all that. So it will help you if you have made nice planes at the time of exposure, then you can close it back nicely. Okay, now we go in. You can actually abduct it a little bit, please. Yeah, thanks. You don't expect the artery to go in as easily as it does in a native hip, but I think it's reasonable. So all those boys, many of them are in the audience who have worked with me. They know that during this kind of complex primary or uh, revision or anything like that, one person in the on the table or a nurse has to keep one hand on the cuff. In case there's any twitch, we don't expose the nerve routinely. There's not much point. Limit of shortening, greater trochanter is upridden. What yes. is telling that one assistant will con permanently <laughs> till the surgery? One, one hand. One hand. It Over can be non-operating assistant also. It can just be the nurse. Somebody, or, or I'll call out. If I'm short of people, I'll call out. When I'm operating on the back side, I'll call out hand on the calf. Stanley? Calf for the sciatic nerve. You can check it out or you can put this one also deeply, not a problem. Because you are dissected. I don't know when you are going to into the sciatic nerve. When the anatomy is distorted, you have to be very careful about the nerve, you know. So, and if you, you want to, yeah, yes, please. Aspiration. We are going to do aspiration now, sir. Yeah. I have just asked for the syringe, and I am waiting for the syringe. I am very happy that you will make sure that I don't miss out on any steps, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, take me just a minute. Since it's the last case of the day, there are only two options. One, we are in a hurry, and second, that we are not in a hurry. <laughs> so, I am not in a hurry because nobody else is waiting. We'll try to do it still as fast as possible. Syringe, please. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that's all right. So, sir, in the needle, please. Needle, sir. I need need it with the needle. Mm, that's a very small needle. The number is a default needle. So, just uh, keep keep it ready here. Let's open it. I couldn't get anything. That doesn't mean that it isn't there. Can you just gently rotate it internally? Uh, gently, gently. Just, just, just. Very porotic bone, so we have to be very, very, very careful. We don't want to break anything. Forceps, mop, forceps. You just, 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 just catch this one. Is a bleeder here? Just change this one. Done? Okay. Me the forceps, please. Keep just be, no, 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 just keep a uh, syringe ready in case we encounter some fluid right now. It's, it's a good thing that I didn't. If there is any twitch at any point of time, just shout twitch loudly. So, all this will be helpful for getting the length. So, I'm just going to release everything.
Okay. Now, this is all capsule. You can send some of it for fluid. Yes, please, syringe. Uh, it's a little higher, maybe just some collection around. Fortunately, it looks quite clean. Uh, sir, in case you find some fluid or you can aspirate some fluid, do you routinely send them for microscopy? I always send it for microscopy and uh, um, they have described frozen cultures or frozen section also, but I'm not very convinced about the accuracy, but I'm just going to send this tissue for culture as I always do. And one thing which you always do is to culture specimens, culture specimens. So we should be somewhere around the, yeah, so I can, I can feel the wire here. So I'll just ride a little more of this capsule and we'll reach the wire. So I can see the wire already. Right. So give me a moment, please. Sir, there is a question from the audience. What yes. will be the choice of stem in your regular case in such type of cases? Sorry, what will be what? Choice of stem. Choice of stem. Yes, sir. It's a good question. Most of the times it will be a Wagner, right? But uh, you can theoretically use a cemented stem also because it gives you a choice of adding antibiotic if the bug is known. But here, unfortunately, we have no information about the bug, right? So that is the disadvantage here. So we can see the paper. We have to make sure that it's clear from all around before we start making an attempt to take it out. Give me a moment, please. Yeah, thanks. Already. So it's very rude of me. Sorry, I should have introduced my team. But actually, <laughs> so I am I am having here with me Dr. Vishal, who's assistant professor here. Dr. Vinay and you are Tashikan and Nirosha. Nirosha is the staff nurse here and the anesthetist. I don't know, but we'll, yeah. So I think it looks quite promising. Just give me a plier. Mm, make sure that it is open. Yeah. Give me, I think there is some loose bone here. Let me, no, I need four sets, please. So there is some bone here, which I think if we take out, it might make life easier. So we can take syringe and some more fluid from here. So this removal of a this little amount of bone has made life very easy. Give me a nibbler now. Right. So we'll just take it out. It may look more like callus, but I don't mind even if it is some part of trochanter. Suction, please. So now, hello. That's great. So we send it for send it for culture, right? Now we flex. Can you hear the clap, sir? Sorry. Can you hear some sound from the audience? Uh, no gasping. Is it gasping? See, there are there may be two two things. Either they are very hungry or they are very happy. So um, I think there's no reason for them to be happy at this hour. But I think they don't need to be hungry. I mean, of course, they have to be hungry. They no need to be happy, but they just need to be a little patient. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, hopefully. We should be not keeping them hungry for very long. So we'll start preparing something. So give me the instrument for, so I can do one thing and do a little more relief here. Yeah. Sir, one See, question. It's very can, you, can you feel that so fragment what, bone with the uh, abductor attached? Yes, sir. That is one thing. 
abductors are attached but also part of the greater trochanter is in front it is an artery piece artery i can give another retractor here and artery you take this artery touch please touch please so i'll do a little more release because what happens is if you have a lot of scarring and you rotate the femur you don't want to hear that sound you know and that can be whole lot of trouble then you end up immediately exposing the whole shaft and then exposing reducing fracture and then you know putting long stems and all so i'll do some soft tissue release here you know all this forceps some forceps and normally i avoid releasing the uh, iliopsoas but i won't have much of a hesitation in doing that if required because in a long standing case with a long standing means shorting which can create problem with reduction and i must make sure that the gluteus maximus has been released all the way up to down right because that is another factor which can cause yes anterior translation as well as you know create problem when we rotate okay so um do we have some more room so always remember this is a patient who had a hip fracture right intertrochanteric fracture keep that mind in mind all times because when you are preparing femur when you are preparing acetabulum don't forget that point for even for a second because slightest problem can lead you to difficulty now let's have something yeah starter so do we have a drill you have a long drill so if i have to rotate it that also i want to do with something in the canal you know i want an uh, end cutting thing it will not go through that no i want a sharp thing so if you look at the x ray there is some sclerotic bone underneath the spacer so we need to breach that so normally i would have like to have a scanogram in this patient or some x ray at least with a ruler so that i know everything but uh, we have that spacer we took out we can measure the length and it can give us an idea about how the magnification is i need something before that i think it will not end cutting end cutting it huh? okay ha uh, okay let me try that yeah so let's have that so the key thing is now to remain inside so it was more or less central i have opened something so now give me that on the gun so we look at something which looks like marrow so i am hoping okay next so yes so we'll start dreaming for the stem we are going to use monomod stem so give me something like a, a bone lever or something anything to probe no, no bone lever that's a homan i think people use bone lever less and less now it's becoming extinct that's another woman <laughs> so i think i should have instrument class for everyone the okay let's have this this is what 12 this is 190 just a minute no no this is 190 so this is what we need
next one do we have a curate it all looks healthy so i am 13 and give me a give me a 14 i can get some tissue send it for culture please this top tissue which came out take it with a clean fourth step usko nikal do so unlike a normal uh, wagner or uh, monomod where your reference is from the greater trochanter because the greater trochanter is fractured here we don't have uh, much of uh, landmark here so what i'll do is i not go to what i think is the final size i'll stop somewhere in between and uh, so what we'll do is this is 14. 14 so what i'll do is i'll put this 14 reamer which should be a good size for me and leave it here and you prepare a 14 trial in the meantime right so in the meantime what i'm going to do is now just a minute okay so Cottery. Sir, <clears throat> yes. You are a femur first surgeon. Can you please re-highlight those four points for the audience? Why femur first? So that is what I am going to tell you now. The it's always femur first, but uh, one of the reasons I am not doing femur first here. Uh, so for the reason I'll tell you. But in our primary, it's always nibbler. It's it's always re, uh, femur first because one of the reasons is what you are seeing here. I'm going to retract this femur away. I told you this is osteoporotic bone, so I'm not going to retract the femur, which may break. It may be osteoporotic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retract it against this, or I'll put a I'll prepare the femur because uh, you see I am not used to this system. If I'm using a system which I'm used to, I'll just finish my femur just now. And but the important thing is that I retract it against this and not against the bone. And some twisting, turning which takes place will not stress the femur so much as to cause it to fracture. So just leave it here. Uh, yeah, anterior retractor here. so i have a feeling that this particular bone either either the ectopic bone cost gap pe hai so you got a lot of bone here which i think will have to go but also just leave it back they leave it alone so i think the greater trochanter is here this is a greater trochanter feel it so i am going to excise this posterior bone which will help me with my exposure so give me home man Homen, yeah, just put it here, right? And we'll quickly see the whole thing is about exposure and releases. Once we got everything exposed, then it's not going to take much time. Put it, and also keep the nibbler ready. nibla wider nibla ruba You can also go for culture, and now put it. So I've made some room anteriorly. Do we have a cobra? No, no. If we cobra, let's see. So keep it here, right? So gradually getting there. is some more ectopic bone here we'll take care of it 
and post it, please. Some photo. So this release not only is going to help us in exposure, but it's also help us regain the length. All this car needs to go. So sometimes it is well, it's quite uh, task intensive because it bleeds. Nibla? Okay, so similarly, eventually we'll have to, when we catch hold of greater cantric fragment, we'll have to release it, pull it down, and then I put the hand on the top of it. Okay, rotate. Yes, please. And there is this corner, even when in a difficult primary, go all the way to the anterior superior corner of the trochanter where soft tissues are attaching and make sure that you release capsule from there. And that will help a lot with your exposure. Similarly, you have to remove the inferior capsule. You have to divide. I'll do that just now. There's a lot of bone here, which doesn't look like normal bone to me. And I'm going to excise again, hammer, uh, uh, nibbler. It's all ectopic bone. Because you felt the tocantric fragment that's in front. And the quality of the bone is also that, or it might be the combination. Actually, you see a lot of bone there on the X-ray also, which is going to be callous response. It's all tough scar. And excising this ectopic bone will also release the soft tissues around the hip. See? It's a big chunk. Okay. It's all scarred. Again, making some more room for my anterior retractor. All that will help take away, take the femur away. Okay. Now we can put it here, leave it here, no, no, leave it, let it come down, keep it there, keep it retracted against that. Now we are about to expose the acetabulum and I can have, I could have pulled out all this spacer without doing all this, but you'll see if I do that after exposing everything, rest of the job becomes easy. So this is a very important so, thing. whenever you have a spacer, you should not go and pull it out. Omen. So the spacer is an indirect evidence of anterior and posterior walls of establum. What I told you before in the morning. And because here in revision cases, it's very difficult to identify in the fibrous tissue what is anterior and posterior. You identify the spacer, don't remove it. So the first tendency of assistance is to pull out the spacer. That's the last thing you want to Give do. Give me some something Look, sharp to hold it, talker or something spacer. or yeah, so he's working around the spacer inside the flap which he has raised from the GT and the uh, abductor margin. And therefore, there is no risk of injuring the sciatic nerve or the femoral neurovascular bundle. So, this is a key step. So, whenever you have an implant or a spacer, it's your friend. So, don't remove it. Don't dislocate a hip. Keep working. Yeah, the, expose yeah the I think that is a particularly important thing. Don't be in a hurry to dislocate the hip. Because when the implant is inside, all the uh, planes are stretched and you can, the moment you take it out, then the, everything will become soft. So when you become, when you put your trials inside, then it will resist. You understand? So 
and we need to do releases here because we need to restore the length. So you're removing all the scar around the hip. Okay. We have the table tilted a little towards my side, please. So what I must compliment the surgeon. We must find out who had put it. He's put a nice spacer. Sometimes the spacer, some the spacer can be so bad that it can make the life hell for you. Particularly, many times what happens is you put it while it is a little wet, and then it changes its shape and also it sticks to the bone. It doesn't come out. See, the surgery becomes very smooth. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. Lovely. Becomes very smooth if this at least removing the spacer is not a challenge. Huh. I think this is this spacer has broken. It was not put like that. So I think it had a very narrow waist or a neck. A very narrow neck and it broke from there. So we can take it out now. We have a, just a minute. We can do a little more exposure. Yeah. So can you hold this with caucus? No, no, don't worry. My finger is there. You just hold this with caucus. And somebody put a hand on the calf. Other thing is when you're dissecting posteriorly, the dissection has to be tangential, parallel to the sciatic nerve with somebody holding the cuff. So you should never dissect transversely. If you dissect transversely, sometimes the nerve will get cut. So look at him, he's holding one finger back on the sciatic nerve, palpating it, and then releasing that soft tissue at the posterior wall, parallel to the direction of the acetabular wall. It should not be perpendicular. That's, to the, that's the way you have to dissect. So... Here we are, right? Quite reasonably preserved uh, tail. You see that? Okay, you can tilt it a little bit more to my side, please. And we are ready to prepare the acetabulum actually, forceps. And again, like I said, yeah, thank you. And we can actually focus the light also again now inside. Focus the light. Can you give me a marking pen? Do we have a marking pen? Can you see the tail? Can you see the tail here? I think the cameraman has to focus it, sir. Nibla? Please clean the cautery tip and give me the acetabular reamer. So, as Vishal said before surgery, or I think nahin, I think it was Rajkumar who said it will take a very small cup. It looks like it's a very small cup. Reamer, please. Acetabular reamer. Sir, reamer. Sir, the smallest one. What is the size of the marking pen? Hai na? So, 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 this is the tail. I marked it in case you can see it. Is it on the reamer? I doubt it. Next. So I have to be very careful because it's an osteoporotic bone. Sir, do you think uh, these sort of cases with doubtful abductor, we must use a dual mobility cup to start with? I have kept the dual mobility on the table and that's what I intend to do. I'll put a dual mobility in this, but that is no substitute for a good, uh, like a good fixation of later to canter, right? Okay. I would like to. Whenever we have. I would like to fix the greater to canter. We must do something more. You cannot yeah. just have a standard cup and get away. Because even if yes. you repair it, it is like. It no, is like, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. freedom. It is very difficult to restrain it. So, we must factor in for abductor insufficiency and do something more than a standard cup, uh, dual mobility cup in this situation. 45? 45. Yeah. Like then 46 and 47. Can we have a 48 cup here, please? For instability. And do we have the wash ready? 46. 45, no? 45, DJ. Oh, 
45 so i want only a 45 46 real cup now so i think it's done 46 cup please real cup wash gloves change for me real cup yeah i need real cup 46 was it 28 line up yeah particularly now because this is a small acetabulum, arm it makes another reason for a dual mobility because otherwise i'll be putting a 28 head here and i think okay, don't worry give me the artery for this cup i think 46 they do have a 32 head i don't know whether they've kept it but it is on uh, the option is available for 46. Sir, they will always keep some extra things for the organizer and <laughs> my disadvantage is not lost on me <laughs> it's like you know during your md ms mbbs exam patient will always keep some question which he'll reply only in front of the examiner <laughs> and not tell you Mop, please. Yeah, with the highly cross-linked poly, the studies have shown that you can go as low as 3.9 millimeters. But for practical purposes, it's around 6 millimeters okay. is the minimum thickness okay. of poly. So for uh, 40... Uh, no. so, 45 If you have a thinner cow, you can use a... No, I think that... could use. So it depends on the thickness of the cup. So if you had a very thick... Go here only. <laughs> So catch it. Got three. Okay, are we ready with the cup? Cup is ready, sir. Forceps. Uh, uh, take out the screws. It's osteoporotic bone. We'll put screws. So uh, this cup has got uh, screws which are mm -hmm. there inside the screw hole. So if you have very good position. You can close the screw holes to prevent osteolysis from uh, traveling into the bone in the long run. That's very important. We have done so many revisions where we found big uh, osteolytic area uh, in the acetabulum and it was just in line with the holes which were left unfilled. So wherever you have so, screws, there is track for the polyethylene where debris to go in. Although exactly. it's common with modern cross-link polyethylene. Yeah, so I'm hoping that with the modern cup, so there are small screw screw heads which can be used. So you to, do one thing, just remove two. You have to remove me. when you are putting screws and whatever removed, screws are unfilled, you can just fill them with that head. So now you don't have the track for the osteolysis. Cancel the phone. That. So if you see, I think give me a clean sponge and show inside. I have conscious clean sponge. I have made a conscious effort not to ream out the subcondyl bone. In you know, a fracture neck femur. If you read the subcondyl bone, look at the X-ray again. Look at how thin the cortical line is on the acetabular side. And we have still preserved it. I can't see, see that? I can see cancellous bone only in the parts. So I have, although, and uh, I could, would have even liked to remit even another couple of, milli, uh, another half a millimeter less. But the reason I ended up with that was because, so uh, hold it, give me a 46 reamer. And four fifths. So uh, again, something which is very important. I think uh, I must clear the margins of the cup, acetabulum. And second thing is we must. Uh, I think there might be some resistance in osteoporotic bone. So double edged sword. If I try to wedge it in to get a good fixation, I don't want to fracture the acetabulum. So I'll just open the mouth with 46 reamer okay give me 46 and we'll just open so we must know the implant which we are using so this cup has got 1.3 millimeter larger than the uh, size which you ream so sometimes in sclerotic bone you may have to over ream by one to introduce this cup but in an osteoporotic bone, you can do a line-to-line -line reaming and then assess as per the situation. So the cup is generally, it's a slightly more uh, larger, about a millimeter 0.3, 1.3 millimeter larger than the last reamer. 
So if you ream 48, you're putting 49.3 in sclerotic bone, it will not go. So you open it to 49 and then put it in. Still, it will have good AP capture. Okay. Right. Yes. yes. Trial, of course, will get spoiled after a point in time. So trial will give us some idea. But uh, as I told you, when you reverse ream, the reamer will disengage. Drill. Critical step. Drill. So personally, I don't use trial at all. So because I think astablum will. I have never used trial in my life because I feel the kind of bone which we have. Give me a reamer with trial. Twenty-five. Reamer as a trial. Yeah. So whenever your reamer. Twenty-five. And you're having to put more pressure. That's the AP capture. And then you can rotate the reamer and see whether it's rotating. Is or that not. trial stem ready? But if you want, you can use a trial. I would suggest one size smaller to see how it is. Uh, no, no, sa, uh, kam hai. So that's why I put the anterior screw first. I find that in this bone. But it is stable is also tilted. You don't tilt. So I have tilted. It's a little less. I know. But uh, you'll see. And we are putting a dual mobility. There is still some bone interiorly. So it's not too bad. It's not that it is retroverted or anything. Take it out. One more guess. Drill? Drill? Depth gauge. Depth gauge. Keep a 35 ready. 35 screw ready. So again, uh, screw position. The anterior superior spine to ischium will divide the ashtablum into four quadrants, right? Yeah, yeah. even 14. Go 35 there. So the, he is putting the screw in the direction of ASIS. So you can palpate the ASIS, put your screw holes in that direction. One in front will be towards the anterior superior area. Another on the back will be towards the posterior superior. There is a tendency of the younger surgeon to yes, mop up to posteriorly. So you're putting it dead posterior or posterior inferior. Then you will not get screws. The dome has to be engaged. The dome appears to be at two o'clock position, but it's actually 12 o'clock there because of establer antiversion and lateral position. So easy step is to palpate the ASIS. Go put your anterior retractor in the direction. And put your screw holes in the direction, and then you're engaging the dome. So you don't need you to. You have the cap. You have a cap for the third screw hole. It'll be difficult to put it. We'll put third screw also. We'll see. Bill, bone is very soft. Right? Bone is very soft. So. Yeah. Is that? Eh? Uh, Cap it now. but the, the, the second one didn't become tight all the way. And is the is the drill proper? What is the diameter of this drill? Give me the guide. What's the diameter? Maybe a little. Four point? Four point. Another thirty five, please. And now, just a minute. Uh, or the 30 there. Mm. No. It's it's not gone out. It 20, 25 there. Sir, sir. 25. And trial liner. Later on, right now, I just need a trial line. Yeah. Can we make the table horizontal now? So, everybody is aware what is a dual mobility cup? 
everybody is aware anybody is not aware everybody yeah okay so th there are two types of dual mobility curves one is a modular dual mobility another is a monoblock this is a modular dual mobility because in osteoporotic bone we want to put a couple of screws and be secure with the fixation so there is a metal liner which goes in and then the dual mobility sits inside that the flip side to this is the metal liner and the <laughs> interface can have fretting and corrosion yes this is the flip side uh, the okay. advantage is you can reduce and then you have more trial liner i said trial liner trade off trial liner nahi hai isko rakh do abhi do you have a trial liner normal liner trial trial that will put but i just want a trial right now i mean see in a normal case i would have finished my femur i have put the cup i would have put a real liner and if required i'll adjust whatever has to be adjusted but here it's uh, i have not yet decided on how proud my stem will be there is 6 or 5 cm shortening whatever the real thing is and i may have trouble reducing it in size so i don't want to put my real liner inside and scratch it only once i reduce it inside see my limb length see the stability so for example i didn't ask them to open the dual mobility i could have even used a lip liner you know ye kya hai kiska liner hai no this is not 46 sir is it is 46 no it's not 28 liner sir you will also have a dual mobility uh, trial also if you can ask so he is not able to find what he has given me is definitely doesn't belong to this is that a trial the metallic trial also will be there Achha, so this... give me the metallic trial is that a, is that a trial or a real ha give me the trial sorry my fault give me the metallic trial. Trial. yeah so they have a trial so i didn't know that sorry about that so this is what i wanted but i want to put a trial liner because i don't want to so this is a trial uh, modular liner the liner tends so to is the table horizontal now 2 mm proud table horizontal is it so it's little less intuition but it's not three to it's, it's okay okay yeah we take out everything and now we take this out handle so our cup is in and uh, we are now going to yeah show me the protein keep it neutral ha uh, i i have uh, okay that's all right i know but i'll make it 15 because you know what this is a monomorph stem uh, where there are certain changes made to the preparation technique so hopefully through the course we will show more about the design philosophy tomorrow we have uh dr bose coming in. so this is the anti version guide which has been built into the thing and there are four hmm? impact ten pay better na so if you hammer and i hammer it ha koi baat nahi we'll see give me a okay pull short head minus head zero zero is minimum and zero is minimum and then liner head head this only no just make it loose just wait wait, wait. yeah it's gone in so now i think let's start with this now actually the limb length looks equal right so but there is a catch here i normally many times keep this handle here so that it is easy to take out but i'll have to take no no don't lift it up yeah so i'll take this handle out so stem is loose i need to go bigger bigger size but the purpose is in we remove it depth is all right we'll just check other things so give me that head again we are need... okay it's here only push it now at this point of time what i want to do is i want to see an abduction and see whether the adductors are tight so adductors are not tight no 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 there's no need to touch so i don't need an adductor to not me that's one step closer to the meal right we have limb length which is i think it's slightly short 
right? So I can just leave it to the next this thing. This is the sleeping position. This is flexion, adduction. Ah, so this is because it's a little lax. Yeah, so adduct. Yeah. Internally rotate. Okay, so it is actually impinging against this. Yeah, so we'll see that. Okay. So we know that our uh, tem uh, cup version is a little less. So I need to increase the version of the stem, which I'll do duly. Mop. So now just pull it longitudinally. Okay. Leave it. Pull. Okay. So I think we are about three, four millimeters short. So what I'll do is I'll take it out and also feel that my stem is loose. So I think what I'll do now, I know there'll be no difficulty with reduction. So I'll take anterior retractor. Anterior retractor. Cobra. Real, real liner. Real dual mobility liner, please. Keep it here. Just keep it there. Just keep it there. Stems, which are monoblock stems. First step is to determine where you are reducing it. Because that is the... Another woman. That is the leg where your shoulder will sit. Another woman. Okay. Below that. Or above that. Now you keep on upsizing the diameter till the reamer doesn't go. Screw driver. That is the size of the stem. Driver, liner remover. Provisional reduction to determine where your reference oh. mark is. Liner so remover. Wash. Many more. And then use that stem. Take this. Wash. Wash. You cannot trial with the real stem. Sometimes it's too proud or too down. We don't know. So, and this has got again craniocaudal adjustability. Versional freedom, 360 degree. Mop, uh, clean mop. Adjustability. That's the mop. Give me clean mop. They will keep the okay. leg. Okay. Give me. Keep it 10 degree anti to the leg. Epicondylar axis. Love. Okay, we're done here. Now, coming back to the, so we know uh, that our, so what we'll do at this point of time is, give me a ruler. I make a point, say, here. And give me a ruler. Yeah. Normally, I would have made a point here on the trochanter, but you know, trochanter is missing. Right? So, I'll make a point here. And... and the stem remover. So, I'll measure from here to the trunnion is 70, right? So, I know I need it about 72, 73. Also, I'm playing with the smallest size. So, in case I sink it a little bit more, Sir, I can, can always take the, to the next head. Because the reamer has got the shoulder reference inbuilt into that. Yeah, uh, give me curate again and next reamer, please. Next reamer. This is 15. Please don't touch this which is going inside. Even I don't touch it. Okay? This is what? 16. Give me 16. 16. We have up to 17, right? Sixteen seems to be our size. It's a little bit more out than that one, which suits me. So shall we take a? Give me a sixteen one ninety. Give me wash again.
Betadine actually I I can use but I personally feel betadine is toxic to the tissues also. You are using the sixteen size. Yes, sir. Sixteen one ninety. I think that's the smallest size I have to take. Give me wash again. And canal, can you suck the canal? So it's the final implant in now, right? Yes, sir. So we have done a trial. We have reduced. The trial was a little uh, unstable posteriorly because the version of the stem was less because the stem was loose. That was with a 13 or a 14. So there 14. Was, since you were increasing the size from 14, 15 to 16, any role of yes. wiring? Any role of nibbler? Prophylactic wiring. Any role? Prophylactic Sorry, wiring. I mean, prophylactic wiring. Yeah. Uh, I would do that if I had slightest uh, apprehension. Uh, where do I wire? See, if I have done an ETO, I'll definitely wire it. You see, but here I'm inside an intact canal. So where do you want me to wire it? It will be difficult to decide what is the area of which, which I'm going to wire. So key is that do it very gradually, right? Gently, gradually, don't be in a hurry, right? So it's not looking that bad here. It's okay, the version. Yeah. You rotate. Ah, koi baat. Aap, karlo isko vertical. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is a real stem. Smaller, smaller size stems. When did I ask for the trial? I said. Or uh, between. You want me to trial? 15 to 17, it is 42. Not always necessary to trial. 44. That's a horizontal offset. Because I don't know about this, but many times the trial and this do not match. Give me the ruler. So this was by a centimeter or two, three millimeter. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, just a minute. Wait. Now that we have done it all the way, let me just check. Yes. Okay. Scale again. Mm. Okay. Where is the cup? Here is the cup. Show me, give me the liner. Okay, just wait. Make it loose. Take it out. Yes. Just pull. Yes. Gone in. Oh, no. It'll go. It'll go. I know it'll go. Now, the limb length. Limb length looks almost equal. Just see that. Equal. It is equal. Right. Now, with the, now I see the stability. It is, it is sitting again. <laughs> yeah. So, I've got my hand on the post which it is impinging on as long as i keep it away from that post now you rotate 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 so it is all inside right it is only it is that post feel it that post is impinging that post against that post and coming out i think this is quite good and it's very stable interiorly so it's good so this is what we'll do pull out okay the shuck is fine, soft tissue tension is fine, everything is fine. And also, you must remember that, that right now, the greater trochanter is not attached. That always gives more stability when we have that in place. So, gloves for me, wash and the real stem. 190, 16. Just keep it here. I also want to make sure, just a minute. I I will at this point of time, just give me two minutes. Omen. Okay. Omen. 
just keep it here. Cautery, forceps. This impingement need not always be bony. It can be soft tissue impingement also. So I'm going to debulk some of the soft tissue interior, including removing this part of the ectopic bone, which is there. And I'm sure at the time of putting the spacer, they had found the greater to canter removed. So they tried to repair the abductor mechanism. I can see some SC bond here. This pull. OK, all right. Again. I think my component position is quite good. And uh, take it out. Take a Langen back instead. Okay, now give me four sets. Doing part of the interior capsule. I'll pick and get so that can also cause soft tissue impingement. I'm going to take away all reasons for impingement and I'll also going to increase the version a little more. Okay. The black. Okay. So that's that. Let us now identify the better to canter. This is the one. Forceps. Okay, so go. Feel this. And this is anterior to it. No? So that is. So if you see on the x ray, the gator to enter is lying anteriorly. This is the one with a big base meter chunk. See, have a wire passer. Wire. Take it out gently. Think the wire is out here. Wire holder. Wire passer ready, but one. Okay, give me the wire passer again.
Can you check the stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I want to take it through the tendon here also. So, give me some cockers or three. No, feed this. Here. Tip only. Tip only. You can pull it out. That's the artery I'm going to go in. Okay. Now this one has to come from this side. So. Oops. How do you want it? No, no. I want this to go from here. So I want it to come out here. Figure of it. The other thing is that we bring this one, pull this, pull this, mop, mop, mop. So give me the wire passer. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. A little small thing. Mm. Okay, this one goes here. When they think it's a little crooked now, so let me pull it out. So it's here. Okay. Okay, now pull this to pull. This is another one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, come get this go. Uh, just a minute. Give me the wire passer. Rather than tying it on top of the muscle, let's bring it from here, put it in here. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter, it's a chest too. Yeah. Hey, SIA, yeah, yeah, talk about it. Okay. Okay, now you tighten it. Just a minute. Let me have that. Can somebody shut the OT gate, please? Give me a mop. Clean mop. Yes. Yeah. Yes, tight as you can. It may not still look very nice on the X-ray, this wire and the trochanter, because we have not extensively dissected and tried to put it back on the head where it belongs. But the idea is that it should be fixed to the uh, main shaft. Yeah, okay. It's moving, all the moving as one piece, right? Okay. Hold it here and cut it short. Wash. Yeah. Okay. Suction, please. So give me the final stem. Give me the stem. Let's rotate. You put it at 20. Okay, rotate. 
90 डिग्री Hmm? I know. I have done it. I have done it. Okay. Looks quite solid. Giving a good feel. So, give me the scale. This is uh, again that about eighty five, Emma, and give me the shortest head. Well, look, me right now, Lumba. Now I remember my friend who said wiring. <laughs> if I have to, but I have already wired it now. Give me the short head. Okay. Make everything loose. Take out everything. That's a minute. I think we have pushed. Head nickel. Head nickel. I mean, that is all right. I think we pushed some tissue here. Artery? Yes, yes. Artery? Yeah. Okay. Take it now. Yeah. Now give me hammer again. No, I'm not going more. Okay, let me take it out. We'll put it again if required. Yes. Okay, everything loose. Okay. Yeah, it's blue. It'll go. Gone. Okay. Now we are really longer than before because now the soft tissue tension is tight. Okay. That could also be because we have tight back the trochanter. That could also be the reason. It's abducting quite well. It's extending all right. Right. The abductor tension feel here. The abductors attached to the greater trochanter are finally here. You see? The abductors are tight. It's attached to greater trochanter. Right. And now I think this time I don't think there should be an issue. Yeah. Eh, that? Yeah, stability also yeah, stability is improved a lot. Adduction, I think. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is what we'll do. Give me the same head. Take it out. Yeah. So feeling of the soft tissue tightness we have got now is because the abductor has been tied down. Right? Wash. So give me whatever is clean. So give me the, have you uh, assembled the head and the dual mobility? I've got a sudden suspicion. Is there anybody in the hall at all? I've got nobody seems to be talking anymore. Did we lose the, the house is full. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about house as in the lunch house or the dinner house? Dinner is not opened yet. So if the very kind of the hotel is, but that will get me a lot of cursing. So we are done here. I'm Nobody just going to put to the have real dinner with you and so uh, what some more questions so, so, and answers with you. So so sure. Now I would welcome that. I'll just tell you what happened here, and my assistant here will bear it out. Now I was 
uh, I had a slightly less anti-version than what I would have liked, number one. And second, there was a lot of scar anteriorly because of which the uh, there was soft tissue impingement also. So there was impingement as well as a little uh, sort of less anti-version. So I repaired the, uh, I took out the scar anteriorly that took out the soft tissue, which was impinging. I increased the antiversion, right? And only thing is, we might be just equal or maybe slightly longer, though I don't doubt it very much. It is because the soft tissue tension has suddenly changed a lot. When I, uh, give me some vitral ethibond, please. So we are actually quite stable now on the table. So I had to, I lengthened the uh, portion which was out a bit more. I removed the soft tissue scar, which was a lot of scar anteriorly, which could be causing impingement and causing dislocation. I changed the version, increased it a little more, and then I increased the length. All these together have given me a feeling of much more stability than before. So forces, please. So. So we can palpate the nerve here. The nerve is not tense tight at all. See, straighten the knee. So I can feel the nerve. Nerve is not tight. Although for safety, we just keep it a little flexed and uh, we'll just close it. So I don't think I have, but I might be a couple of millimeter off that we'll check once we make the patient uh, supine, right? And uh, my favorite thing is to pass this tissue and through this hole in the stem and we can abduct it and put it on some something. Sir, if you remember uh, in our PG days, we used to thank you and then you would describe and if we didn't thank you would keep on closing. So why don't I say, I always have been you telling you, I miss you. Thank so you. Much. And we will every day, every day I miss you. <laughs> including today. And we want you to come as early as possible here to join us for the dinner. Thank you very much. It was an exceptionally uh, well-demonstrated uh, case, a very complex case, right from exposure and a big round of applause. So, Thank you. Yeah, so they're not clapping from the dinner, they're clapping from the hall. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let's touch, touch, touch with the... Uh, that's for the audience, the, thank you very much. I think for the diatomic on till the end, we'll no, yeah. start tomorrow sharp at eight o'clock. And Not it. we'll start even okay. if there is nobody in the hall. So please make sure that you're at uh, eight o'clock here. Thank you very much. Abduct, abduct, abduct.